The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pay! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice, could change their life. Hello, beautiful people. And welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Coach Saban Thursday, November 16th, 2023. This sports program starts now. Football! It's happening tonight. Shout out to the Cincinnati Bengals traveling to Baltimore to take on the Ravens, who are favored by three and a half in a classic old school AFC North matchup that has two teams that need a dub. Uh -huh. Two teams of quarterbacks that are obviously incredibly talented. Two teams that will be able to put on a show for us all to watch. We'll be talking to Kirk Herbstreit at about 2.40 today, Ooh, Eastern hey. Standard Time, to talk to him about what are the vibes going into this one. It's obviously going to be a physical matchup. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. It's going to be a tough matchup, but we got a chance to see some superstars do some super things tonight on primetime that's not a normal occasion here oh. as of late in the nfl yep. so let's enjoy the hell out of today we will we got a packed show mm -hmm. yep. we're talking about this game a lot obviously talking about a lot of other things happening around the ncaa football yeah. ncaa does another stupid thing uh, of course. Usual. so dumb dumb decision no reason for it hey could be a baby face one time just be like a a reasonable institution just like Tez Walker could have been with North Carolina at the beginning of the season that inevitably ended up happening anyways. It's like you were, all, you were wrong. You were just so far behind everybody else's decision. Why don't you just – this is the same exact thing for James Madison and Jacksonville State. We're in a much different time now than whenever this rule was put in. It's an archaic rule where you have to have two years of transition from – FCS yep. to okay. FBS. Correct. Formerly D1 AA yep. to D1. Mm -hmm. ah. Okay? Yep. It's not D2. No. 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 no, no. no that was not the case. That's different. Nope. Might have alluded to that the other day out of pure <laughs> ignorance, and I do apologize. But anyways, the NCAA has this rule where you got to wait two years as you transition up. Why? Why? What is that even? Well, they said, well, they don't want a bunch of people just jumping ship. It's like, right, well, if people could do it now, they yeah. should. Why are we holding people back from potentially building and getting bigger and having much more exciting and entertaining and profitable situations for all of these universities? Why do we have to just uphold rules that are dumb whenever you're the institution that could just change it? Remember, they made up the rule amateurism, the word amateurism, and they used to just throw that at things. Like, well, why can't that? Why can't Reggie Bush get amateurism? Okay. Yeah. Duh. We made the word up, so we can use that as an excuse for everything. It was stupid then. That rule's dumb. The Tez Walker ruling was dumb. This one, very dumb. Like, James Madison is doing something special. You don't think these student human athletes don't deserve to reap the benefit of all their hard work this year whenever they even decided to try to, you know, do a little negotiating with your archaic rule. Yeah. Yeah. You know, normally whenever teams transition up, they get a two-year thing, and the first year, they're still playing like a D1 AA schedule. Right. Uh. Then the next year, they're fully transitioned into a D1 schedule. Then maybe they should be allowed to be able to reap mm -hmm. the benefits of everything they're doing. It. JMU, first year they transitioned into this whole thing, they took a D1 schedule. So they tried to meet you in the middle a little bit. In the second year, that they're in right now where they're undefeated, right got on. game day going. This, they can't even compete in the Sun Belt Championship, can't do a bowl game. It's so dumb. It's stupid. And I think the NCAA will inevitably look back on this one whenever they have some people that feel like have a brain in charge at some point. I think that'll happen. Okay. I have faith. Hopefully. 20, 20, 25 years from now. I don't think it's going to I have happen. faith mm -hmm. that at some point there will be people in there with brains. I think that'll happen Ooh. at some point. And they'll look back and say, yeah, another dumb decision we made in the past that we're going to have to uh, justify in the future as people are calling for us to not even be involved in college sports anymore. So with that being said, that is happening as well. NFL football storylines are continuing yeah. to build. And we have a guest with us. It's not just the talks at table at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Great shirt today. Yeah, yeah, you can feel the love. I mean, I screamed right before the show started because this is the first time we've actually sat in these spots with a real game on Thursday Night Football, so I couldn't be more jacked. Yeah, we are 
Burrow a little zeked up. I mean, we got two teams coming off a loss. It's AFC North football. It's hot in the kitchen. Are you kidding me? We got Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, MVP candidates. What are we doing? And here? two teams that can go. Finally. Oh, These yeah. teams are built to potentially win a championship. Yeah. Yes. Not just a division. No, no, no. Not just a conference. A Super Bowl. That's right. These teams have it. Can they keep up with the teams that are in the NFC? Can they keep up with the San Francisco 49ers, the Philadelphia Eagles, the Detroit Lions? Whoa. Yes, I think they can. Yeah. All these teams can. So we're talking about potential Super Bowl teams mm-hmm. with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. We like that. Come on. AFC North fan, a uh, man who is much more fit now than he was just a few months ago. Yep. Jim. This guy looks phenomenal. So good. He's one half of the hammer. Dad. Cowboys. Tone Diggs. What are you looking at this evening? ESPN bet, by the way. Uh, most downloaded uh, sports book app mm-hmm. in a two day span in the history of sports book apps. Pretty good. Pretty good. Congratulations yeah. to that. Uh, you got to keep them. You got to keep them. Don't forget that. Congratulations to them. I think they're continuing to work on it too as we go. Seeing little updates every like hour seemingly on there. I'm enjoying scrolling through. I'm seeing some stuff. Where I'm like, ah, this will probably, this will probably be a winner for us because their lines are a little bit more favorable than mm-hmm. other places. Yeah. So. Hey, they, hey, that's all. Hey, that's all on us. No. we got to take advantage of that whole thing. I think they got a great visual. The colors, yeah, love it. Colors are fantastic. Great aesthetic. It's a great addition to my home screen. Mm-hmm. So, congrats, to ESPN Bet doing their thing. What are people taking advantage of this evening, Tone Diggs? Uh, three in the hook. Uh, you never want to play the hook, so I always recommend betting it down to three if you are on the Ravens tonight. You know, just a little uh, gambling tip there. Um, but as far as like knowing the AFC North, okay, so the Steelers always play the Ravens well. And the Bengals have had their number recently. The Bengals always lose to the Browns recently for some reason, uh, but they dominate the Steelers. This one has gone back and forth. This one has been the most even of the rivalries uh, as of late. Ravens got them earlier in the season by three, but that was when the Bengals weren't the Bengals yet. Uh, but I am excited to this for this one because you know Joe didn't have a great game uh, last game. He had two turnovers in the fourth quarter. Lamar had a pick six in the fourth quarter too. Uh, so it's a big one for both of these guys. Yeah, love it. Can't wait to watch it. And you talk about winning by three. They got Justin Tucker. Okay, so mm-hmm. that's obviously an advantage. Oh, unless you got Money Mac on the other side. Yeah. Got good special teams across the board. Good defenses. Great offenses. We're in for one tonight. I'm pretty so zeked up. I'm also jacked up about a guy joining us who was uh, coach football for 36 years of his life. Whoa. 18 in college. 18 in the NFL. The people's coach. My former head coach. Ladies and gentlemen, Chuck Pagano is here. Hey, baby, coach. Chuck, you look at this game tonight. Two teams know each other well. Coming off of losses. What do you think the boys are saying and who do you think really is able to ride that momentum more uh looks like a must win for the Bengals oh that's what everybody's saying because they started so slow started slow so people talk about their runway like they're running out of runway I I hear that word a lot now by the by the commentary oh that's a new punditry word I like Like it more people flying private probably can't get the plane off the ground on some runway start the way they typically start you know 0 and 2 and then they fire back and then tough loss to Houston Last week, so it seems like there's really no margin uh, for error right now on on their end. I think it's going to be explosive, though. I think there's a chance we got an explosive night, or no, you don't think so? No T. Higgins. Mm -hmm. Primetime unders have been very hot this year. 25 and 7. 25 and 7. That's very good. No Hubbard, best pass rusher, or one of the best. Hendrickson's going to be there, but no Hubbard's out. So that, that hurts. And T. Higgins had two touchdowns. In the first game in week two. Tiggins is a baller. Yeah, yeah, but they got a absolute stud in the slot now, Trenton Irwin. Not now. They've been had him. Mm-hmm. Remember, a couple of weeks ago, I made a pick on the Bengals because that man was flying yeah, around. Yep. Had a tud that very next day. Yeah, I, felt right. like, I felt like a genius. Yeah. Yeah. First you game were talking about spe- special teams. They, there was a punt return for a touchdown in week two. Charlie Jones. Bengal. Yeah. Oh, you remember that? No, I try not to remember. Purdue, Purdue. All the punt returns, I try to get those just out of my mind completely. I try to move on. Here's the tail of the tape for this evening's matchup. Against the spread, 4-4-1 four, four, and one of the Bengals. But remember, beginning of the season, they're absolute crop. Yep. Yeah. Uh, absolute crop. They know that. They've admitted that. That's kind of been their story, though, since the Joe Burrow, Zach Taylor, we're going to be a team that's going to contend for Super Bowl's era began. 6-4 and four for Lamar Jackson. Not bad. We don't mind that. Points per game, 27, which Ooh. is good for fifth in the NFL for the Ravens. 20 for the Bengals. It's tough because just like we said in the last one, the uh, Bengals were crop. Yeah. Absolute, absolute crop at the beginning. Yep. 21.3, Luan Arumo's defense is normally going to be stat for the Bengals. How about what C.J. Stroud did? Man. That's the first they time. They had 544 total yards 
and C.J. Stroud is a, is a stud. Yes. But on that day, I did not see that coming. He went for 356. He's the first ever rookie quarterback to go for over 300 against Lou Anarumo's defenses. Lou Anarumo has like been coaching defenses for like 50 years. Yeah, yeah. NFL. He's um, looks young. He does. Yeah, stud. He does. Looks Great haircut. He'll be 35. Looks incredibly young. Good fade. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, he's been around a long time. No rookie quarterback's ever done that. I think that means C.J. Stroud's very special. Yeah. That doesn't mean that this Bengals defense is coming off a bad game. Okay. okay. So, so, right. 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 so right. Right. Maybe they're in a little bit of, hey, is Lou Anarumo able to get the boys back? <laughs> Louie. We shall see. To. Turnover margin plus 10. That's solid. Speaking of uh, Lou Anarumo, you know what I mean? Plus one for the Baltimore Ravens. On the positive side of it, good for 11th. Um, total yards per game, 301 for the Bengals, 362 for the Ravens. Remember, the Ravens were like, Lamar Jackson, fantasy-wise, was making no points. Everybody was bad about Lamar Jackson. Yeah. Uh -huh. He actually posted on his Instagram story, hey, fantasy owners, I do apologize. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to get these dubs or whatever. And I appreciate Lamar Jackson even letting him know that. But that, they were just doing it. They were just three years. Total yards allowed per game, 273, 384. It's, okay. it's going to be a good one tonight. Yeah. I think so. We go. got a good one tonight. Go. Come on. I'm excited for this evening. I, I assume Al Michaels is going to have... Be better. This is a tie game. What if that was how Al indicated to the people? This is a tie game. Like, hey, all right. This one, <clears throat> we're suited and booted for. Look yeah. the part. And if you're one of the teams where he shows up in one of those jackets with a sweater on, yeah. like, hey, Al oh, Michael no. sticks our team's back. <laughs> yeah. Al Michael's got a bad vibe. I'm, I'm thinking Al and Kirk are going to crush it tonight alongside Kaylee. And since we have Chuck here, you know, and we have a pack show. We got Lombo joining us in about 10 minutes. We got Coach Saban joining us at 105, which is incredible. Tristan Wirfs. Tackle for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers out of Iowa. Hell yeah, oh, will be joining us at 1.30. And then Cody Schrader, um, running back for Mizzou, mm -hmm. who we've learned about this morning. Former wa He's a walk-on, mm -hmm. dog at a D3 school. Yep. Walk-on. Then he comes to Missouri. Now there's an article out there that says he's the most talked-about athlete in Missouri. Now, the Chiefs are also in Missouri, so that means Travis Kelsey is an athlete in Missouri, and I think yeah. everybody's talking about Travis Kelsey at this point. Yeah. But I think they were talking about it. This dude is an animal from Missouri. He's a running back. Now, he's not going to be in the Heisman conversation because they lost two games to LSU and to Georgia. Sorry, but they lost to Georgia. Whoops. Okay, 30-21 was the score of that game. Missouri's been an incredible team. And also, their coach, Eli Drinkovitz, he uh, – he, He's a dog. Yeah. He went right up to Josh Heupel and said, we stay on business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that means, That's but sweet. I saw a mic'd up of him clapping with his visor and talking shit, so yep. I'm a big fan. Cody went for 205 yards and one touchdown on the ground last week, and then five receptions for 116 yards through the sky against Tennessee Very Volunteers. Damn. This dude's a beast. Can't wait to chat with him in the third hour. But since we have Coach Chuck Pagano here, it's time to do a little coach speak, because there's a lot of coach stories, isn't there? Oh, so yeah. many. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Speak. Yeah. 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 And a baby Chuck, look at that. We even got a lower third. Look at that. Ooh, coach wow. Speak. Chuck Pagano here. Awesome. Uh, let's start in Buffalo. Obviously, we have our first uh, Josh McDaniels is fired from Las Vegas Raiders uh, alongside Dave Dolph Ziggler, the general manager there. But then on Monday, we see Ken Dorsey gets fired, offense coordinator for the Buffalo Bills. You look at the stats for the Buffalo Bills on the offensive side, I guess they're in like, you know, top 10 and pretty much everything you'd want to be. But obviously, they've looked different than how they've looked in years past. Firing a coach in the middle of the season, especially coordinator, tough decision for the head coach, I'd assume. And why do you think this one happened on Monday after week 10? No, absolutely a, a tough de uh, decision. I've, I've been there. I've had to. I've had to do it. I've had to go down that road. So you, you feel for McDermott. You feel for Dorsey. Feels a little bit like uh, you know a, a scapegoat. But there's more to it. I think there's more to it than than you know we can see. Uh, on the outside, there's 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 got to be there's just got to be some some dysfunction. There's got to be something maybe amongst the the offensive staff, the communication breakdown, whatever. Because uh, Dorsey, you just don't – I mean, you, you spoke about the numbers. He, he's put up points. They put up yards. They've been good. Um, would fact Ken, that so the, you had to fire a coordinator? Would, uh, would they know before they get fired, like would they get a heads up like two weeks before? Uh, not Maybe not in your specific situation because mm -hmm. maybe it comes out of nowhere. But does the offense coordinator or defense coordinator have a heads up that they're potentially going to be fired? In a so few there's weeks? conversations that got to be had, some upfront, forthright, honest conversations. So you just can't – like call a guy in and say, hey, you're out. Because shit hit the fan. We had, you know, 12 on the field. We lose this game. Shouldn't have lost this. Because the truth be known, he's probably still working there if they got 11 guys, mm -hmm. you know, on the field and that guy misses the field goal. He's still working. They're going to have that conversation. Now it's too late. He's out the door. But there's probably been conversations, should have been conversations about, hey, this, this, and this aren't meeting the expectations. This has to change. 
And then the next week, it don't change. Okay, you call them back in. So this has to change. And this is probably across the board. So if you have those conversations and then nothing has happened and it's and it declines instead of, you know, goes goes this way, then again, there's more than meets the eye uh, for all of us. Um, but I think those conversations probably were had. It's a, it's unfortunate. Uh, Dorsey's a good coach. He'll land on his feet. Did a great job up there. He's a dog. I was with him in Miami. Oh, Wonderful yeah. human yeah. being. It's 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 never fun. I mean, these are personal lives. There's families. There's we we know all that stuff. So never never easy to do. Yeah, it never really gets talked about. You know, like ah oh, yeah, that guy just got fired and uh, kicked out of the Buffalo area, pretty much. Yeah, like, yeah. he uh, will no longer be. His family's there, and it's just a part of the job. It sucks. You're lucky to be there, but it obviously is a little bit of a ripple effect. A part of being a coach is that your family's going to get uprooted from places that you have a community and sent somewhere else out of nowhere because something's potentially popping off. You talk about that twelve man. Uh, on the field for a game-winning field goal in week 10, Chuck. Jeez. In week 10, that's happening. Yeah. Obviously, that can't happen. What did you see? And uh, how do you think that even is a possibility for a team that's good in week 10 at this stage point? Well, it's easy to say, hey, look, we practice it, right? We went over this. We do the substitutions. We have roll call. Hey, if we're in sub, this is the this is 11 guys. If we're in nickel, if we're in base, so forth and so on. So you practice it. That's easy to say, but... You know, in the heat of the battle, right, guys, that things start to go a little bit crazy. So in that situation, there was plenty of time on the clock. It was 24 seconds. The one at the, you know, at the half that the Denver executed both Real made it. really, really well. Yep. I mean, the, the situational football was great on their part. So I don't know, like, you, you head scratch, why, why substitute, you know, in that situation? Why would you, why would you do that? Well... Sean's going to say, look, I want to get my block team out there. I want to get the best dudes that, hey, coming off the edge, a tall guy, a guy that maybe can, you know, Miles Garrett over the top oh, and, and block. They had a guy try to do that. So, so I get that. So it's a communication breakdown. It's, it's unfortunate as hell. Uh, I've been on the <laughs> end of some of those crazy type plays uh, as well. So not intentional, but. Yeah, that's 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 a, tough, that, brutal. That, that is a tough way to go. Even your quarterback that has given the ball away four times already in the game <laughs> seems like you know. How do we do it? He's yeah. on the what? How do we do? How it? did this happen? Like you guys, like if we were trying to do that, Buddy. you'd be standing oh, right man. next to me on the sideline. Do you know how going? Loud? No, no. What do you? We're doing what? Yeah, we're gonna do. Try to get who out there? Do you know how loud? Do you know how loud it would get? in the locker room, I assume, at this point, on the offense side of the ball, who do not have their best game. No. So nobody really is has any place to talk. But there is quiet conversations happening about, these dudes had 12 on the field, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 12 on the field, end of the game. Like, how how is that happening? And then offensive coordinator gets fired, and then it's even more like, yeah. what are we mm -hmm. even, what are we doing right there? What do you think McDermott is sending a message? Do you think it's him sending a message? Do you think it's him telling the fans, too, that he hears them? Like, obviously, you guys have to hear what the fans are saying and how loud it's getting or is that all internal? No, everybody wants heads to roll, you know, so Ken's rolled. He's Leslie Frazier, Leslie Frazier you know, a year ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he had a really good defense, you know, and now they're – and they've got injuries, right? They're, a lot they're of injuries. Five, they, sure. five, a lot five, starters, lot of five starters down. They played their ass off the other night. Four turnovers and still have a chance to win that game. That, that, that usually doesn't happen. So they played their ass off, but – Ahead, yeah, the injuries thing for sure. I mean, everyone the Colts haven't had their starting quarterback, and they had him for one game. But aside the point, what's it do for Josh? Because Josh came out and he said he was like, "Yeah, I take it personally." Because obviously, him and Ken had to be close because he's been there for a while, and you know, everyone is kind of pointing at Josh like, "Hey, Josh, if you don't have the four turnovers or three, depending on where James Cook gets his, then Ken Dorsey is here." Like, what's that do for him? And how do they even bounce back on offense if they have to go with a completely new guy now in Josh's ear? Yeah, he's feeling that, like totally responsible for that. Like he he got the guy run out of there, absolutely, and that's that's not easy. He's got the weight of the world. Yeah. You know, going on right now. He's got the expectations. He's got the whole organization. He's got all yep. this, all this, mm -hmm. he, a lot of shit going on. Yep, agreed. Excuse my language. Oh, um, well, you yeah. said it three times, yeah. right? You, you, there was a time though there. I thought you were going to drop a yeah. F yeah. dash 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 yeah, word. Right. AJ it sure seems like a lot going on there. Um, yeah, I mean, Digs Super too. Bowl, Super Bowl. You know, the window. Everybody's, you know. And you can, just, see, you can yeah. just feel just the weight getting so heavy, right? Yeah. 
and now he's you know Joe Brady's you know takes over, and and what like if you're facing them, there ain't going to be much change. What can you do in a week? What, how, how much of a change is Joe Brady going to give you? He'll have the same uh, haircut. It'll be yes, a good he will. fade. Uh-huh. He yes, will, he will have a Joe the thing, fade. The thing, that I, the thing that I saw, if you watch that game and you look at that sideline and you look at Sean, who, who's having any fun? Nobody, Nobody. dude. Yeah. That, the vibes I on mean, that whole team is gone. So it looks bad. Like it's you, gone, dude. You couldn't so get bad. a needle out of his rear with a tractor and chain. <laughs> I mean, and so you, it just permeates. Throughout your whole sideline, the offense, the defense, it's like every play is life hey, and death. before we move on, because uh, we have another guest, and thank you for Coach Speak Sorry. there. The boys here actually witnessed the scene, because you're talking about a tractor being able to pull a, uh-huh. a needle out of something that is very tight-gripped. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The boys were at a cafe here in Indianapolis, and uh, one man said, my truck can pull your truck down this street right here. Yeah. And they were having a full engine rev off. Is oh, that yeah. not right? Oh, yeah. It started with, there's my ex-husband. Go beat his ass. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Guy gets up, goes over, and then that is the interaction. My truck can pull your truck backwards. And you're from Boston. Have you ever seen that before? No, never. I've seen I've seen a, a truck off, for sure, pulling each other's trucks, but I've never seen it in a scenario like that where someone just pulls up and then immediately, hey, that's my ex-husband. It was all, the, the one was an F-350. The one was just a little Chevy. Boy, I, yeah. I think the F three fifty was going to win, but the the ex husband was not happy. Ooh, he, he said some choice words. Yeah, he was a mean guy. He was a mean cuss. Mean cuss. <laughs> he was making up for something that little baby truck. Anyways, joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, is a man who's never had to worry about getting a needle out of there because he's always chilling. That's right, yep. man. He's got a massive brain. He's an Italian legend, just like Chuck Pagano. He's a guy who's an author, a TED talker, a GM, an advisor, a Mm -hmm. consultor, an email newsletter writer, a daily show host, a podcast host. Jeez. And a blogger. Yeah. Great gobbler. Great gobbler, but doesn't gobble. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Lombardi. Hello, Hello, Pat. Hello, guys. How are we doing? Paisan, not too shabby. How are you? You look cool. It's it's good fall, autumn Michael Lombardi today. I like that. Yeah. Nice day here in Ocean City. Sun's out. You know, it's all good. Got a great game tonight. I mean, you know, week 11. At time, you know, when you're on this routine, the, the weeks go by way too fast. We got to slow this thing down. It's like your grandkids grow up too fast. You know, it's like your daughter's growing up too fast. Everything's happening too fast, right? I agree. Slow it down. I agree. We were talking about this yesterday. Like, game day, there's only like three game days yeah. left. Why? Something like that. I'm like, we're already through. No. Yeah. It's. I think there's only three or four left. Yeah, yeah. this week, next week. Mm-hmm. Uh, wait, Army, Navy. Navy. Then, That's it. There's yeah. four left. Yeah. It's like, oh, my God. Oh, then we got the playoffs, though. Playoffs, yeah. yeah. And then we got a national. So we got time. Hey, still it's not. Time. We still got time. Still got we, time. we still got time. Okay. But you're right. We were down in the dumps as well thinking about, man, we're already way we're way past halfway point of this. We're almost done with this. It's like we got to get – we got to enjoy these times. We enjoy these yep. times. Speaking of enjoying these times, do you think Al Michaels wears the tie tonight because it's such a big one in the AFC North? What do you think? Uh, I think it'll be cold in Baltimore. Don't, I mean, I think he'll go with the sweater. I don't know. Herbie's got to tip us off. It's so disappointing that he doesn't give us that great nod. Uh, you know, but they got a great game to call tonight. That's going to be a lot of fun. I, I think it'll be, you know, it's it's Beautiful Cincinnati's night. not the same team defensively. They they, oh. they turn the ball over, but they're having a hard time stopping the – really controlling the game with their defense like they did last year. And then without Higgins, can they really make this offense go? They did last week. Baltimore, that was the first time Baltimore's defense really got – Got the move, run. People ran the football. The Browns ran the ball on them, which was surprising. So these games are always close in the North. You know, I think if you just take the North, the dog in the North, whoever it is, just take the points, you probably end up 60% winning percentage. Yeah, three and a half. Obviously, the half is a pretty big deal whenever you're thinking about an AFC North game, especially with one that involves Justin Tucker. Feels like, you know, yeah. obviously the last time that happened, but also he's a machine. But so is Money Mac on the other side. It's a great matchup. We're pumped about it. Let's talk about some other stuff going on around the NFL that I don't think we've gotten a chance to chat with you about. We're just kind of wrapping up a conversation there with Chuck Pagano about oh. Ken Dorsey getting fired on Monday. And now McDermott with the offseason um, – Resignation, I guess, of Leslie Flazier, mutual parting of ways. And then now, okay, you, uh, and, and with Ken Dorsey out now, that's both coordinators from last year gone. Like McDermott is obviously sensing that we got to make something happen here this year. You think he's feeling pressure? Why do you think the move was made now? And how do they go? How do they look going forward, you think? You know, I think Chuck said it well. There's nothing you can do, there's not going to change it. I, I think, Pat, they have a structural problem. And I've been saying this. For a while. The last three playoff games, they've given up an average of 33 points. 
they have been fooled into, and it happens to all of us, right? You, you have a great player and all of a sudden he becomes the guy who solves all your problems. But when you watch this team defensively, they're built on the premise that we're going to get the lead and we're going to play nickel defense. We're going to be undersized, fast, athletic, run to the football. And in the last six games, they've been outscored in the first half, 79 to 33. They can't function like this. They play in Western New York. They, they drafted and built the team that is more conducive for a dome than it is to play outdoors. Since he proved that last year when they went up there with three backup offensive linemen and dominated, Skylar Thompson put 31 points against them in, in that game. So I think it's really a structural issue here. I think they're chasing Kansas City. They're so desperate to beat Kansas City. The, the 13 seconds haven't gone away yet, you know, and they continue to make mistakes. The 12 men on the field was inexcusable. Chuck, you know Sean's doors wouldn't have been able to get home if Al, was, if Al owned that team last night. You know, 12 men on the field after you call timeout, that's inexcusable, right? They were not going to kneel it down. Why did we have to sub and they had a sub? Come on. Let them make the mistake, not us. <laughs> those are things you can't live down. Chuck said the right? same thing. I think, yeah. I think that's week 10, the problem. Week 10, it's happening, Lomba. That's my big thing. Like it's, This this isn't preseason right. or week one, week two. This is week 10 now. There's a lot of time to chat about that. It's a lot of Friday, let's go through this so we can say well, we went through this. Well, you had a timeout before the play. You had a timeout before it. But let's get back to the issue. The issue is their offensive and defensive lines can't take the game over. That's the issue, right? They're, they don't have a blue chip or a red chip player in either one of those lines. You can go to any service you want to go to, and they can't control the game, and they rely on Josh to make plays. They rely on Josh to be the guy. I never have felt, and Chuck can tell, talk about this too, I, I think they run plays. They don't run an offense. They run what we call beaters. Oh, you're playing – we cover six? Okay, we got something for that. You're playing three? Oh, we're playing two trap? We got that. And if they guess right, great. And if they guess wrong, Josh makes a play. They never have had an offense, and I think that's the biggest issue. Yeah, I, the, everything feels off. We were just chatting about it. Everything feels off about the Bills this year. Yeah. Weird. Going into the season, it felt weird. Like, there's nobody talking about the Bills Super Bowl this year. feels like for some reason everybody's just kind of off on the Buffalo Bills. Oh, well, it's because the Jets. It's because the Jets. It's like, well, then also all this, everything that was making its way out of there was not great. The digs. It was like super negative stuff, and yeah. it's like, mm -hmm. what's the vibes up there? Because all we've heard is great culture, great culture. Hey, a lot of season left. Yeah. A lot of season left up there. You can yeah. find it up there in western New York. Love that place. The fans deserve it. Hopefully – this isn't, uh, this isn't the end of something that we thought was going to be special for them. Ty has a question for you, Lombo. Yeah, Lombo, when you look at the AFC as a whole, with teams like the Bills kind of struggling, and we've been talking about it, how with the AFC being as good as it is, you know, it was kind of destined to happen that teams were going to kind of cannibalize each other. But given how well the Texans have played over the last couple weeks, and I know your guy, Dan Orlovsky, you know, a couple weeks ago kind of started the, hey, C.J. Stroud should be an MVP discussion, and then – after the big win, you know, last week against the Bengals, that's kind of heated up a little bit at, at other places as well. But do you think um, kind of with some of these other, you know, top end teams who we thought were going to be Super Bowl contenders going into the year struggling, do you think the Texans are a legitimate contender in the AFC and they could actually kind of make some noise uh, down the stretch run here and into the playoffs? Well, I, I think they can. I, I think they've played really well. Now, Stroud, that's the first time he's played on the road where he's played really well. You know, he went into Baltimore in the opening game. They had two two or three drives of over 10 plays. They just couldn't kick, get the ball into the end zone. Look, he played really good last week against the Cincinnati defense that had their guys were wide open, and he, he's been great. Is he the rookie of the year? I think there's no question. To get him to the MVP of the year, I think that's a little bit of a stretch, especially considering there's some other teams that are going to probably be ranked higher in terms of the pairing. The team that I think is the most dangerous team in the AFC right now are the Miami Dolphins. Ooh. I think they are really dangerous, and here's why. They are going to be better in the second half of the season defensively than any team. It's coming. You can see Vic Fangio's defense. He knows how to attack an offense. He knows how to make an offense play left-handed. They've got their front seven back, and they can cover in the back end. They're faster on defense. They're, you, they worry me in terms of their ability to be physical with their offense, but they can run the football really well. Hey, they I can run the ball. And I think they're, they're a little bit like Kansas City in the sense that everybody thinks they're an offensive team, but their defense is sneaky good. 
Yeah, I think defense is obviously at the end of the year what you judge people to see if uh, they're going to be able to win a Super Bowl or not. I think you go back through the last four of them more specifically. You can tell about week 15 which defense will be able to go win a Super Bowl. Uh, there's some breaking news coming out allegedly. Uh, Ryan Tannehill has requested to be released by the team per sources. Now, would this be because of the Cleveland Browns situation, or how do you think you'll see Vrabel handle this whole thing, and what do you think this means for the future of uh, the Tennessee Titans? Well, look, he's got an unguaranteed contract. I think they did not – he has a huge paragraph five in his contract. I think it's at 36, 25 million somewhere in there. It's a, it's a significant number, which typically teams – guarantee the big paragraph fives to reduce his cap number so they have cap room. But the Titans didn't do it for Tannehill because they didn't want to incur any more debt moving forward in terms of salary cap debt. So they kept his large paragraph five. If he goes out there on the open market, if they just release him, which essentially they're going to do next year, then whichever team has the first pick in the order and has enough cap room can claim him. And it, does he make it to Cleveland? I don't know. I would think Minnesota, those teams, you know, there's teams that would try to jockey some things around to get them. I don't know what Vrabel does. The future for Tannehill there is nothing. There is no future. There's, more, what, eight more, nine more games. That's it. And for if you are the, the Titans, you're getting this huge paragraph five that you're paying on 117th every week off your cap, which would be great if they released him. But he's a vested veteran. So that means he has to go through the waiver wire. Okay, so if Minnesota was to take him, I don't think that'd be the case because Tannehill would just be backing him up again, so he'd probably be another unhappy human. Don't you have to think about if you're going to get a pissed-off guy or not? Because, like, Kevin O'Connell with Josh Dobbs, there's mic'd up situations coming out now from inside the NFL on the CW, CW. Yep. on Mondays. Correct. Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Mm. Tuesday nights on the CW. It's incredible. They got good stuff. Kevin O'Connell and uh, Josh Dobbs' interactions are awesome. It, it, they are yeah. incredible. And then after the game, uh, like when Josh Dobbs did that whole run thing, like the reason why he was shrugging is because uh, Kevin O'Connell was shrugging at him. Like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> like the relationship. Here's the video, actually, of Kevin O'Connell and Josh Dobbs uh, experiencing a great play together that Josh Dobbs made that nobody could have expected. All right, Josh, let's do this, man. You get here, you need it again. I'm going to give it to you anyway, man. If it presents itself, oh, no. go ahead and take it, okay? Third down and six. Stepping up, Dobbs. Nothing downfield, spinning away. Gets a block from Garrison. Dobbs trying to shake his way to the end zone. Oh, God, is so flustered. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is that? No offense, Kirk. <laughs> Josh Dobbs just taking this city by storm. Uh, he just pointed and I don't even know what just happened. <laughs> hey. Hey. Proud of you, man. Proud of you, bro. That's love, dude. Yeah, that's that so is that's cool. so. I don't know if the Vikings would be in. Would there be other teams that would try to do this? And it feels like there's only one team, right, that would be looking for it. It'd be Cleveland. And, but you don't know how the waiver wire goes. I guess that's what. You it know, is. well, the, you know, the waiver wire goes by the order of what what that on the Monday he gets waived. It goes by whatever the order is, one through thirty-two, and he has to go to that team. And the team he goes to, he then be has to become a free agent at the end of the year. Because he's a vested veteran. No way. So, like, you know, it, it would no be way. an audition. I mean, it would be you come in here, play well, we'll get you going. I mean, he doesn't want to sit behind right. Levis. Lombo, we don't even you know, know if this is real. You know, no. the group text, somebody might be getting kicked out of. I mean, it might happen. We don't know if it's real, but if it was. Oh, it's not. It, oh, no. no. I don't think it's officially is. not. I mean, the guy, it doesn't look. Can't right. happen. This is JSPN. This is Journalism Sports Network. We just had a great whole bit about this whole thing, if this was to be real. I did just hear uh, in the air from the back, uh, F word, Bill, uh, just just so we know. <laughs> oh, my God. He's getting kicked he, out of the group. Yeah, he's getting the blame right I now. I want to let everybody know there will be repercussions to what just took place. <laughs> but if that was to yeah. happen, Lombo, if that was yeah. to happen, it would really certainly be a full scene. But let's talk about the Cleveland Browns team now. Uh, yeah. So they find out middle of the week. Uh, Wednesday, Deshaun Watson, broken shoulder, uh, he's gone 
for just the rest of the season. Just played his best ball second half of this last game against the Ravens. He was all the way back. They're allegedly tracking towards or trending towards starting DTR because he'll have an entire week of preparation and understanding as opposed to just maybe last minute like it was last time. What do you think about how he's going to handle that whole thing, Stefanski? Because they were going. They were about to be, you know, with that defense and with everything they got happening on special teams. It's like, feels like this team was different and then bang, Cleveland gets unlucky yet again. How does the coach handle that? How does the franchise handle that? And what do you think the messaging is going forward? Well, I mean, look, they still have a good team. And defensively, they won that game in Baltimore because of their defense. They were able to stop the Ravens from really running the ball. Williams had the 39-yard carry, but they couldn't really get their run game going. This defense can – when you play good defense, when you play great defense, you're in every game. You can be in every game. Like And what you can't do is turn the ball over. The great Paul Brown said, football's a game of errors. And the, last, and the team that makes the least amount of errors is the team that's going to win. And so what they can't do is turn it over. The last time he played, that's what happened. He turned it over. You know, he went into, you know, he played at home against Baltimore and he had like three turnovers. He had six yards. So, yeah, he had two, 20 for 37 for 130 yards, three interceptions, six first downs. He averaged 3.5 a pass. But he played good in the summer. So they've got to run the ball. I mean, last week they go into Baltimore with two backup tackles. A kid they pick up off the street, Christian, that starts left starts at left tackle for him. That's a mark, remarkable that they did that. So they just have to redefine their identity and say, look, we're going to play a lot of defense. We're going to play really good defense. They're going to play Pittsburgh, who scored the most points they scored all year in the in the game two, 26 points. It's the first time, but Pittsburgh scored 14 with their defense. That's been Pittsburgh's. I mean, that's been yeah, Pittsburgh's year. Steelers. That's uh, who they are. Yeah, that's been the Steelers thing is awesome because if they get a win and some other things happen, number one, the AFC, whenever you go down tiebreaker and everything. Hey, Pat. <laughs> but, but Pat, let's not forget this. The Browns have the easiest schedule in the AFC West North. Yeah. That's right. They're the 24th ranked schedule as of right now. The Bengals have the hardest challenge in front of them. So with an easier schedule, you can win games. I mean, look, they beat San Francisco with Tuck with, with Walker, PJ Walker. You know, they they had they beat Indianapolis in a shootout with Walker. And look, let's face it, you know, they had a chance to beat Seattle without the interception. So they're going to be in games. I mean, this will be ugly. This will be a typical Steeler game, and we don't know if the Steelers are going to react. You know, they lose Holcomb, they lose Alexander. One of the things I think we we don't talk enough about the Pittsburgh defense is how much Ryan Shazier meant to that team, and they've yet to really replace him as that inside guy. And and they missed that type of player, and now they're down two more of those guys. You talk about Shazier as an inspiration, you forget. Guy ran like a 4 3. Yeah. So good. Was yeah. Everywhere. So good at everywhere. So fun to watch. Cool dude, too. Yeah. Very cool. Very, very cool guy. Inspir inspiring as hell, though. If you want to learn about a story about being told one thing and say, nah, I'm going to do the complete opposite. Shout out to him, but you're right. You don't even really think about that because how good the defense is. You don't think about what is potentially missing out of it. That Steelers team is fascinating, bro. Yep. It is a fascinating existence over there. The AFC North, though, as a whole, is. Chuck has a question for you, Lombo. Hey, Lombo. Yeah. The winner of uh, tonight's game and the loser of tonight's game, right? Does the winner, uh, if Baltimore wins, do they go on and win this division, in your opinion? And if it seems like a uh, do or die must win for Cincy. And if Cincy loses this game tonight, do you think they're done? I mean, they have the hardest schedule. They've, they've got some really tough games ahead of them. And I think that their defense, because they're kind of injured, you know, they may have Hendrickson tonight, they don't have Hubbard. I think it's going to get harder, especially they've got to go to Kansas City. They've got to go to Jacksonville. Jacksonville, you know, Lawrence hasn't played well at home, but that's a tough. They've got to go to Pittsburgh. They still have Minnesota. So they've got a tougher road ahead of them. To me, I, I think if Baltimore wins, they are the best team. And Baltimore should be the best team. They, Baltimore, they that game got turned around when they tried the 55-yarder and it got blocked. It kind of set it the, on an edge. But I, I think Baltimore is by far the best team in the North. I really do. Lamar can make throws. They can run the football effectively. And defensively, that was the first time that another team had run the ball on them. And I'm not sure somebody's going to be as committed to run it as, Baltimore, as Cleveland was. Every time I hear John Harbaugh talk, though, I love it, too. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, uh, he talked about his brother the other day. 
It's like it feels like <laughs> it feels like there's a reason mm -hmm. they've become now Lamar Jackson, obviously incredible talent. Helps. But that Harbaugh, it's like an institution now at this point. Yep. You know, he is Baltimore. That is kind of there's an expectation. And everybody that plays there and everybody that coaches there and people that coach against him have massive respect for it. So shout out to Baltimore. Why not go get one with Lamar? They could. Why not go on a run? You said since he has the hardest schedule going forward, they have to win too. Yeah, they do. Because how they started at the yep. beginning. And ba and Baltimore, just so we get this, Baltimore's only been behind. I think according to NFL NFL.com, they've only been behind in games twenty eight minutes this year. Like they've controlled games. Damn. See, there's one thing we always have to pay attention to, like who's in control and who's in the lead. Like the Cincinnati Houston game. Even though Cincinnati tied the game, they were never in control of that game. Houston was always in control of the game. They made a mistake, but there's certain games that you watch that, you know, Buffalo could have won had they not had 12 men on the field, but they never were in control of that game. They might have won, but they weren't in control. And I think when you're talking about teams that are going on runs and win games, those are the teams that gain control and the lead. San Francisco against Jacksonville, they controlled that bad boy from the start. They were in control of the game and had the lead. Those are two different things. On that note, Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Lombo, in the NFC, obviously it is also a little bit top-heavy. Do you think that the Detroit Lions are the best team out there? Because after you know the Chargers game, they won with their offense. Obviously, week one against the Chiefs, it felt like they won a little more with their defense. So how, how do you feel about them, and are you putting them equal with Philly at least because they're the one seed right now? You know, no, I, I think Philly's a better team, and here's why. I, I think Detroit's going to struggle against good quarterbacks, the secondary, and if you can protect, you're going to throw the football. Remember, the, the Chargers, as only the Chargers can do, they went five consecutive drives, scored touchdowns on all five drives, had ten play drives, four or more of those five drives, and still lost the game. They, they moved the ball effortlessly down the field on the Lions. And it was a home game for the Lions because the Charger fans weren't as loud as they will be. So it wasn't like they were playing on the road. I think Detroit, like this week against Chicago, they're going to have a hard time running the ball. Chicago's run defense is the number one in the league in terms of yards against per, per carry. They, they're hard to run the ball on. And they're going to have to throw the ball where the Bears are not very good. And when Detroit plays out of that element, when Detroit has to play all pass as opposed to balance, you've got a better chance at getting them to make a mistake. So mm -hmm. I think that'll be a close game. But I think San Francisco and Philly are slightly above them. I think you got to get good before you get great. I think Detroit's really good. And look, look, Dan Campbell's a covering machine. If you've just been betting Dan Campbell in every game as a better, the you're probably up. You're probably buying Amazon. I believe in Jared Goff. I believe in them. Yeah, I, there was a time where I think we all agreed. I think we'd, had com we'd have conversations about it um, where, like, you could tell if Jared Goff was going to be good or not in a game in the first quarter yep. just by the way he was looking. And this was whenever he was with the Rams. It was kind of at the end of his tenure there where he inevitably got benched. You know, Jared Goff has really oh, yeah. been through it yeah. here, this whole thing. But there was a time where you could see if Goff was going to be great. I haven't seen that Goff in a long time. It feels like he's no, a completely see, different human. Don't you think so? I, I agree completely. But a lot of this is how you play. That's why they got to the Super Bowl, right? They got to the Super Bowl because they played this way. They played from in front. They were a play-action pass team. They gave him really easy reads. He threw the ball really well. I mean, he did everything with it. The system fit him perfectly, and the system fits him perfectly in Detroit with a really good offensive line. That's what Goff needs, and he needs a run game. I mean, remember when they went to the Super Bowl, Gurley was – before that, before Gurley, Gurley was average 10 yards a catch coming out of the backfield. They're good. The Lions, I don't want to dismiss the Lions as not being good. I just think when they go against an elite quarterback, they're going to have some trouble. Oh, ben Johnson can figure it out. I mean, I, I have nothing but faith in that offense. Me too. The Eagles, are, the Eagles might be too tough. The Niners might be too tough. But then you think, like, is Motor City, Dan Campbell, not have a tough team? I, yeah. I feel like they're probably – Penny Sewell saying, I'm a grown man mm -hmm. playing against – so this is Penny is. Sewell after the <laughs> game walking into the locker room. I was a man of my boys. Oh, yeah, so I love that guy. I think, yeah, me too. That's the first that pick guy. of that in this entire regime. It's obviously yeah. setting the tone for it all. It's like they got everything you would potentially need to go on a run in the NFC. Let's go. Why not for Detroit? Yeah, and my favorite part is that whenever Goff does make a mistake, like Lombo said, he comes back, he runs down the field, and he answers. Or if the defense makes a mistake, he goes, gets the ball back, and he goes, and he scores. He's done it 
all season long. It's my favorite thing as a fan to watch. What you say, Jared Goff always, always answers. answers. That was his tweet. He was yes. so jacked. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, so yeah. jacked put it out there. Hey, your best chug uh, to date, I think, was this past weekend. What yeah, we're we... only getting better seven games into this thing. I mean, let's let's keep it going, I guess. Yeah, people said it was less beer, though, than normal. Well, yeah, my I thing is it's, it's not supposed to be a chug. It's actually supposed to be like a beer that we enjoy because the Lions don't see many wins, and then it turned into a chug naturally. <laughs> but it's been a chug for the last year the and a half. Definitely a chug. Yeah, it's not supposed to be a chug the whole time. time. Yeah, at first it wasn't, and then I just get too excited and I have to slam it. This is this is Lions fans' lives, though. We're bad. They they think for the first time in they his life, back. they got a team. You know, yeah. I'm, uh, it is. It, it, it might be it might be a symbolic thing. I mean, Buddy Parker. The, the last time they won a championship was when Buddy Parker was the coach in the '50s, and now he might go in the Hall of Fame. It almost could be like a, a perfect circle. Hollywood wow. story wow. here. You know, with the Lions coming back, and, you know, it could be. But I, I'll say this: the one thing you guys know, and Chuck too, the personality of the head coach has to come through the team. And this team is resilient. This team is tough. You can tell. And, you know, it takes guts on fourth and five to call a run play and think you're going to get it. And they did. They didn't bother them in a blink. I love it. But there was, I mean, how about fourth and two in field goal range, tie ball game, minute 40 left, other team has one timeout, okay? Other team has one timeout. Tie ball game, you're in field goal range, fourth and two, like chip shot field goal range. And they just go for it. And there wasn't a doubt. Like, I didn't even think, like, oh, they're not going to get it. They pick it up. Like, it's, it's a whole new. Yeah, but see, this play, Pat, is the perfect example of why you have to be physical as a football team. Like, he hitched on that. The pocket was able to stay in there. He had, didn't have pressure. I mean, that line is the reason. Look at this. You see, he's got a clean. Look, he hitched. He backed up. You know, like, most of the time, you're getting somebody in your face. You're not completing that. Like this, this is why football is not a complicated game. This is why Buffalo struggles because you can't do that. You got to win the game up front, offense and defensive lines. And that's all Al Davis used to talk about. You, it's all the game is about the offense and defense alignment. And when you can dominate both lines like they just did there in that game, you're going to win a lot of games. You look at the Eagles. You look at the Niners. The Chiefs did, what, a full rehaul. They're like, we need a brand new offensive line. You start talking about every team pretty much that ends up winning. We talk about defense in the trenches, baby. That's why we got AQ doing his little 240-pound song and dance out. right, Ravens. Yeah, Ravens obviously great up front. That's because they got to – Yeah, I mean, and like the Niners this week, I'd be scared to play the Niners because the Niners this week put five down linemen in the game. So when you rush five guys, you play five defensive linemen in the game, yeah, that means every offensive lineman's got to block one of those guys one on one. Good luck with that. So much of this going on. Yeah, five down. <laughs> Chase Scary. down, five down. And then you got six everywhere else. It's great news. Hey, last question here from Tone Diggs about something that, uh, you know, I think we're kind of learning quickly down in Carolina. Yeah, uh, Tepper came out and was talking about a potential three way trade um, down there between Carolina and Houston and whatever. But is David Tepper too involved in that team as a former GM how do you feel about owners who are involved are they too involved does it matter if they know ball or not how do you feel about the uh, ownership getting involved in the situation down in Carolina there I I think anybody who's made as much money as Tepper and started hedge funds I think he's really smart and you probably want him involved but you want him to ask questions like you want him to challenge you on your ideas you want him to say why would we do this? You want him to have a philosophy. Like, if I were in Carolina, I would want Tepper to come to me and say, look, I want the best offensive and defensive lines in the league. If you don't get that done in three years, I'm going to fire your ass, right? That's what you want. Okay. You know, that's what you want. You want a direction and you want somebody, but then you want him to ask you questions about why would you do that? Like, why would you do that? How's that going to work out? Like, if we if this goes wrong, what do we do? He's way too smart to not use them as a resource, you know? And I, and I think we confuse that, you know, we confuse a little, these guys are smart. Now, are they going to come in there and say, what quarterback's better than this quarterback? I, I'm not sure that's what you want, but if you educate everybody on what exactly is going on, I think it's an asset. Look, I think what they don't have in Carolina right now is they don't have it. When you start changing play callers mid season, we're not a hockey team here. We're not running line shifts out there. <laughs> like you got to, you got to have a philosophy and a belief. Like, what are we doing? We look like we're the bad news bears. Oh, you call plays. Okay. No, it's your turn to call plays. Okay. I'll have my grandson start calling plays this week. I mean, come on, I'm man. Hardy, don't we have an offense? 
And do we have to announce everything to the world? Do we have to oh. reveal all our secrets to everybody? Can't we just quietly just change it? Well, you have to announce it all to let people know you're doing something. Yeah. Right. And the Frank Reich has talked about those day after game meetings with uh, David Tepper. I do appreciate the fact, like, hey, the guy's a brilliant man in his particular field. So we should utilize his brain in some sort of fashion to get better. Frank Reich said he does not look forward to those meetings no. at all. I think David <laughs> Tepper does know. I, I think he has. I think he is asking uh -huh. some real. So riddle me this, Reich. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why are we well, calling plays uh, to have a feeling? Chuck, as Chuck could tell you. It can't be any harder than walking in on the team plane and having to answer the question from somebody that knew the game inside and out. Those were hard. Talk about and, Davis. You know, it only yeah. made you better, right, yeah. Chuck? It only made you better. Absolutely, because he knew, and he already had the answer. <laughs> you know, <laughs> That's exactly he already knew the answer. So, if you didn't know, you just said, "Hey, I don't know the answer to that, but I'm going to I'm going to find out, and I'll get right back to you on it." Let's talk about Jerry Jones um, because. He's been very hands-on with his program since the very beginning. You know, I think everybody knows that. He actually has press conferences after every single game. Mm -hmm. He's uh, the general manager, I believe. He's the one announcing draft picks uh, for the Dallas Cowboys from his yacht still as of today. They think he is literally hands-on with everything. Steven, obviously, his son is doing a lot of it as well. You know, Dan Orlovsky said the other day, and hey, listen, Dan Orlovsky for any program. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. He said it on our show, actually. He did. Yep. He said that, you know, I'm here. You know what these ears are hearing? Mm -hmm. uh, Bill is done after this year with the Patriots. And uh, I heard that. I heard this. He said basically knows where he's headed. He's yeah, pretty yep. much already uh, figured out. Now, stone. he said he heard that. Then I pressed back. I said, who, who, who did you hear this? Like fans are saying this? He goes, somebody that would know okay, oh, okay. is mm -hmm. what he said. So there's a lot of rumors always. Okay, And there's people that you would think would know something, and they might think they know something, and they're inevitably wrong. But I believe what a lot of the smoke is telling me is that the fire of this whole thing is there's a chance that Bill Belichick is not with the Patriots next year. I asked you about that whenever you're in the airport traveling in San Antonio, I believe you were. Yeah. And you said, you said, yeah, he's going to keep coaching. You didn't say, like, you don't see a world where Kraft and Bill Belichick aren't together. So for me, that was like, even Lombo thinks this could potentially happen. Now that people are floating out, everybody's guessing where Bill Belichick could potentially head to. They're like, why not the Dallas Cowboys? If the Dallas Cowboys aren't able to do it, Jerry Jones would be a guy who would certainly say Bill, and Stephen Jones would have enough respect for Bill to say, you do whatever the hell you need to do. We just need a Super Bowl five years. Mm -hmm. That's all. Hey, we uh -huh. just need five years to do a Super Bowl. There's a lot of those teams that are popping up, but Jerry, wouldn't that be, would that be a guy that Bill Belichick would fit with? Or if Bill was to go somewhere, what do you think it would be the right fit for him whenever it comes to an organization i think it would be alignment it'd have to be the you know where where everything was aligned in terms of where the culture can go and established and the players believe they work for the head coach it's hard to be in dallas when the players know that jerry controls everything it's like when chuck and i were together in oakland you know all you could say you're you know we're going to get rid of this player but if he was on al's scholarship program that guy was not getting off the team so it became hard to put in fear does the work of reason you know you just couldn't get that done look i mean the guy's one of the winningest coaches of all time is i think dietrich wise said this the other day we have a bad record we don't have a bad team i think that's fairly true he's still coaching at a hill coach i think he'll go on somewhere else i don't know i talked to bill Dan obviously has better sources than I do in this area uh, when it comes to that. I don't know. But all I'll say is he's a really, really – he's a coach, and coach is coach. And there will be some program if the Patriots feel they need to make a change for whatever reason, and I don't know that. I'm sure there will be some team out there that will say, hey, I can get a guy to come in here and fix my program. Because when you watch this league on Sundays and Mondays and Thursdays, a lot of teams need fixing. Yeah, and Saturdays too, whenever we get later in the season when college football is done in America and England and what? Germany, yep. and Mexico, what? Canada. What? It's a good league. It's a great league. Speaking <laughs> of the league, what are two picks we should be looking at this weekend, Lombo? I love the Rams. The Rams are healthy this week. I love the Rams. I love the Rams. And you know what? I, I think the Cowboys, because they're playing on Thursday night, I think that 10.5 is a good number to take the Panthers. Not because I think the Panthers are good. But I think the Cowboys will be trying to get out of town and get ready for the Thursday night affair. That could be a backdoor cover. Mm, but I like the, when the Rams are healthy, when the Rams are healthy with Sean McVay and Matthew Stafford and Haverstein at right tackle, they're a good team. 
And I know the line went down from three to one, but there's still some. You get a point with the Rams, I would take it. Yeah, and off a of bye week, we obviously chit chatted with Matthew Stafford. Yeah. He looked like he was enjoying it well. They Living well. Deal yeah. with that thumb a little bit. We appreciate you so much, Lombo. See you next Thanks, week. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen. Talk soon. Michael Lombardi. You got hey, it. Oh. I heard that he said about Orlovsky. Yeah, that was awesome. I heard that. <laughs> I talked to Bill. Yeah, that Tannehill thing was just hypothetical. Because remember, we brought it up yesterday. Yeah, right. bingo. That's what it was. Yeah, it was just yeah. a would. Yeah, Tannehill didn't actually. No. no. What would happen if? if. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we forgot to say that. In right. The, yeah, I forgot the if. Yeah, that's on us. We do and apologize. Bill found a tweet that supported that what if narrative. Yeah, bingo. And sent it in. Mm-hmm. And he As knew. if it was a story. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit, look at this. And he's like, well, you should ask what if once again. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he just forgot to say that like we did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, would be cool. He should have sent after. Yeah. The Browns conversation is fascinating, though, because they are so good on defense. They could go, Chuck. Yeah. That defense could win in a game. Absolutely. They're, they're talking about DTR's preseason being the reason that this thing might fall apart because if DTR didn't have a great preseason, they'd Dobbs. still have Dobbs. <laughs> That's a real deal. That's the Browns narrative yeah, that the Browns Lombo, are saying. Go ahead. Lombo brought up, like, they've won some games and played well with P.J. Walker. The, the switch to DTR kind of confuses me. Yeah, but well, the whole conversation now is um, – like, he's going to have to make a play. Now, I'm going to say that. When you have a defense, it's great. It's going to be close. Yep. So, that means in the fourth quarter, at some point, there's going to be a third and seven. There's going to be a, maybe a fourth and five that you're going to have to make a play. Going to have to put a ball into a place that's very tight. Going to have to scramble, make a little thing. DTR, obviously, preseason has been no indicator at all to us that they're going to be good in the regular season uh-huh. in that particular position. Other than Aiden O'Connell, maybe. Aiden O'Connell didn't look bad in preseason. Yeah, yeah. He True. doesn't look he bad in the regular season. Zach Wilson. But he had no reps going in that game. DTR? Yeah. Against the Ravens. Yeah, Against the Ravens. Now he's I mean, they, thought, they thought Deshaun was going to play, and that's when he said, Hell, I, I can't go. And he had, I guess they're talking about it today, no reps, no, no practice reps, no first team reps, no time. And now they got a full week with him. To prepare him for this, for the and in deal. the preseason, what we saw from him after he had success, so look, this, mature. Make, this yeah. makes sense to me. I thought All right. PJ Based Walker came in. What? Yeah, PJ Walker did. Oh, okay. I thought you were. He's saying that's DTR. why they didn't put DT. Oh, okay. Because he had no reps, had no, uh, no. But he had the three intercept. Right, he was horrible. Right. Yeah, he was. And then is there a worry like if their offense doesn't look great these next three or four weeks that we get into that kind of area where the defense is like you know what. Screw it! Like we 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 do everything we can to keep us in games and try to win games, and we're just we're done. What did Miles Garrett say? He's uh, he thinks he's at his peak of his powers. Yeah, right mm-hmm. now is that where he? I don't yep. know if they're they're ever gonna say to hell with it. Remember they got they get loafs if they don't celebrate. Over True, Schwartz. Yeah, Schwartz. True. And I don't want to say like it's it's a different situation, but in that AFC North, if you can keep that game close and you can be in it, it will be. End, and every single one of them, it will be. It's like, you got good defense. You can run the rock a little bit. They got an offensive line. And what They did a scrum for, what, seven yards uh-huh. in like the fourth quarter. It's like, the Browns look like a long shot right now at plus five hunch. But in a few weeks, what if DTR is not too shabby? Yeah, exactly. What if he can keep the ball? That's all we need. Yeah. yeah. Don't turn the ball over. And for the defense, it's like, hey, Pittsburgh's doing this, so we have to do this. There's not really a lay down because they're not laying down. Yeah, they've been uh, outgained. What is it? Outgained in every single game? Every single game. Uh, <laughs> and I saw the the total for, the total for this one. I second lowest total. I don't want to say ever, but in a, it's thirty two and a half is the total for this one. Four points more than Iowa Rutgers. Yep, it's a big deal. That was a great game. And it stayed under. What'd you guys score? Twenty two. Twenty two. Should have scored forty, three, right? Six and three. And Deshaun Watson played one good half of football for that football team, and they're six and three. So they're going to be fine. All right. Okay. There it is. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Next hour on the other side, CN3. That was great. I'm sorry. He's saying don't go off the top. It's too shallow. She had no buckle. All you're going to hear this stadium do is they put the big paw up. They start shaking it. They go, whoa. Yeah, he loves the defensive side of the ball. He said yesterday to me that this is a blue-collar team. They win it on special teams. They have five block kicks this season. The defensive side of the ball, Lynch leads the Big 12 in sacks. But also on the offensive side, Denzel Mims is an absolute animal. He is a weapon. Charlie Brewer, the quarterback from Lake Travis, 
His dad was a quarterback in Texas. Yeah. His grandpa was a quarterback in Texas. And the people here in Waco just so happened to get a chance to see Charlie Brewer on a daily basis. Okay. Hey, 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 Boca. hey, hey, hey. Boomer here is going to mean a little bit different than what it means on the internet currently. And hopefully here in Baylor, they hope they're not hearing a lot of Boomer sooner. Everybody wants to be a punter, including quarterbacks. If I was a quarterback, I'd want to be a punter as well. Zero yards on that punt. Zero. That's an embarrassing situation. Zero. The Dak dance that gets on national television has led to a lot of uh, losses, but you got uh, to respect the hips being able uh, to uh, uh, go. sign am I going to make the college game day? Well, I want to make something creative. I want to make something fun. No, to hell with it. I don't like OU. <laughs> <laughs> so thick. Look how thick that thing is. That's years and years of patience. Right now? Okay, let's do it. We are out here on the Brazos River, which you can take a boat to the game. One of the only stadiums in the country that you can do that. It's beautiful out here. A lot of people would say, this is the last time I'm going to be on game day. Last time I allegedly did what I'm about to do, I ended up in a jail cell. Let's go! <laughs> That's full commitment, by the way. The following program is a collection of students talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pay. Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Hello, beautiful people. This is the Bart McAfee Show, live from the Thunderdome in Indianapolis, Indiana, on this Coach Saving Thursday, November 16, 2023. Hour two starts now. Football is happening tonight. I don't know what the hell Bart is, but it is all over our socials right yeah, now. Yeah. I'll tell you what, you Barts are active out there. <laughs> yep. These Barts are playing games. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. Me neither. That's one half of the hammer. Ah. Cowboys, Tone Diggs, these Barts are swinging. Are they on our side or are they against us? I, I don't know. They want you to the, choose a side. Whatever the what case, side? they're sweet. You're they're, either a Bart or you're an onion. I don't know what that means, Ooh, but they want you to oh, choose I'm not a picking side. sides yet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, shout out to the Barts, very active. The onions, you got a tough one. Yeah. yeah. You got a tough one on it's your hands. And, Google it. Uh, one, uh, the Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. And then a man who has coached 36 years of football, 18 in college, 18 in the NFL. Our coach, the people's coach, Chuck Bagolino. Hey, baby, Chuck. Yeah. Joining us live from an attic in Ohio is a man who, people say that Bart right there is fantastic. Oh, yeah. yeah. All time. He's a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion, a Ryder Cup winner, a man who is a father of 10, a COVID survivor, and the current president of Ohio, A.J. Hawk. Yay! Yay. Oh, oh, still got the shades on. Still got the shades on. Yeah, I'm trying. I got a severe lazy eye that can only open about oh, halfway, oh, pretty oh, much, no. usually. Yeah, it was Pete so that eyeball. Yeah, let's see it. Can we see it. Eyeball? No, it was all right. I can, it's not bad. I was trying to do it. Look, oh, I can open oh, my left bad. one. That's not bad. We're back. Hey, hey it's getting stronger. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's getting stronger every single day. You should be proud of what your eyes are doing right now. Mm -hmm. Your eyes are getting better. Just a few days ago, we yeah. thought maybe you end up blind. Look at you now. Look at you now. Living. Living. That's right. 
Sam. Got about 30% of my vision back, and that eye's going to open up real soon. Are you utilizing it? Have you noticed that you've been utilizing it in life? Like, uh, whenever you're walking around the house, obviously you're not driving. That would be far too dangerous to be a one-eyed man behind the wheel, correct? Oh, there's no uh, laws against that as far as I know. Whoa. <laughs> That's broad. Jeez Come Louise. On. Uh, I got two, two eyes, two working eyeballs. Don't worry about it. The sun coming up in the morning will hurt a little bit. But what's going on? Is, is Coach Saban there yet? Uh, I believe he is sitting down momentarily, and it is an honor to talk to him every single week. Before we get to that, let's talk about tonight's game quickly, AJ, with you. Just your first thoughts. I want to let you know, this office, very jacked up about the game that we're mm -hmm. able to watch yep. this evening between the Cincinnati Bengals, who need a win. Started slow. They're not, they cannot afford many more losses, especially in this very tight AFC. And then Baltimore Ravens at home, favored by three and a half. Excited about this one, AJ. Excited about it. This is awesome. I mean, this is the, the time of year, what the, what the atmosphere is going to be like. This is an awesome – this would be an awesome game to go watch in person, but I'm pumped to watch it on TV. But what's going on with old Joe? We, we got a conspiracy going with his hand hurt or whatever? Oh. Yeah, so there was a video that was tweeted and then deleted by the Cincinnati Bengals account, allegedly, uh, or a news uh, station, where Joe Burrow had a, a wrap around his wrist. Whoa. He's not on the injury report. Not on the injury report. Uh oh. Now he's putting something into that hand to hold it, so he's obviously very worried right. about how painful it all is. That could have been a copper sleeve. Ooh, we have no idea been. what yeah. that is. Yeah. Bowling could, glove. Yeah, maybe he's going bowling in town. Baltimore's got some great lanes. Mm -hmm. Could be any of those things. Easy. Could be tape. Huh. Just because he maybe he has a tattoo. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But if he has calluses on his hands from working out too much. Everybody's saying he's got a hurt wrist though. That's what oh. we're saying yeah. on his throwing hand. You know what I say? Joe Burrow doesn't get hurt. No. Ever. Other things hurt. That's Not right. Joe Burrow. Good game tonight, though. Yeah. I'm very pumped. Finally. For Joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, is a man who is a seven-time national champion. Whoa. Just got done beating Kentucky so bad that everybody left the stadium. Mm -hmm. Coach Saban was reminded of his boy from his team about what that means. You're beating him pretty good if everybody right. leaves the stadium. There's been more quotes and more things coming out from this man that not only builds our respect, but our admiration. Because not only does he spend time with us every single week, he has built a team back into being an absolute monster down there in Tuscaloosa. The head coach of the Alabama football team, Nick Saban. Yeah. Yeah. How you doing, coach? Great. How you guys doing today? Hey, we're fantastic. Chattanooga, here we go, huh? Here we go. This feels like one of those weeks where, you know, we're, we're towards the end of the season. Your team's playing great ball. You got Chattanooga sitting there. For people, Chattanooga's got a good ball team. Oh, yeah. yeah. They got a good ball team. Nobody's talking about them, obviously, for any big-type college football playoff like they are for you guys. But what do you say to your team about this particular game? And how, coming off of what you just did to Kentucky where, you know, the team closed and kicked ass and continued to play great football and did what they were supposed to do, I think, in everybody's eyes, maybe not yours. What are you telling them this week about the Chattanooga game? I think the big thing is, is people have to understand that, you know, complacency kills momentum. You know, we're a team that has kind of improved throughout the course of the season. So we've sort of developed a rhythm of how we practice, how we prepare, uh, how we've been playing uh, that creates a momentum. And, you know, everybody that's played sports knows that, you know, sometimes you're in a game and you have momentum and you play well and you lose the momentum and it's hard to get it back. Oh, yeah. So, you know, my emphasis to our team this week has been, you know, we need to keep the pedal to the metal, keep our foot on the pedal, and keep building on the rhythm and the momentum that we have. We don't want to lose that. You know, we don't want to be complacency, complacent because, you know, that'll kill our momentum in terms of what we need to do. So uh, it's important for every guy, you know, to do that internally uh, and not you know, think that this is not a good team that we're playing. You know, we played these guys in 2016, and I watched a film, and there may have been not too many guys playing for us that didn't play in the NFL, maybe all of them, just about, and not very many guys on their team that played in the NFL. And we're halfway through the second quarter, and we're behind three to nothing. So that just kind of can tell you, you know, how important it is to stay focused have a passion about what you want to try to do and have the mental toughness to be able to sustain and overcome adversity because those things can be momentum killers. Got it, AJ. Coach, when you're you're thinking about something like that, a week like this, there's, not, there's no trap games or anything. I'm not trying to say that, but when you have all of this possible glory on the other side, I guess how is it? You, of course you want to stay the plan and stay the course, but I guess how do you make sure every minute of every day that you're doing that? 
Well, I mean, I stay focused this way all the time because I try to prepare, you know, with a certain routine um, every day. You know, I get up every day. I let the dog out. I have a cup of coffee. I get two little Debbie cookies. That's how I start. I shower. <laughs> I shower. Same thing when I go to work every day. So, you know, routine sort of helps people stay in the moment. And that's really what I try to focus on. That's what I try to get our players to focus on. That's how we try to prepare our players. But uh, I don't think there's any question about the fact that there's a lot of media out there. There's a lot of people on the Internet. And our players listen to that. Uh, but um, your character shouldn't be affected by somebody else's opinion. And your competitive character shouldn't be affected by that either. So hopefully, you know, we can keep the outside noise away from us and focus on our standard of what we want to do, how we want to play, so that we can continue to build momentum in this season. Your competitive character can be benefited from the outside opinion. Cannot be negatively affected, though. You know, because somebody says, this guy stinks, boy. All right, mm -hmm. here we go. That's what you need. Anybody says you guys are too good, though, keep it out. They don't know a damn thing about nothing. Uh, you, you had a quote in an ESPN.com article with... Uh, Chris Lowe, I believe. Chris Lowe. We read it this morning, where you said you felt like at the beginning of the year, going into the season, you didn't have any first-rounders, really, on the team or projected first-rounders or the hype machine. And then you, f you felt like your guys felt the pressure of almost being the next guys at Alabama they were trying to do too much what made you notice that from this young team and was there a moment where you realized like they've matured they've grown up and they can handle a situation like Chattanooga being your second to last game with college football playoffs still on the line yeah well I, I think that it, it really what I was trying to get across was the fact that I thought this team had something to prove we had a lot of individuals on this team that had something to prove we had a young team so they were still trying to develop, you know, a reputation for themselves as players, as well as how our team would develop. And the team was important, you know, to these guys. They like each other. They get along well. Uh, so teams in the past, a lot of our teams had such high expectations going into the season for individual players who already had first round grades uh, to, you know, the team's supposed to be number one all year and win, win the championship that that took some of the fun out of it for the players, uh, which, you know, is never good. Uh, you want to see your players happy when they win, excited when they do well, uh, enjoying making plays and enjoying each other. And I think that's something that this team has been able to do. Um, I don't know if I qualified the circumstances very well, but that's what this team has been able to do. So it's they've had fun. Uh, we've had fun coaching them, and they've gotten better. Uh, and hopefully we can continue to do that. Yeah, you talked about guys working their way into first-round grades publicly and everything like that through the season, how nice that's been. That's real fulfillment, I would assume, for you. Are you feeling a lot of fulfillment with this particular team and watching them develop and grow? I am, uh, but I think that, you know, your legacy a as a team and how the team gets remembered is always going to come down to how you finish. Uh, so how we finish this season uh, will be huge in terms of the positive self-gratification that this team can get for what they've put into it, how they've developed, how they've improved, the work that they've done. And, um, you know, that's something I'm very hopeful that I can contribute to in a positive way Hell for yeah. them. Hey, the amount of reunions that you're going to have, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's going to be every year. Uh, we've got a 10-year reunion of what? National championship. Uh, we got a 10-year reunion of what? The next year? National championship. we got a 15-year reunion of what? That national championship we did the other one. Yep. Those are beautiful things. Those teams are bonded forever because of that. And you've obviously experienced that more than most folks. Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Coach, I believe uh, on Saturday was the first time this season that the offensive line hadn't given up a sack this year. And you guys obviously just out physical and dominated uh, a very physical team on both sides of the ball. I'm just curious, how um, impressed have you been with the offensive line's kind of progression um, this season and also when you have some younger guys on the offensive line regardless of you know whether they're five-star guys coming out of high school or whatever it may be is this usually a, about the amount of time it takes for them to kind of be battle tested in the SEC and kind of realize like hey this is what it's going to take to kind of get it done on this level yeah well I think you know that's different for every individual you know guys develop and progress at you know a different pace a different rate um some of it has to do with maturity. Uh, some have it, of it has to do with the kind of program they were in in high school and what kind of challenges they had to meet. 
Uh, and some of it has to do with guys not really understanding, you know, what do I really need to do to prepare to be able to play well? Uh, the mindset that you need to have to be able to play at a higher level. Because you got a lot of guys that have just been better than everybody else that they played against. So there was no um, significance to paying attention to detail. And now you get in college and you're playing against guys that are equal or better than what you're used to. Uh, and you got to pay attention to detail. You got to prepare. You got to do the little things right. And each guy sort of progresses at a little different pace and, and, and sort of realizing that. You know, everybody wants to play. Uh, but guys have to understand what do I have to do to develop to play well because playing well is what really develops value for you and your future and it's also what contributes to the success of the team. Is this is this about the time you know though if they're battle tested? Like when you like you said it's each individual person. Do you think with this team though you know? Like hey, I feel like we've been through a lot. Well, we we through the year we've gone through this with you. When we went yeah. to Mississippi State, remember mm -hmm. we're out on the road, night game. How are we gonna do? We answered. Obviously, beginning of the season, bench quarterback he answers. It feels like we, we had to run the ball. Mm -hmm. Answer had to throw the ball. Answer. It feels like right. That if hey, it feels like huh? Well, so far, and I. I you know, sort of told our players, you know, they've taken care of business about every challenge. Even when people wrote us off early in the season, uh, when we made significant changes, like you talked about the quarterback situation, but everybody's answered the bell. You know, we've always taken care of business, which I think you like that kind of competitive edge on your team. Um, and hopefully we can continue to, to, to build on that. But to further answer the question, I am pleased with the progress that the offensive line has made. Uh, and I think they're playing together better now, communicating better now than they did all season. Go ahead, AJ. Coach, I want to get back to that that morning routine you, you mentioned. I know it's been talked about, but the little Debbies, everything. How long have you been doing that particular routine? And is there any kind of any kind of science to it or whatever? You just enjoyed little Debbies and your coffee and your little morning. And, and how many dogs, I guess, have you gone through in that whole situation? <laughs> We've gone through lots of dogs. Oh. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I, 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 you know, I've been doing this for so long, I cannot remember how long. <laughs> Somebody asked me that question, you know, way back when, and I didn't, couldn't remember then. So, um, like I said to you guys before, I'm sure that uh, back when I was growing up, they didn't have such things as obsessive compulsive personalities, but uh, that like to do the same things in the same routine all the time and have everything in a certain order. Uh, but I'm sure that if I got diagnosed, that would probably be the... Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm looking at your desk right there. Everything's perfectly... I mean, there was a little tablet. There was a little oh, tablet yeah. that was kind of sideways on the right side there. That thing's going to get back into shape. We understand that. Is that every day, to AJ's point, every day we take maybe uh, Sundays off after game days or every single day year-round birthday, Halloween? Are we doing Waking Up, Little Debbie, everything? We're every single day, same exact thing. Every day. Uh, we don't take Sundays off, so um, of not during the season at least. Uh, that's probably one of the most challenging days for you as a, as a college coach uh, is, you know, you got to clean up the last game. You got to grade the last game. You got to make corrections uh, and then you got to start on the next opponent. So at least you can make those corrections with the players on Monday, as well as start to install a new game plan for the next opponent. So Sunday is a, is a really difficult day for us. And um, I might even act, Eat a little extra Debbie, you know. On <laughs> oh, three little Debbies. Jeez. You're powering through little Debbies over uh -huh. there. I mean, just absolutely mowing them down. Mm -hmm. Two by two, three by three, get in here. I appreciate that you're such a routine guy because it feels like everybody that has massive amounts of success mm -hmm. operate that way. Yeah. Just go ahead and slot down the greatest college coach of all time is another guy that does that. Speaking of coaches, Chuck Pagano has a question for you, coach. Hey, Coach, I wanted to ask you about one of your former players. I don't know if you happen to catch uh, this was, you know, well publicized. Mika uh, Fitzpatrick. This is the end of the uh, Green Bay game. Green Bay's going down for a winning score. They basically, there's no timeouts left. There's three seconds on the clock. He's having a conversation with Terrell Austin, the defensive coordinator. I guess they were in cover one, uh, something that Minka didn't like, I think, at the mm -hmm. time, or thought that maybe we should line up in what we used to call end zone. Um, you you probably have you, uh, end zone down there at Alabama, but I was just wondering, 
This is this is pretty cool because Darrell listened to him. This happens a lot in the National Football League. These conversations between coaches and players. I'm wondering that you know, did Minka show up on campus with this amazing football IQ? Did this develop over time? And did, does this happen? And this, did this happen with you and, and Minka down there, uh, where you listen to your player, a guy you know as smart as Minka, mm -hmm. uh, and something like this happen? Well, I, I think that number one, Minka came here as a guy that had great football savvy. Uh, and he's one of those attention to detail guys. And he wanted to learn as much about the game as he possibly could because he was really driven to be the best player that he could be. And, you know, he had all the right, you know, competitive characteristics. He was a great person. He did everything, was a good leader. Uh, and because he learned the game so well, you know, there are times when, you know, players look at you and say, you know, why aren't you doing, why, why, why aren't we doing this? And I remember we played Dallas on Thanksgiving and they had just won the Super Bowl the year before when I was at the Browns and they had the ball like, there was like seven or eight seconds to go in the game. We were up by four. They had to score a touchdown. It was fourth and six and six and we have a big huddle on the sidelines. And, you know, red two was our base coverage down there inside the 10 yard line, which the players had a lot of confidence in. And, you know, Bill's talking I'm talking players all look at me and just say, why don't we just play red two, you know? And, you know, Eric Turner tackled Novacek, um, you know, short of the goal line and we won the game. So that kind of input from players, I, I always welcome, you know, as a coach because they have to believe in what you're doing. So if you call something and they don't believe in it, uh, it's probably not going to work, right? So sometimes it's good to listen to hear what they have to say. And when you got guys like Minka, who you have a tremendous amount of respect for, I always listen to those kind of guys. Minka is a dog, dude. Mm, yeah. Not only is he calling play, I mean, he will. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Minka play will it. go, dude. Everything. It is a lot like that Downs fella that you have right now. Mm -hmm. Allegedly, people were crowning him as 2.0. Speaking of former players, Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Coach. Uh, first of all, as someone who eats over a 1,000 Little Debbie cookies every year, you look fantastic. But uh, <laughs> with the former player kind of conversation, you mentioned having a super young team, and Minka's you know, one of those guys. But because you have such a laundry list of former players who have had massive success success in the NFL. Do you ever ask any of those guys to either come back and speak to the team or send like a little video message? Because I do remember at the national championship in Indianapolis, Mark Ingram was on the sideline. Uh, Alvin Kamara was there mm -hmm. who actually ended up transferring. So do you use that ne network to help out your current team or teams of the past? Uh, we have had several of our past players have, have, you know, talked to the team on occasion uh, but we have massive amounts of guys that, you know, come back and we welcome guys to come back, put them on the sidelines. We love it when they come back. They had a great experience here. Uh, they want to come back. They love the University of Alabama. They like the spirit here. They like the tradition. Uh, the fans love them uh, and they get a lot of positive self gratification from it. So, um, oh, yeah. you know, we want everybody to feel like, you know, when you come to Alabama, you're not just coming here for three or four years. You know, you're coming here for 40 years and how we can impact the next 40 years of your life and how people can help you actually do that. So um, those guys have all been great. And I, I love seeing them. I love when they come back because I appreciate all that they did to help us be successful here. And I'm happy for them that they're having success in their career. I'm not saying that you would ever need a closer in recruiting uh, because it's been documented in movies and obviously on the football field. You're pretty good. You're mm -hmm. pretty good. Any of the ex guys uh, ever get recruited to recruit guys for you? Or, like, for instance, uh, Trey uh, Johnson, Johnson, Johnson uh, committed to Texas basketball yesterday on our show. He worked out with Kevin Durant this past offseason. Kevin Durant, obviously, Texas legend. There might have been a chance that Kevin Durant was like, hey, Texas is a great place to go, is everything. Do you utilize that in recruiting with the boys uh, that have been through Alabama? Now you're trying to get me in trouble with the NCAA because you're not supposed to use alumni <laughs> influence players. Um, so I have to say, no, we never do. <laughs> what? The NCAA, we're not going to get in. Actually, there's a question right yeah, now. Sure. Tone has one for you. Uh, that is bananas, by the way. Yeah. Can't use a lot. Yeah, these guys that uh, came in as 17-year-olds, their family trusted me to grow them into adults and men, and uh, they became first-round draft picks and now have completely changed the trajectory of their entire family tree. Yeah, those guys aren't allowed to tell you, like, yeah, cool place to go. Yeah, that's great Yeah, experience. because the NCAA says that type of information is a bad one. Okay. The NCAA, I'm not – you're on the screen, so I won't get too ridiculous because 
because obviously you're the greatest college football coach of all time. But boy, there's some dumb stuff coming out of that four-letter organization. Mm -hmm. And on that note, Tone has a question for you. Yeah, Coach, uh, Kurt Signetti, he coached with you, I believe, in your first uh, three or four years at Alabama, was wide receiver coach down there before he left uh, to go to IUP and now James Madison. He has an undefeated James Madison team in their second year. Uh, in the FBS, and the NCAA just ruled last night that they are not allowed to play in their conference championship. They're not allowed to go to a bowl game, which you know could have been a New Year's Six based on uh, being the best group of five team. As a like, what do you have any thoughts on that situation? And if you if you don't, as a coach, when these NCAA rulings come, is there anything that you can do? Like, do you have calls with them, or you just have to sit back and, and take take what their word for it? Yeah, well, I think, you know, sometimes we have rules that are the rules and people, you know, are going to force people to abide by the rules. But uh, I won't give an opinion on whether I think this is a good or bad thing. But uh, the one thing that I do think is it's unfortunate for the players, uh, the school, the university, that they've worked so hard to have this success and now they're not being allowed to uh, participate and take advantage of uh, what they've created for themselves uh, because I, I don't quite get the significance of why it's an important thing for them to not play or play or whatever. That that That's kind of beyond my pay grade, I guess. No, no, it is not. You are Nick Saban. You are in there. But for any of the NCAA stuff, do you get hurt? We don't, we're just trying to understand the back channels of it all because it all sounds like legalese. Do you talk to them whenever things are happening? Is there investigations taking place all the time? How does it work with the coach's relationship with the NCAA? Yeah, we have an opportunity if we, if we need to. We usually try to go through the conference office and the conference, you know, sort of expresses our opinions. But, you know, I think the NCAA – um, gets beat up, you know, quite a bit uh, over some of the things that have happened the last three, four, or five years in college football. But you know, a lot of these things are legal issues that got decided in the courts that put the NCAA in a position where they couldn't enforce their own rules. So um, they got caught in a little bit of a dilemma, and that's been a difficult management for you know all of us in college football, actually. Yeah, and it's only going to change continually as the NIL transfer portal, uh, conference realignment, what matters, what doesn't matter. Are we going to use reason and logic? Seems like never, but maybe, you know, maybe we will. Coach, last question for me, and we can't thank you enough for your time. Miss Terry, think about Chattanooga this week when we woke up after a big win over Kentucky, or was she still eyeing <laughs> Auburn? She's still eyeing Auburn. She's, she's, she's got, we got her refocused. All right. <laughs> That's good news. They're building a statue up there. We need yeah. to. Uh huh. Hey, Coach, you know this as well as anybody. Eye test is a big deal. You know that. Like, that's a real deal. Are you thinking about that whenever you're playing Chattanooga? Is that something that can even come into your mind? Well, I, I think that games like this can hurt you if you don't play well uh, because there's an expectation out there. Um, so I, I don't know if you call it eye test. I just think that you want your team to play well so that – you're continuing to build this momentum and rhythm that make people want to look at your team as a very good team that should be considered for whatever the circumstance may end up to be. Hell yeah. Hey, there's a lot going on. This college football world is wild. You're the greatest of all time at it. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Nick Saban. Thank you, yeah. Coach. Yeah. That's a real deal, though. One loss. Yeah. Yeah. Against Chattanooga. He's got to win by 60. Has mm -hmm. to. Like that, that yeah. is, mm -hmm. that's a weird thing to think, but that's the reality of the situation, AJ. Yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a no win situation where yeah you kill them of course it's what you should do if it's close obviously oh are we all wrong about Alabama well and if there's a like the way Oregon's playing they got one loss yep. mm -hmm. how that ends up who knows Michigan Ohio State you know one okay. loss who, who's Texas Texas one loss and then in that committee from what I, I've never been in the meeting I've never heard it but the way it's described is like everything gets talked about so you don't think like a performance against Chattanooga just two weeks ago isn't going to be in it definitely yeah. going to be brought up about it so if they don't just absolutely Chattanooga good football team mm -hmm. Chattanooga's a good football team yeah. What's your record? They try. <laughs> the news, yeah, they're good football teams. I don't, know, I don't know if they have to win by 60, but they should win by 45. That's, is, what's the spread? 44 and a half. Vermont. 
Ooh, Jeez boy. Louise. Kidding That's what me? we're saying. That's a lot of pressure. The, hey, you, you got to, hey, all right, boys, let's go. We got to beat him by at least 45. Do we, we have go. the clip of him talking about uh, the boys with the empty stadium uh, at the end of the game? Coach Saban actually chit chatted about one of the members of the team coming up to him and explaining the situation there. Go ahead, run it. Uh, I think they were sort of excited about the fact a couple guys came up to me and, you know, I always talk to them about when we play on the road, you know, if you empty the stadium, um, that means, you know, you really beat the other team. So a couple guys, made a, I didn't use that in this game, but they certainly got the message and said, hey, coach, look around. So I'm um, pretty proud of them, the way they played today. Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, boys, you won, but did you? Fans still in the stands. Look at this. Look, look around. It's embarrassing. What, how much? Four minutes left in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. Why are they still here? Because it's 16 points, 13 points. Look at them. Still a full house. Then whenever you're blowing a team out, third quarter, everybody's like, yep. look at that. Yeah. This is uh -huh. this is what it is. That's that's how you like – that's like next level motivation mm -hmm. to be like – Hey, we need yep. to we need to keep going. He said we need to step on a pedal, pedal to the metal. We need to flat that thing. We need to keep going to build. And his idea and reasoning was because we need to continue to build momentum. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it strictly from a college football playoff perspective, it's like, hey, yeah, need that stadium emptied. Need to be blowing them out. Need to handle business quickly too. That thing needs to be handled very quickly because if not, you're going to be judged against somebody else. You might have a little bias towards another team because of something they were able to accomplish. The four playoff spots is bananas. Nuts. And in its final year, you know, because it's going to 12 next year. In its final year, it might be its most electrifying conversation about it all because of the, you know, the parody across the country right now. And does it mean more? Like, is this one of those championships where it's like, yeah, sure, you guys got in on the 12, but we won the final four team college football playoff, and it just it meant something more back then when we didn't let everybody in. If I won, I would be saying that. Absolutely. Yeah. Do the BCS yeah. people say that? Yeah. I, yeah it was B just two. Exactly. Hey, BCS, man, there was only. You got to win more games with the 12 team format, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, but if you win your championship, it matters. Yeah, and you can lose more as you know, well. If you win your conference, yeah. it matters. Now it's like. True. Yeah, man. you can say, hey, I won back in the day when you couldn't slip up. You could barely slip up once during the season. Yeah, not once. Nope. Tell you. Right in your face for the rest of your life. You slip True. up once, especially in the first quarter. It's over. <laughs> Forever. That's a damn shame. I'm happy we're out of that. Once we get to 12, I think it'll be better. Yeah. More opportunity. Speaking of opportunity, this dude had an opportunity to start as a rookie in the NFL, and he just bodied people. Yep. Just a grown-ass man immediately upon birth. A dude out of Iowa Hell from the yeah. University of <laughs> Iowa. Tackle for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Tristan Wirfs. Yeah. How you doing, man? I'm good, Patty. How you doing? Good. Hey, you're an old man now in the NFL since the last time we chatted. How's the body holding up? How do you feel? I feel all right. You know, I ain't doing too bad for week 11, you know? Hey, whenever you first got in the league, it was like easy. It was like a fish to water. You still feel oh, yeah. like? Yeah, absolutely. Just so easy blocking these professional athletes at the NFL level. How do you feel? Big time win, obviously. You had the ball in your hand. You were going. Are you getting better? Do you feel like a savvy vet at this point? Where are you now versus maybe the last time we talked to you a year and a half ago? Um, I think just a little bit more comfortable. Um, you know, there's a lot of nerves, you know, as a, as a rookie, just about just about everything, really. Um, but now you just kind of settle in and, and, you know, treat it as business as usual. Go ahead, AJ. How's he was, he was the, toting was... that rock, though, you know what I mean? Dude, Bank. yes, was he was. That. And then afterwards, I don't know if you saw it, Bank. He's like, yeah, get the big train <laughs> to rock, Bank. That's what he was saying. Get him the ball. Make him eligible, Baker. You can do that. <laughs> oh, yes. Look at this. Beast. And then afterwards is the best. I hope we have the, yup, yup. <laughs> don't waste the moment. Don't waste the moment. You got it. <laughs> dar, dar, dar. You had Vita in the backfield. Yeah, you did. You looked incredible. You and Vita Vea at fullback and running back yes. as a goal line package is something oh. maybe the next brotherly shove in that whole thing. Could uh, you imagine that? Be sick. Why don't we imagine? There's a dry race board right behind you. Go ahead and draw it up there. <laughs> Go ahead and put, the, yep, put it in there. I'll uh, dial it up. I'll dial it up. <laughs> Go ahead, AJ. Tristan, I mean, it's funny Bake showed up. I was going to ask you, like, what's it been like, you know, playing with Baker there? Obviously, we get to see how his, his passion, how fire he is on the field, and how, how much he loves to compete. Has it been what you expected? Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been awesome from the moment, you know, we first met. Um, I think we had a great relationship and being able to hang out outside the facility as well. Um, but just the passion that Bake brings, you know, every day, you know, like you just saw um, every day of the facility, you know, it's it's it's, it's incredible. Yeah, it's much different than Tom Brady, I'd say. Yeah, a little different. 
Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, what, are, what, are, what are the expectations, though, with your team? Obviously, you guys can beat anybody. You started the game, started the season. Here we go, much better than anybody thought. Had a little bit of a moment. We feel to be back. Expectations are we can go do this thing, I assume. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the division's kind of up, up, up for grabs, so it's just, you know, being on top of the details, being on top of the little things, and, and you know, locking in this third quarter of the season and, um, you know, coming out on top. Connor, go ahead, pal. Yeah, Tristan, when it comes to the team as a whole, do you guys feel like you're kind of hitting your stride right now? Because it is kind of that portion of the season where football gets, you know, the most important and also in your division, you know, everything is very close with the Saints and Atlanta at times. But do you guys feel like right now you're getting hot and you're kind of more confident than ever going into this back nine of the season? Yeah, absolutely. I think I think what was tough, you know, having that week where we had like a week four bye week. You know, we, we started out hot with the three with the three W's, and then we kind of we went on a bye week. So it kind of just kind of um, blew that blew that flame out we had for a little bit. Um, but just you know, getting back in the groove, getting back in the swing of things, and 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 getting on a hot streak, and 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 kind of just taking off from there. Speaking of a hot streak, go ahead, Ty. Yeah, Tristan. First and foremost, go Hawks. Wish you were still in Iowa City. We could really use you this year. Um, just curious when. I mean, I, listen. I know. Hey, you got you got to focus on the NFL. You guys are trying to win a division right now. But do you pay much attention to what's going on in Iowa City and Iowa? And do you think um, like all the shit that Iowa gets for their offense being kind of as bad and inept as it is, which wasn't really the case when you were there? But you know, it, I guess the seeds were kind of starting then. Like, do you think that's warranted? And uh, just do you have any thoughts or opinions on Iowa, who is, you know, fingers crossed, going to be paying for a Big Ten championship here in a couple weeks? Yeah, um, I try and watch. I try and watch Iowa every Saturday. How? Um, How do you I, watch that? What do you watch? It's like rugby, just scrumming around. He's not a boy. Yeah, well, I, good punning. Tory Taylor, great yeah. punning. Dog. Yeah, those are my boys. You know, I trained with. The, I trained with those guys um, after my rookie year. I went back to Iowa and trained with them. Um, but you know, at the, at the same time yet, yeah, like, you know, they, they kind of were, were fed a, a shit sandwich this, this season with the, with all the stuff that was going on, like the whole stuff with Brian and be coming out in the media. But at the same time, the Hawks are eight and two, you yeah. know, they find a way to win. KF finds a way to win. Um, you know, and I, I love Brian. I love KF, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll die for those guys. You know, they, they gave me an, an opportunity from, you know, a small little town and, um, you know, I'll always bleed black and gold, but you know, eight and two, we'll see in Indy. Big Hell Ten yeah. Championship coming right yeah. up in Indianapolis. Go ahead, AJ. Hey, well, I'm curious what it's like to try to, to block uh, Vita Vea every once in a while if he tries to, to rush off the edge. We watched his <laughs> high school highlight film of him playing tailback the other day. Yeah, And that guy that's not obviously has unbelievable feet. He's seen an unbelievable this? athlete. Yeah, we his 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 high school running back tape is is not fair at all. That shouldn't have been allowed. But um, <laughs> also as a tackle block in Vita, like he he just did it this past game against the Titans. He went out to the defensive end spot. Like that's that's impossible. Like if you got the slide coming to you, maybe yeah. Look at look at this. It's not fair. That was an L one right there yeah. too. Yeah. At like three fifteen. Clean. Just clean cut. <laughs> See ya. Chris Berman would lose his mind oh, yeah. if this was happening. And we just saw you get the rock this last week. I'm telling you, you two yep. in the backfield, mm -hmm. right next to Bake, Neat. why not? We don't have a tackle anymore, but who cares? We can yeah. run over anybody. Yeah. Could you imagine being like a freshman or sophomore in high school and like, yeah, you get, like, <laughs> go to your Friday night game and then you get a tackle, beat a fail? Like, come on. In Hawaii, too. You know, you're just out there on the island having a good time. Yeah. I'm going to have a good Friday night lights. Yeah, yeah I'm going to play football. It's going to be fun. I love football. <laughs> the first week, Vita Vea, 320, yeah. running back. Faster than you, stronger than you, and not scared Terrible. of running. Yeah, it's tough. That's like, uh, you know, the story always comes up about you being a high school wrestler and then you mm -hmm. and Lyndon Bomb, you know, yeah. kind of getting better. It's Lyndon like Bob. you big dudes are so athletic these days. Why is that, you think? You, why do you think you, you guys have been able to evolve into such freak athletes as opposed to back in the past where the joints wouldn't be able to do anything that you guys do now? Um, I think just kind of a little bit, you know, being able to play all these sports that we did growing up. Like I played football, baseball, wrestling, and track. You get you get you get exposed to different, you know, different movements, different things. Um, you know, it makes you a better athlete. That's why I try and tell kids all the time: is play as many sports as you can. Um, all it's going to do is help you. Yeah, uh, you guys aren't supposed to be that big and that athletic. Speaking of big and athletic, coming right up, Chuck Pagano has a question for you. Tristan, how you doing, man? You got a couple good, of my former you? coaches in their coaching. Joey Gilbert. Oh. Yeah. Is he down there? Who are you? Joey, is Joey, is that your meeting room right there? Yeah, he's he's not in here right now, but yeah, Coach Joe's my favorite. Does nope. he still walk the way he was? I mean, that guy. He got a knee done, right? So he's he's yeah, like six, both. He's like six three. Is, is he like six three now? So he used to this used to <laughs> like he was the picture of old school medicine. 
<laughs> nice. Great dude. Unbelievable nice. guy. Tell him and Goody I said what's up. Hey, huge challenge, uh, obviously, <laughs> this week. Jeez. <laughs> 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 Outside of the feet. He's got them both fixed. Good for him, dude. 6'3". Six, six, That's what I'm saying, because he was he was literally... And he's working out, right? Yeah, a lot, Kristen? Is his weight him. good? That's so he got his weight Yeah, he, walk, he, he walks all the time. Every morning I see him walking. Yeah, that's because he used to not be able to. <laughs> I mean, good for Joey. Hey, congrats, coach. Yeah. Him and Goody, great crew. There he is. Good dude. One of the best dudes oh. of all time. You can have a beer at 10 with him for sure. That's a <laughs> good guy. Good guy. Anyways, go ahead, Chuck. Hey, so huge challenge coming up against the Niners, right? And just picked up mm -hmm. Chase Young like they didn't have enough, you know, rushers. And you watch that Jacksonville yeah. tape. I looked at that Jacksonville game and – Shoot, they got Bosa and and Chase and lined up in the A gaps. Is you know a double a double mug look. What kind yeah. of challenges uh, are you gonna are you expecting in this one? And and how big is communication gonna be for you guys up front trying to handle all these looks? Yeah, um, I was kind of saying the biggest thing biggest thing for us is staying out of third and long because you know they, the Niners try and get the lead and then they, they then they unleash the dogs pretty much. They let the they let their front four eat so. Um, if we can keep it in third and manageable and, and slow those guys down, you know, with maybe some quick game or, or you know, just some, just some stuff that we don't need a, a seven-step drop for is going to be going to be huge. So um, definitely definitely staying out of third and long is going to be great. And communication across the board, you know, on the road in San Fran is going to be huge for us. The, you know, the old adage is like tackles can't sleep the week of insert name of two great pass rushers. I assume yeah. life is different whenever you're playing a team like the Niners. And what type of film are you watching? Are you looking for tendency, scheme, strategy? What is it? Just their moves, really. I mean, we know, like, everybody and their mother knows Nick Bosa's got one of the best first steps, you know, in the NFL. So, um, for me, it's getting – for me and Luke, it's just going to be getting to our spot square um, and, and shutting down his power. You know, we, we know he always tries to lift, lift the outside arm. Um, so, shutting down his power, you know, and then and reacting to everything else. And we know Chase Young's a power guy. Um so it's just going to be for us, you know, being able to shut that down and 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 um, stopping the twist games they have off of that. Because early in the season, we got me and Luke both got picked picked in some games. So setting vertical, setting square, and just reacting off everything else is going to be going to be the biggest thing for us. I don't think people fully comprehend the amount of film study that's happening. Yeah. You know, the offensive line and everything, trying to yeah. guess. And then once you're in real life, it's a whole different ball game. Yeah. Got to react while yeah. getting punched in the face. So, yeah. yes. hey, we respect the hell out of what you guys do. Yeah. Last question here from Tone. Yeah, Tristan, speaking of uh, film study, you, you moved from right to left. Um, first off, now that we're halfway through, how is the move going? And did, when you did it, did you watch film of guys like Laramie Tunzel, Trent Williams, like to kind of kind of see what they do since they're two of the best. And then since Trent's going to be on the other side this week, will you uh, try to talk to him, maybe pick his brain a little bit? Yeah, um, I think I think it's going pretty good. Um, there's still there's still some days where I feel really awkward. You know, it's just it's just it's just about getting as comfortable comfortable as I can. Um, and I actually did. I watched a lot of Tyron Smith, Trent Williams, Laramie Tons. I watched a lot of those guys this offseason just to try and um, take some things that they do and, and kind of maybe try it for, for myself. Um, but at the same time, like I, I knew what I was doing on the right side. So I was just trying to pretty much trying to replicate what I did on that side mm -hmm. over to the left side, this off, this whole off season, just, um, you know, when I first started taking sets, when I first started doing all that, um, but it's really just, it, it's really just about getting comfortable and, and, um, uh, and I'm definitely going to talk to Trent, um, hopefully after the game, uh, this weekend, me and Hawker, you know, we've been working on, you know, and they, uh, We've been trying to get jacked. Oh, you know? yeah. What do you What do you do to try to manhandle adult professional athletes? You big. We do explosive workouts. We benching. What are we moving? What do we do in the weight room on a regular basis? Oh geez. Um, well, this summer it was me and Luke Gedeke. We lifted together all summer. Um, what are we doing? Weights. Just stay, moving weights. We're just moving weights. Just moving heavy weight, bench, squat, a lot of stuff. You know, there's a couple of videos of us squatting. We're just, we're just just getting hyped. Just two just two guys being dudes. In the weight room, it, it was a blast. Well, let's talk about some numbers. You know, let's start some numbers because mm -hmm. we're in our sure. benching this morning. Where are we? Sure. Oh yeah. yeah, big weight. Yeah, we're talking three big weight. <laughs> yeah, we're talking three hundred and eighty-three pounds uh -huh. yeah. north of that. Yeah, too. What, what are you guys doing? Just so we can know if you're benching more than us. <laughs> Average day in the summertime is probably three sixty-five, three sixty-five to four hundred five. For what? For how many? Three to four. That's no easy. way. I don't agree. That's, I don't believe. A, that's a, that's a workout. That's a workout right there. How about squat? What are we doing? Because we're moving I four, mean, five, five hundred and six pounds. Five fifty this morning. 17 pounds. What are you guys yeah. doing over there? What are you guys doing? Just five sixty-five. Five sixty-five is all we're doing. That's, that's what we got up to this summer. Is that real? 
Yeah. You You're watch. jumping out of pools too, aren't you? Not anymore, no. <laughs> Not anymore? What, you too old? You were. I was, yes. I don't know. I, I just haven't tried it in like in like two years, two, three years. Should I try it again? Post it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, if I could jump out of a pool, I 12 would. Foot. I 12 would. foot pool. <laughs> shoom, shoot up from the bottom right out of it. 12, 12 foot. Come up like a dolphin. <laughs> Aquaman. Whoa, yeah. right out of there. You know, really showcase that explosion. Maybe wear a flipper. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Wear one. Yeah, so here you go. You're almost there. 12 foot. How many times did you uh, did you Jeez. not make it hit your face? Was there ever that fear before you got to that? That one, no. That was that was the second time I did it. I did it the first time, and I said, oh, shit, we got to take a video of this. And I did it again, and that was the video. Okay, so that's the first two times you've tried you've hit it. You've never missed. Yeah. Nope. Yeah, we need to go a little deeper next. Uh, yeah. yeah yep. six, I've tried I've tri I've, I tried four feet, because that's three and a half feet. I tried four feet like two years ago, and I scraped the shit out of my shin. So I was like, that's that's kind of when I hung up the... <laughs> yeah, up. smart, smart, smart. smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we don't. We got a big week coming. Maybe don't do it today. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we appreciate you, man. You've already been an All-Pro. You're a legend and clearly one of the most gifted athletes of all time. Can't wait to see you with the ball in your hands more. Let's make sure Baker knows that. And we can't wait to see you have continued success, pal. Thank you, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, Iowa Hawkeye. Hey, they're tough to watch, dude. Like, I understand you're watching them. They're tough, though. You know what I mean? A lot of snoozers out there for the Iowa team. That's getting a W, though. It's all that matters. That's right, baby. Well, that, that's right. That's Iowa true. football. That's Born true. into win. it. Born into it. Tristan Worth. <laughs> yeah. I guess that is the only conversation that should be had. Yeah. Are you winning, winning or are you losing? That's right. right. 22 zip, right? Yeah. That that uh, that game honestly was the most exciting Iowa game in quite some time. Like they probably should have scored forty points. That's kind of just Iowa's mo. Like throw a pick in the red zone before the end of the half. You know, a couple other issues, but twenty two nothing in Iowa terms like that for like if that's yes. Alabama. That's seventy five to nothing. Okay, all right, yeah, I understand that. Yeah, you put up twenty two. You guys think you got Patrick Mahomes quarterback all of a sudden, and that's good. Hey, we're climbing. 22 this week. Deacon Hill looked like Patrick Mahomes. He had his best game. What he if did. there's 24 points next week? Whoa. Oh, no, no, no. We need we need, we need, need to cross the cross the 30 threshold. Wow, there. let's we not get to. carried away. Need to. You, see, this is what 30? I'm talking about. This is why the 22 is a problem. Because listen to you now. 30 points? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> well, well, now I'm thinking moving forward. So we got it. We got to hit 30. And then you got to hit 35 against Nebraska the day after Thanksgiving, which sets up for a 42 to 50 point explosion in the Big Ten Championship. <laughs> oh, okay, so we're on the right path, yeah, actually. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. All the stumbles we had all season led us right to where we needed to be. Bingo. All part of the plan. 22 points, 30, yep. 35, right. 50. Right. That's, we're all right in front of you. It, it, you know what? It, it honestly couldn't have worked out better. It really couldn't have. Yeah. So what? We had to fire our offensive coordinator middle of the year and basically just have him be a lame duck the rest of the year. That's all part of the plan. He's still calling plays last week, right? Yeah. He will be Pressure. calling plays till the end of the year. No question. Yeah. He's going next year. Can I have yeah. a little respect for this last year? He's he's leaving it all out there. Well, 22 he's, he's points. Fired That's right. lame duck. You know, I just didn't know. The interesting thing about it is I appreciate the fact you guys chose to lose two games early so you could take the college football playoff distraction exactly. away from the Smart. team. Play. Boys couldn't handle that much. Genius. Well, you know, we're 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 just we're thinking Rose Bowl, you know, and and if we, I mean, to be, to be frank, they did not lose that Minnesota game. That was horseshit. We've we've kind of, you know, You're right, old buddy's hurt. Uh, yeah, oh, Cooper, the fair catch, the fake fair catch call. Cooper, right? yeah. Cooper DeGene, uh broke call. broke his foot in practice yesterday. He's out for the rest of the year, which is an absolute backbreaker. Cooper DeGene, DB punt returner. Yeah, be, best player on the team. Top fifteen partner. draft pick. Yes, which hopefully well, this doesn't impact that, but. He's going to be, you know, we'll see. So that's that's how many points away from a team that Probably, but doesn't score a lot of points. I'd say he's 10. good for at least six points a game. Three and a half to seven points. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. <Whoa>. Seriously. <laughs> so does that, by the way, Godspeed. Thank yeah. you for everything yeah. you take. Yeah. Love you, Coop. Coop. Godspeed. Great football player. We appreciate you coming in the NFL, too. Yeah. Palm Cannot floor. Cannot wait yeah. to watch you in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Going to be a lot of conversations about you yep. in the NFL, Cooper. Can't wait for it. But does that not worry you a little bit about the 30, 35, 50, 52? Ooh. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? Oh, yeah. That worries me about, hey, this 8-2, and 10-2 and two pipe dream could turn into 8-4 and four real quick. AJ, Ohio State, Michigan, just about 10 days out here.
so much mm-hmm. on the line, not just in the Big Ten. No, not just SEC, games. Pac-12. I mean, it is mm-hmm. implications. All. How's the game look? Is it a close game? Ooh. If it's a close game, maybe they both sneak in. Yeah. You know, it's like uh, it is weird time for college football. Speaking of, there's an update on the NCAA declining JMU and Jacksonville State and another team for bowl eligibility due to a rule that they've had. Bruce Brown in the back there. Pete Thamel has given a couple updates. What are the updates? Uh, Matt Brown, we were not able to read the entire article that you just sent into the group text. What are the updates? Is it, is it anything about James Madison being able to play in their championship game uh, from the NCAA? Um, yeah, so basically the Virginia Attorney General is just turning up the heat saying that they will sue the uh, NCAA so. and um, say that they're basically breaking anti-trust uh, laws by, you know, not letting them compete when they have qualified to do so and all that. Okay. Well, and then the NCAA is going to say, we got these right here. Yeah. Just pipe down. Huh? We got these rules right here. Yeah. See it? Here's your coach's signature. Here's your president's signature. Here's your athletic director's signature. But I do appreciate the state of Virginia saying, "Yeah, we're not standing for this because we all think it's dumb. We all think this one right here, these guys and girls make just stupid decisions. Mm-hmm. Forever. Like, if they just made, like, sound... This feels like an easy one, though, right? Doesn't this feel like an easy one to overturn? Are they just... Is there a theory, hey, if we let this happen, then the floodgates will open and other people will try to take advantage of this? Those rules back in the day, but now if people were to take advantage of that, it would be good for everybody. Like, back yeah. in the day, I think they were scared that people would just jump and try to go to D1 and blah, blah, blah. It's like, if you do that now, it's good for your university. The amount of money now that's available and everything, it's like, why not let people do it? Especially with them trying to meet them in the middle with the two-year transition. First year, we'll bump out the mediator year. We'll bump out the uh, purgatory year, pretty mm-hmm. much. We'll just go right into D1 with our first year so we can maybe meet in the middle and then this is just like the Tez Walker decision. It's like, come, what, that was an easy one. Like, hey, just be a human. The other schools are saying, let this dude play. So it's not, you're, nobody is in favor of what you're doing. In this particular case, nobody is like, James Madison doesn't deserve it. It's like, just do, just be. How just many people reasonable. make this decision? Is there like a, a board? Is board, there a group? How many do they vote small. on it? Allegedly, there's like numerous committees that had, had to meet on this and a vote and then this and that. And it's like, hmm. I think they say that just so they can do this number here, you know, because then they so can just. Is there more to this that we don't know? Like that the NCA hasn't put out or something? I don't think so. Honestly, I, I, in hmm. the Tez Walker situation, the NCAA acted like they didn't know everything that we all knew yeah. about the entire situation. They said, well, if UNC would have presented this to us like weeks ago, it was like, it was all out. Everything. Was, mm-hmm. You don't have to be like the way you are. You know, we you've been hated forever because how stupid you are. You don't have to do that. There's a new generation in there. I think there's a new president. I think there's a new yeah. a new thing. It's like you can evolve with where the state of collegiate sport is right now and where world is. You're allowed to do that, and they just choose not to do it. It's like okay, well then we're just gonna bury you for being dumb a lot more than what used to happen, where nobody would say it. This is just nobody's happy about this decision. So why make it? It doesn't make you're not serving anybody. And you're screwing over the student human athletes yeah. who you're supposed to be protecting. It's like I, none of it makes sense to me. I just don't get it. That's the part. It's like if they even had just the slightest bit of like wherewithal to understand like, hey, we know what the public perception of the NCAA is. We know how everyone is going to react to this when it ultimately comes out. Like, why don't just for once we just kind of like go baby face and say, hey, you know what? We're going to ignore this. We're going to let them play this year. Like, they just, you, you just need to have the smallest amount of self awareness to know how this was going to go if they just decided to go down the road that they always do. But then you're still just saying, like, ah, screw it. We're going to do it anyway. And we're okay with everyone being pissed off and just continue to say all this stuff that they always say about us. Yeah. And I think they're, you know, I don't want to judge the NCAA too much. Already have. Sure. But I don't well, want to judge them too much more because I don't know the humans behind the How scenes. How many are there? How many humans are there involved? Numerous committees. I, we went down there. They, they, mm, so one of the rookie obligations here whenever you're an Indianapolis Colt was to go see the NCAA facilities. And then we sit in a boardroom and I'm just like, I have a toothpick in my mouth. We just got done eating some food. It was ribs, I think. So sure. I had some shit in my mouth. Sure. Too. I sit down and this person from the NCAA comes in and says, that I need to take the toothpick out of my mouth if I want a job. And I said, I don't want a job. I'm here to punt. <laughs> I, all I have a job. I'm here. So they were coming in to tell us about how we can maybe get a job <laughs> at the NCAA. They had no idea. They ran into Colin Clarity, went to Brown, who hated uh, the NCAA did like a research paper, I think. Uh, Donald Brown was not the biggest fan. Uh, Austin Colley, I don't think. Feely Mawala, I don't think they knew what. So it just became us 
in a verbal joust with a different committee from the NCAA. I don't think they did it ever again after our class. It's awesome. But it was it was one of those things where I think they love that they have power. I think the, oh, yeah. the people yeah. that are there love that yeah. they have power. And anytime they get an opportunity to in there, oh yeah, they're gonna you, you see here. They're gonna pull it. It's like, well, everybody's just gonna hate you. So hope you continue to just do dumb stuff so we can all have something we can rally around. And that's that the NCAA makes dumb decisions for no reason at all. There's no positive at all in any of it. Shout out to the NCAA. Shout you guys have been doing it a long time. Right. Been doing that a long Congrats. time. That's right. Congrats. Selling out arenas through the yeah. same old song. Mm -hmm. Consistent. Dumb decision, stupid decision, ineptitude at the highest level. See you tomorrow. Live from James Madison. Goodbye. Nailed it. Right on the queue. Hell yeah. You probably haven't been back down there, have you? Where is that? The NCAA. Fuck them. No, I, I didn't want to. Yeah. I hated them Wait, in college. So oh, did we you guys always did that? They took all of the drafted guys to the – was it like a recruiting trip for them to try to – No, it was like um, – it was a part of like player development. Like uh, oh, okay. it was the same group that – you remember you had to do like those classes with somebody? Yeah. You had to do those, I got you. Yeah, where you get to the NFL rookie. They probably want you to say, hey, can I come have an internship here in the offseason and all that? Yeah, they were trying to introduce us to something that – you know, because we're athletes and we're in the city, maybe sure. introduce you to some people. It was not that way. It did not go that way. It did not. Well, if a guy way. walks in like that and tells you, like, and speaks from such, like, authority, that's just tough to do. Just Especially to young, to I don't young athletes. Did you too. Yeah. Hey, you. Shut up. <laughs> I don't want to work here. Yeah, like, we're, they made me come here. I did not choose. Could you and fucking imagine you had that? You one guy's... of those meetings inside West 56 early on like that. What's that? that? Which one? It depends. There was numerous ones in there. The I mean, very there's... first one? Yeah, people telling... People walking in and just telling me something always goes really well. God. Always. Always. Goes. Why would we start a relationship Source. like this? Why would... It was... I don't know if we were the right class to go in there either. You know what I mean? Because, like, at West Virginia, I watched Pat White and Steve Slayton. And I know Noel Devine came in afterwards and everything. But I watched Pat White and Steve Slayton build that entire place. Yeah. I mean, just, like, new stadium, new buildings downtown. And, obviously, the academia people aren't appreciative most times. I think in West Virginia they were, but like that whole stadium and the campus, more people wanted to go to school there because we're on national TV. Mm -hmm. Then they're hearing about the good times that we're having. So that, you know, a couple, maybe a group of humans started flooding in there. Like West Virginia just, it blew up while we were there. Oh, yeah. Lucky to be there. Basketball as well. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. basketball team was doing their thing. First pit snoggle in the boys. Missoula. And they transitioned into yeah. Missoula and Joe Alexander and everything like that. Like it was Deshaun Butler. It was a good, it was a good time. Huggins. There. Bob Huggins. He came in afterwards. Yep. He came yeah. in right after. He was Bayline. after you. Yeah. Right? Oh, you weren't there with him at all? No. As I was leaving, he was coming in there. But like, yeah, I watched this all happen and. Pat White sold, I don't know, 400,000 number five jerseys, yeah, probably. At least. And he didn't, wasn't allowed to get anything for it. Steve, he didn't have the massive, profitable NFL career. Steve Slayton, obviously, he got drafted. He made some money. I'm happy for it. But he didn't get to see it. It's like mm -hmm. what Steve Slayton could have done at car dealerships his freshman, sophomore year around West Virginia. If he was like, it was like, so I was mostly pissed at the NCAA because I felt like they were fucking over a couple of my friends mm -hmm. like, through this entire thing. Thing. And then you start just hearing like, yeah, this is how it is. It's like, well, it shouldn't be. I think it's stupid. But I think I'm not the only athlete that's ever had that idea. Mm -hmm. I'm not the only one that's thought that. But in that meeting, there was six or seven of us that all felt the same exact way. And it was just a firing squad of that NCAA coming in. Oh, this committee is for eligibility. So don't, what do we do on a daily basis? We look into da, 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 da. Do you do anything to help anybody or anything? Well, yeah, we do. We think we do. In and out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Another group comes in. Of course. Oh, so you're the one who robbed Pat the most. You're the amateurism. You created that. Is that you're the one? Well, no, that's our division, though. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Donald Brown, 31 jerseys up there in Connecticut. This mm -hmm. guy became yeah. a fucking Heisman candidate in, uh, in, in UConn. You know, the whole thing. Household name. You just kind of, thank you. Thank you, guys. Then the next one comes in. <laughs> so it's not a good relationship. So I'm not the right guy. Like, there's some things popping off, maybe, you know, this weekend where, uh, the NCAA could be a part of the conversation. Yep. And normally, I'm not a bad person to go in and do a, hey, what do we need to you yeah, know, get this done? What do we need to, how do we, you know, I'm not mm. a bad person for that. Normally, I've been uh, pretty successful at that particular thing. The NCAA is not the group, though, where uh, <laughs> I'm the, uh, no. I'm not the right guy to you sit don't in think there. You can I don't think I'm the right play. guy. Yeah, I've said some things publicly about how dumb they are, and they prove themselves to be mm -hmm. the game. Yeah. Uh, right, yeah. Literally all the time. This is another dumb one. Just doesn't make any sense to me. Let's get to a break. Especially, like, the thought of, like, hey, everyone's gonna is gonna open up the floodgates. 
Like, you think every team can go to Division One football and be undefeated yeah. in Week Ten? Yeah. Like, are you giving are you shitting me? Yeah, dude. It. Yeah. You gotta remember though. Don't say it. Don't say it, Pat. Don't do it. A lot of cowards in positions. Oh. Okay. Who are just trying to cover their ass, get by. A lot of money's been made doing this the entire time. We're just going to do this. What's my job? Come up. Come to work. Do this. Mm-hmm. It's not doing anything. Mm. How do I not get fired? And how do I make myself look as good as I can? Just the ball? And not even look as good as I can. Maybe don't, they don't even notice me. Yeah. Just let yeah, me just, yeah. you know, just kind of skirt through. There's a lot of those people in positions of power right now. So whenever they get like presented an idea, maybe like, hey, you can work around. It's like, what? No, I don't do that. I show up, we do this, mm-hmm. and I do that. It's like those people, I think, will inevitably dissipate in a lot of businesses, including the NCAA and others. And it's like when that happens, we'll look back on all this shit and just be like, how dumb were they? Yeah. So, so, so dumb. Begs the question, you know, is the organization broken? broken. Agreed. Yeah. Let's get to a break. Maybe. Hour three, we got a good one. Cody Schrader's coming on from yeah. Zoom. Ooh. There's a guy. I assume the NCAA is. They tried to fuck him. So, somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Point. Somehow. Yeah. I don't know how, but I assume somewhere in there. To find a way to get those yards taken off the record book. For something. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, something. He did something. Of course. Who knows when or how. Nope. When he was at Truman State, do you know this guy actually got a hamburger from somebody? Ooh. I was like, whoa. Oh, oh, oh. Spend him. Take him out of the yeah. game. Well, they could still do that. There's a couple games left in the season. True. So yeah. Let's not open any. Yeah. Wait, Let's really. not ask him about anything that happened at Truman State. Yeah. Harbaugh got two games for a burger. Three. Yeah. Very. Yes. Oh, that three. was self-imposed. 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 Yeah, that was Five. Michigan. That was self-imposed. They were going to give it. So, actually. So, maybe they will bend for you. Well, well, actually. So, Michigan imposed the penalty on Harbaugh. The Big Ten imposed a penalty on Harbaugh. The NCAA hasn't weighed in yet. No, yeah. and they will. And we assume they're going to find a way to make this whole thing about them. Yeah. And uh, that might not come until 2027, 2028. Sure. But it's coming. Oh, yeah. We know that. If we know anything about the NCAA. They will never miss an opportunity to make it about themselves one last time. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. They always come. They certainly do. And they come harder. Every single time. They just come later. Yeah, also right. true. <laughs> you got to work for it. Kit Kat. Need a Kit Kat. Bingo. That would help. Saw a Sandman last night, Adam Sandler. God. Go to his show. Yes. Oh, his Could- stand-up that's traveling? Brother. Good. Wednesday night, that fucker was packed out mm-hmm. in Indianapolis. And I'll tell you oh. what, that's the fastest hour 40 that's ever flown by. At a live show in my life. Could not recommend it. I, is it I, just him? Does he, does he play the guitar? What is it? It is one of the most ridiculously oh. hilarious things. Oh, just man, I need to go. He's so put good. his entire break. He's wearing Adidas fucking sweats up there. Hoka shoes. He's got a hoodie over top of a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> a part of the show is him taking the hoodie off. He's like, oh, ladies? Like yeah. the whole, I, <laughs> he, he refers He's to himself as Sandman numerous times oh. through it all. It is fantastic yeah he makes like great stand-up he's got re- absurd fucking songs mm-hmm. with videos that are matching in the back and then as soon as the song's over right into a state like not even a no break hour 40 straight through you don't you just it's like a buzzsaw just did like, you sing the chris farley tribute song with the video he did at the end yeah. so man that thing's that thing is sad very serious yeah very real obviously and i uh i missed that mm-hmm. which i do apologize for that place was packed out. I was not about sitting in that traffic. Yeah. When he yeah. gets that microphone, and he was licking that thing up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like an ice cream cone. I mean, he was talking about adults eating ice cream I mean, and talking to his kids. I mean, just like the shit. He was he was fantastic. Could not recommend it more. Yeah. I would go see the Sandman again tonight if it was oper- if it was offered. And there was an appearance by Kevin James. Yeah, oh. it's not just stand-up. Oh, what? Like, this is a It's a show. Yeah. This, dude's, this dude's doing a full show. Yes. It's a full show. It's not just. He's all by himself. But it's a full fucking show. It's yeah. phenomenal. Sandman's got a fastball. Yeah, you can't compare it to other stuff, too. Like, we went to Chappelle recently and obviously Sandler last night. Like, two completely different shows and both great for their own reasons. But, like, the Sandman show is one of the best shows I've ever been to as a whole. It was Ooh. it was fast. At the arena? The basketball arena? Yeah. Yeah. And also, Jeez. Chappelle's show, we were sitting right next to the loudest fucking suite of all time. Yes. Oh, yeah. And he's the GOAT, too. So it's not like we're... They kind of ruined it. 
Yeah. That sweet kind of ruined Chappelle. Missed about half of his jokes because of that sweet next to it. Yeah. Would hear punchline, didn't hear setup because sure. Blonde Lady in Sweet 51 was so funny to her <laughs> friends. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Heard her, her setup, though. Well, she had to yeah. get him off. She had to let <laughs> yeah. him fire. And anytime there was a laugh break, you know, because we're laughing at jokes. So full. last week. Yeah, fool. We got time to tell stories now. Yeah. No. He's... So Chappelle was a different experience. Last night, that whole arena was just... In his part, I mean, he would. Yeah. He's a showman. This son of a bitch is a showman, showman. too. Well, he's a, you know, he's just walking around. Yeah, I think I'm feeling that. Mm -hmm. Like, and then he get a guitar in his hands. So good. This dude's fucking shredding, shredding. on the guitar. It was Sh so awesome. Doing a full. It was filthy. Yeah. You will never get bored during that show. It goes from comedy yeah. to music to comedy to this to that. It was so awesome. And then Kevin James fucking Boom. pops uh -huh. out of nowhere. Yeah. Did it he do some stand up? He he's done he used to be a stand up where he was. Uh, I saw him play some music. It was uh Yeah, he could go. He was off. phenomenal. He, he was, was there to play the bongos, AJ. Yeah, it was phenomenal. Yeah. It I was, love that man. And, and to the gentleman in uh the second row, uh just going forward when you go to comedy shows, you, you know, you can say I love you once and then just sh sit down and shut the fuck up. Well, old buddy with two beers early became a part of the show cuz mm -hmm. he was acknowledged early by mm -hmm. saying, man. There was a couple times Sam goes, "What does that say?" All right, I'll sign. Yeah, it was really cool. And then right into a joke. Like his. So good. It was maybe the smoothest I've ever seen. Yeah. It, it was, was phenomenal. It was, yeah. He's in Memphis tonight, I believe. You should go. You should definitely go. All right, let's get to a break. We got, yeah, it was awesome. I mean, he looks, he has five different costumes too during the thing. Yeah. Never leaves the stage. So. That's and, Sandman, baby. The uh, one, one old buddy who came and gave him his green tea too. Like there's there are a lot of cameos that you might not expect going into it that you get when you are there. Yeah, it's a full Sandler world. Yeah, it was cool. Is there an opener? Oh yeah. Okay. Two of them. Three of them. Both, all of them great. Anyone we know? Rob Schneider. Schneider. Oh, well, yeah, we know him. He had some politics hey. jokes. He did some politics jokes. Sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. He dives into that. In an arena too. I, I don't know and if I've ever seen anybody just kind of dive right That's in. Spade. What's that? Was David Spade there? Got a shout out. Obviously, Spade got a shout out. One of the jokes. It was good, dude. Yeah. It was good. Hey, way to go. At With how much shit he has created, mm -hmm. his creative stamina, phenomenal. So good. Because, like, he's saying stuff, and I'm like, how's the guy still got the juice to just, he's made 100 movies. Yeah. Just 100 movies. And he's still got another 100 more to make. Mm -hmm. He's phenomenal. Hey, thank you for a good Wednesday night, Adam. Love you, Sam, man. Yeah, man. All right, let's get to a break. On the other side, we'll break down why hockey is awesome. We'll talk to Cody Schrader. We got Kirk Herbstreit. We got Coach Chuck Pagano's wow. picks. He is currently 7-2-1 and one on Thursday Night Football Good. picks. We will ride the Paisano train into another glorious evening of beating up ESPN Bet. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. Take five. Five. What's up, y'all? It's Pac-Man Jones, and we back with another session of Undercover Dolls. He's an undercover dog. He's an undercover dog. For sure. My first dog is <coughs> Davin Singletary. This week, he had 30 carries for 150 yards. He's quick with his cuts. He's in and out his breaks. He got more yards against the Bengals than Derrick Henry, Nick Chubb, and Chris McCaffrey. My second undercover dog is Roy <coughs> Maffey. And this play right here sets a franchise record. Seven games, seven sacks. You will not forget this name. My third undercover dog tonight is Mike Ford. He had two PBUs, two tackles, and an interception. I don't know if you guys got to see this guy. He's very physical as a corner. Check out this play right here. Brown fans said this play changed the game. But check out the next play. His stick and a pick. That's why he's my third undercover dog. dog. On Twitter, hit me up. Hashtag undercover dogs. I'm trying to find all the undercover dogs dog around the league. He's an undercover dog. He's an undercover dog for sure. What's that coming down the track? What's that coming down the track? It's me, machine in the red and black. It's me, machine in the red and black. Nothing finer in the land. Ain't nothing finer in the land. Than a drunk, obnoxious Georgia fan. <laughs> Hey, 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 hey,
Then you go to pick up a box and uh, a bong falls out of there. What, do you have anything to say about that situation or what do we got going on? <laughs> that is not a bong, first of all. Hey, <laughs> the head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs, Kirby Smart. Yeah. In the SEC, you got to do that every week, man. It's how tough. easy this year. <laughs> like I said, there's an open invitation. Call Greg Sankey, come down here and get you some of this SEC if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to make a small contribution to the uh, Marine Corps Scholarship Fund. Give at least 15000 and see if, if Richard will match. I'll match. 15 k from match. us. Awesome. 15 k from you. We need Dick Smith, FedEx well, CEO, yep. 15000 That's 45000 to the Marine Scholarship Fund. And I believe today is the 248th birthday of the Marine Corps. So, ooh, oh! University of Georgia legend, ladies and gentlemen, Matthew Stafford. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, guys? Shout out to this man winning $1,000 on this Feel Good Friday when A.J. Hawk... deserve to wear the jeans on my chest they told and they me. said I need to get out of Chuck Seafood restaurant. This told is David Pollock's town. I told her right back to her face, I want to let you know you can say and think whatever you want about me. I love this Georgia Bulldog city. That's what I want to hear. You should take this in. It's pretty cool. I don't hear that. You need to. Because you've done a lot here that has been fantastic. Have you ever thought anything bad about a kicker before? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Trust what I taught you while we were off air and just let it rip. Yeah, Hot Rod was getting a little bit too many tips. We're going Georgia! 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 Oh, you're hyping it up. Georgia! Let's go! For $85,000 in drenched jeans. Do it! fans and any place that barks at everybody when they see them that's a town for me i got the bulldogs winning big today yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir everybody's got bryce young will levis and will anderson uh -huh. above cj stroud allegedly Lock them in. we will one million percent continue to drive that narrative that uh -huh. because with what my eyes seen aj and what yeah. you have seen if C.J. Stroud ends up at the Colts at number four, uh -huh. I'm happy about the future of the Colts all of a sudden. Yep. So this will be the last time we say this. C.J. Stroud is the best quarterback in this draft class. That's right. For sure. We are massive fans of them. And whenever we say whatever we say over the next few months before the draft, we would like it to not be held against us because we know we are a part of the entire system here. Uh-huh. And we need C.J. Stroud and Indy. I have to have him. Plus, Absolutely. it's really fun to say Stroud. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we need him to go down to the fourth pick. <laughs> yeah, right. you think they have to trade up? Because Texans are right there at two, and, you know, those are the two quarterbacks of the future. Well, I'll tell you what, there's an opportunity and a chance for us to move, too. we got a lot of pieces to the sure. puzzle that That's aren't right. necessarily going to be there in the future, probably. You bundle that with the four overall pick. I think you could maybe move up to one, yeah. and then you get C.J. Stride. Hey. Why? Let's go. This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. Ah! The all 
all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pig! Damn it! Your friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport! 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 sport. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this glorious Coach Saban Thursday, November 16th, 2023. Hour three of this program starts now. Football! It's happening tonight. That man tackled more people than any other Green Bay Packer in history, A.J. Hawk. Hey, how's that eye feeling here about an hour in? Woo! Feeling pretty good. We're on the mend. We're going in the right direction, I think. I like the fact that Coach Saban was just chit-chatting with a guy in sunglasses on a random way, uh, Thursday afternoon in his world. And, you know, he had that eye. Oh, yeah. Yeah. About a week ago. Yeah. It's starting to heal up. A mm -hmm. little bit. I wish he would have just wore shades the whole night. Oh, oh yeah. Awesome. Could you imagine Coach Saban and say in shades talking to the team, coaching on the sideline, doing this, oh. doing his uh, radio show down there? That would have been awesome. I wonder if that's what he was thinking the entire time while you were talking to him. Great conversation with him. Just like it's always a great conversation with the talks the table at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Sweet shirt. Yeah, thanks, Pat. You know, it's all about love. I feel like we've been negative sometimes. Sometimes you need to remind people. You know, yeah, we've had a tough go of primetime games, but you can love them still. And when you, you know, you, you're going through your day today, there has to be a light at the end of the tunnel, and that's what this game is finally for us on Thursday. Yeah, that light at the end of the tunnel on other primetime games of recent history was the other train. That's right. You know what I mean? That was the other train light coming yeah. down, mm -hmm. man, said yep. MCDC. This time, we got air out there. Yeah, we're starting and we're finishing with probably two of the best primetime games we've seen the entire season. And tonight, we started with the Ravens and the Bengals in a three-and-a-half-point spread game that the AFC North has obviously future implications very much on the line. One half of the hammer, Dad, Dad. Cowboys tone digs right there, plus 155 for the Bengals on the road. Hmm. Not bad money line juice right there. Not Tom. bad money line juice at all, especially, uh, you know, in the AFC North where the games are always Titan, you have no idea what's going to go on. Um, it's not the side I would be on, but oh, oh, Tony. minus 185 for oh. Tone. Tone also said you should buy down the hook, make that minus three as opposed to three and a half. Always good to have a push as opposed to a loss at the Bingo. end of a field goal game. 36 years in the coaching game, 18 in college, 18 in the NFL. Coach Chuck Pagano is joining us. We had Coach Speak earlier. It was fantastic to get his input. Yep. He'll have a pick for tonight's game. What is your early lean indicator for this evening, Chuck? What did you look at? Yeah, it's going to be – these AFC North uh, games are always tight. Um, massive game for Cincinnati. Do or die deal as far as I'm concerned. Baltimore coming off that tough loss. Cincy coming off a tough one. I, I think it would be really hard. As good as, you know, L Lamar is, that offense, the way they can run the ball, Cincinnati struggles stopping the run. I think they're 30th in the National Football League in stopping the run. Uh, gave up 178 last week to Houston. Singletary, I don't back up, back up, yeah. running back had 150. That's a lot of yards, you know. And Baltimore's got you know the number two ranked defense. You know, if they can find a way, if they don't, they get to the fourth quarter and something happens, you know, with that with that Baltimore team, the yeah. three losses they've had. Fourth, going to be close. We're going to have to stay up for this entire thing. Yeah, just remember that. That's classic no. Thursday night football. Chuck, something happened to your neck. Yeah, what happened? I've been watching all just, day, looking at me sideways. I've been yeah, wondering. I got a little something going on. A okay? couple, three weeks now. Did you fall off a bike? What happened? Old no, every bag. now and then. It, you know, there was no heads up football when I was playing. It was all. Oh, crown. You've seen we the saw video, those clips. Right? Yeah. We saw the clips. Uh, right, yeah. AJ? Real peanut punch. It was like, yes. yeah, just spirit. use the crown of your helmet, go straight like in. Like Denzel and, Perriman. Yeah. yeah. Go right yeah. through his face and come out the guy's ass, and that's a good hit. <laughs> well, you know, I, so I got some So you guys were trying to go, go yeah. face to yeah. ass. Yeah. You go through yeah. his face. You're going come face out to ass. ass. <laughs> exactly. Tackle through the guy. You're right. Tackle yeah. through him, yeah. not yeah. to him. I haven't, right. heard, I haven't heard through asshole, though. No. I've not heard See, that. I haven't heard that one used. I don't know it came out the other side. That's pretty. I paint the picture, though, Chuck. I appreciate that. I cannot wait to talk about some hit that happens later in the season and be like, let's remember what football used to be. Yeah. They used to try to teach people. People would go crown of their helmet, through face, out asshole. Mm -hmm. That's what it used to be. Now, head up away from everything, outside junior, shoulder. Junior high coach, <clears throat> hanging from the goal post. You know the old uh, heavy bags that were like full of sand? Sure. Oh, yeah. And the canvas? Like we're all 78, 80 pounds. I wrestled 78s, I think, in eighth grade. You still okay. Bad. Jeez. Fire bag of bones. Yep. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Well, hey, so get... 10 yards back, and he's on the other side, and he's holding it like this, right? Run full speed at it. This is how we're going to practice tackling. And then whip it at you, right? Head down. Use the crown. Yep. 
<laughs> and now look this at little you. Pit, yeah. And now look at now you. Now I got this. Hey, I want to let you know we appreciate you battling through the adversity today. There you go, yeah. Chuck. Coach, we appreciate you because you've been giving great stuff. I haven't yeah. been able to fully look at me the entire time, and I didn't want to bring it up because you do look kind of natural. It doesn't look you're. I slept uh, bad on a pillow the other day, That's so I couldn't. I yeah. couldn't turn this way. Mm. I couldn't turn this way. What'd it's tough. Do? Did you go get work? No. No, I'm only at science right now. It's, it's only yeah. a matter of hours for everything. Science takes point. care of it. Yeah, science takes care of it. I believe Where's it. Where's the science? Can I get some science? Oh, I, I believe it. You actually can. Yeah, yeah, I believe yeah. it is available. Chuck, you know, work. Chuck getting some work. You got, work? you got a masseuse, Chuck? Yeah, I did Cairo. I did masseuse. Like zero relief. You need to go to Minnesota, Kirk Cousins, that basement. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Those old yeah. Yeah. And Pam. It's two folks. Cranial got. sacral. I mean, every, nothing's working. Excuse me? Sorry, what was that one? Cranial sacral. That's not real. What are you doing? What, what's a cranial sh uh, shake roll? It's, a, it's, it's kind of difficult to explain. Well, give it yeah, a it shot. Sounds like well, yeah, like it's it's no, it yeah. <laughs> yeah. it sounds like it's just like a Mr. Gray type shit. It's just like a Mr. Gray. What What is it? What is a cranial <laughs> cranial? So is it a third? No, 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 Tell us about the serenial play crawl you got. I can send you an ice helmet, Chuck. That'll help a little bit. Talk about the old shit you do. Yeah, what is this? What is this? Somebody holds your head and they hold it a certain way and... Your brain inside your head's going like this, and they hold you a certain way, and they do oh. this, they do that, they po po you know, push here, poke That's there. Oh, is this dark and room? Yeah. Get Are you getting get shock it. therapy? What is it? Is this in a dark room? Is it like a... You can see that it's obviously working. Are you fully clothed? <laughs> yeah, what yeah. is it? Is there music in there? It's like, like the, the light. Yeah, light. meditation. Or, yeah. Or light. Is that what it is? How's the eye? I'd like to get better. I don't get it. Yeah. I want to get better. I got a neck. What's I, going I, on, neck. I would like to know what a serenial cray crawl is. Yeah, we might need it. Do you know what I would pay right now for somebody that could give me some relief in this right trap? Somebody like, out there help this guy. Come yeah. on. Someone come knows a lot of I would, pay, I would pay a million dollars to be unlocked. <laughs> somebody who's a master Beal? serenial cray crawler, <laughs> get out of here <laughs> and bob this guy's head back into a nice, healthy T1, T2. Exactly. We need the guy. The guy deserves it. He works his ass off. Yeah. Hey, Chuck. 36 thank you. years, this is what you get. Thank you for your sacrifice <laughs> to football. Thank you, Chuck. Appreciate you, Chuck. Appreciate you, Chuck. Speaking of football, Mizzou's got a real one, okay? Yeah. Got a guy that just wants to play ball. Dog. Now he's got an opportunity to play ball, and he's just gone absolutely bananas with it. Now, you think of the Mizzou Tigers, you don't necessarily think of a football program. Maybe a year's past. This year, they got a squad. Oh, yeah. Coach Drinkovich is building something that is absolutely special over there, and it revolves around a running back who is formerly at Truman State. Mm -hmm. Yep. Truman State. That's right. Then he was a walk on at Mizzou, and then all of a sudden, he runs the ball very well. What? Leads the SEC. He receives the ball very well. What? He's dynamic. And now all of a sudden, Mizzou's only got two losses, and it's against LSU and Georgia. Hmm. Okay? I think a lot of people are potentially losing to them. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the star of the program, the star of the conversation, and although he is incredibly humble, I would assume, with the story that we just told, we can't thank him enough for his time. Cody Schrader. Running. Yeah, Cody! Something. Hey, thanks for you guys uh, having me. Hey, no problem. I just like, uh, I said a lot of really good things about you. I, f I feel like the whole world's doing that. You've earned it because I feel like there's probably a lot of times where people are not saying anything about you. Congratulations, pal. Yeah. Honestly. Legitimate. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So when I was at West Virginia, we had a guy named Owen Schmidt. He was the runaway beer truck. He was, uh, his story is he was originally at Wisconsin Whitewater, I think, or Wisconsin somewhere, had success left there because he wanted to go to a bigger school, walked on at West Virginia. He was a bouncer at a bar at West Virginia Morgantown because he wasn't able to get on the team for like a semester. Then Rich Rod let him on and then boom, became one of the greatest fullbacks in school's history. When I was reading your story, it felt like it was a very similar one. Is that an accurate statement? Did you feel like you were a D1 guy and just needed an opportunity or how do we get to this point, you think, Cody? Yeah, no, I definitely uh, think so. And I think I had the stats in high school. I had uh, all the numbers that you can think of and possibly maybe go division one, but maybe I didn't pass the eye test. Who kind of knows what kind of happened? But yeah, you know, I didn't have any offers. Um, my one division one offer got pulled um, right before my official visit because I another running back committed. So then a hmm. uh, week before signing day, I had nowhere to go. And then Truman State offered me a scholarship and then uh, went there and then eventually walked on at Mizzou. Well, I'm, I'm sure the Mizzou folks are pumped to have you. Hey, local legend, obviously you're from there. You go on to have great success. What has it been like being the, you know, the parade haver as opposed to the guy that gets overlooked every time? 
Yeah, you know, I think it's just good. And I think it's maybe hopefully and just inspiring other kids as well is that they can take a chance on themselves and, you know, and come to a school that has an awesome fan base like Mizzou does and, you know, just and have a team that we have here. And we're truly building something special. And it definitely hasn't sunk in yet. I don't think it will until possibly after the season. Is this how you always ran right here? Just hard as hell? Hey, I'm going to get there and I'm going to get there running through the grind. Yeah, yeah. My mindset, I think, is, is just – to hit people in the mouth for four quarters and um, one of us are going to fold. And like I've said before, I'm not going to ever fold. So see if they can take it for four quarters. There's a guy that just got real jacked up. That's the guy with the sunglasses. Go ahead, AJ. <laughs> well, it's, I was going to ask you about finishing your runs. Like I, Pat and I have been lucky enough to be on the sidelines for some big time games this year. And I'm always just amazed at how physical the end of these plays are with how hard you guys are running. When you, when I watch you run, like you look like, you look like you're making a concerted effort to hurt the people that are trying to tackle you towards the end of the run. Like, is that something you've always been where you want to make sure you're finishing, falling forward, falling in the end zone, everything like that? Yeah, it definitely always has been a way I've been running, but you know, I got to go up with guys like that look like you, AJ. So, you know, I have to find a way, you know, I'm not the big guy. So <laughs> I got to find a way to, you know, kind of set the tone of the game and um, let's see if they can, you know, take getting hit for four quarters. Who are some of the guys that you kind of watch film that kind of you feel like your game might resemble a little bit that have made it? Yeah, I think Austin Eckler has been a huge uh, kind of guy I've been studying a lot because he's also from a D2 school as well. So we kind of share that. Um, he does a lot of the things that I want to do is catch the ball out of the backfield, be a uh, you know, third down back, or just be, in all, all, be on the field at all times. So just kind of really studying how he's able to do that is something I've been really focusing on in, uh, this year. In, in the intro, by the way, you look very similar while you're running, so he runs oh, yeah. mm -hmm. real yeah. hard. He, hey, he can jump. Yeah, I assume you can – yeah, pretty explosive. Yeah. Uh, no, no, uh, vertical. I've never had that. I don't know why I can't jump, but uh, that's not. So when I, you know, if I could do my uh, pro day, I think I might have to skip out of the the vertical leap. So yeah, smart, smart. smart. That sounds yeah. like, hey, don't put anything on tape if you know it ain't going to be great. What other sports did you play in high school? Uh, I played baseball. I was a center fielder. Oh, pretty good. Pretty good player. We feel like we got good arms. Yeah, I mean, no, I think I broke the record for the most strikeouts in high school baseball. <laughs> in nice. Missouri, so <laughs> I don't that, you know, it wasn't great there. My senior year had a little more success, but other than that, uh, my, my first three years was uh, no good. Hey, it's all, hey football is a home. Yeah. Football is a home. I do wonder if some of these D1 schools are like, yeah, the guy's good at football, but this guy can't hit time, a ball. Yeah. <laughs> the only time he struck out. guy can't hit a ball. Are we going to – that's not fair. I want to let you know that's not fair, but I do wonder <laughs> if that happened uh, – Coach Drinkwitz has obviously put together a hell of a culture over there. I said at the beginning during the intro, like, I think whenever, like the Georgia fans, whenever I mentioned just beat Missouri 30-21, like, I don't think people were impressed with that. And then you guys go do what you do to the volunteers. It's like, hey, Missouri, very good football. He's a whole different animal, it feels like. Then we see the mic'd up one of him going over to Coach Heupel and saying, we stand on business around here and he leaves. What is the culture like? And why do you think he's been the right guy to lead you guys to where you are right now? Yeah, I think the culture is just filled with a bunch of guys who want to win. And, uh, you know, we've been through a lot of adversity, especially looking at back uh, at last year. And we brought a lot of the same guys back. And I think everybody has truly finally started believing in the process and believing in the core values that we have at Mizzou. And I think for us, it's just restoring the brotherhood has been a huge um, thing for us because we want to bring back that brotherhood, bring back winning to the city of Columbia. Um, and everybody has truly bought into that. And I think Coach Drink has been a great role model for that because every day, you know, he wants the best out of us. And he, we get the same version of Coach Drink every single day. And you know what guy you're going to get. Um, and I think guys are truly believing in that. And finally, we got the right guys in the building. And it's not just Coach Drink. We got the whole coaching staff. And, you know, and Coach Moore has been a huge addition to us offensively. And, you know, I think people have truly just started to buy, uh, buy in. It's obvious watching you guys play. I mean, absolutely obvious. That Georgia game was Awesome. Phenomenal. Yeah. And we see, we've seen what Georgia has done to teams. Yeah. Right? We, yeah. We've seen what they've done. I think, no, if, I don't want to sound like an absolute asshole here, but like I watched that game and I'm like, hey, Missouri's a real deal here. Missouri yeah. is, and I think it's only getting started, right? I assume you all feel yeah. the same way over there? Yeah, 100%. I think, you know, when other athletes see success, they want to be a part of it. And it's not just success, but it's genuine, you know, love and it's genuine, like a real team and a real brotherhood. And I think team and People and different athletes, especially transfer portal kids or, you know, guys that are coming out of high school want to be a part of that and want to be a part of, you know, a winning culture that we have started to kind of set. And then hopefully we can put it in the hands of the younger guys and guys that, you know, come in the building to take this program to uh, a new level. 
M I Z Z O. You better talk about them Tigers. <laughs> we talk college football. Tell them Diggs has a question for you, Cody. Yeah, Cody, all year, uh, Tennessee has been like a top 20 rush defense. And then you go for 200 against them on the ground last week and over 100 through the air. And then when you're looking at, at Florida coming up this week, they've had running backs who have gone against them for uh, 200 on the year. So does that, like, does that get you excited? Is uh, are we feeling good about the game plan again for this weekend? Yeah, definitely. You know, and I think it's the O line has set the tone for this week because I think on Tuesday's practice, every single one of them came up to me and said, "Now we need 300 yards." So I mean, when you got the guys up front wanting that type of success and wanting to, you know, dominate a football game, like man, that juices me up as a running back because I know we're going to be physical and you know, and we're expecting a lot out of this game. Those big dogs up front, man! Yeah. What a group! Uh, what an absolute group! You guys hang out off field? Oh yeah, 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 definitely. They're my guys. How's life? Are you allowed to live? Are you able to live? Or, you know, yeah. I've, I've heard you have a college experience. Yeah. No, nah, you know, I've always been one of them guys that, you know, stay out, stay inside, never really go out, celebrate wins. I got to go out uh, last weekend with Brady Cook, our quarterback. But other than that, man, we stay inside and we're really boring. You know, we, <laughs> that's probably one thing I wish I could take back. Is, is you're not the only one, dude. It's like everybody in this generation. You're not allowed to pretty much because, you know. Yeah, if you were to have a good yeah. time and celebrate yeah. Oh, yeah. what you've worked your entire life for. That could all go away very fast. <laughs> yes, Cody. <laughs> As somebody that almost did that, yes, you're 100% right. You're doing the right thing. You're doing the right thing. Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Cody, I assume you got plenty of friends at Truman State, uh, and so I don't want this to come off the wrong way, but how much fucking worse is D2 than the SEC? And was there what, was there a transition? <laughs> What's your problem? What you, no, 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 I'm just curious. I'm just curious. <laughs> everyone, that a couple different there's ways. so many different ways no, you can yeah, phrase I, that. I know. I know you got friends there. This but guy, I know, and that's why I said I want to offend anybody here i'm just saying yeah. like when you look at it from a zoomed it. out view is it like holy shit i should have been rushing for a thousand yards a game at truman state or what are the thoughts there at least once you first got kind of ingratiated into the division one sec college football yeah, I think the one thing I will say about D2 football is that those guys love the game of football because, like, you don't have full-ride scholarships. You don't have NIL. So, like, you're around a, a group of guys, man, that just love the game of football and just want to win, want to hit people, and just love the game. But when I got to Mizzou, um, it really wasn't a huge transition for me besides, like, the speed of the game. And once I got more comfortable with the speed of the game, then everything starts to kind of slow down and now you can play faster. But um, but definitely, you know, you're playing against first-round draft picks every week in the SEC. So you're going up some against some really good dudes. Hey, tell me about your kicker. This guy feels like a legend. Just kicker, from kicker? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think he can't walk around Columbia without getting, uh, getting bothered, but yeah, no, he's been huge for us all year. We know as an offense that if we get him in the 60 yard range that we can kick a field goal. So he's, I assume hilarious human being. I'm just kind of assuming. Oh, that. Dude, yeah. He's one of the most funniest dudes I've ever been around. So, and he's just, he's got like a, a, a weird personality, I would say. So it's like a, I don't know. I feel like I don't know if all like uh, specialists kind of have that. Maybe you could speak about it a little more. But watch your tone. Pat. Watch, your tone. <laughs> Cody, watch your tone. Watch your tone right now. But uh, no, he's a great kid, and yeah, we definitely uh, are lucky to have him. Yeah, specialists always got to be different. If you're not, you're probably not going to be able to handle the job. You know what I mean? Got to got to have some sort of moxie. I think if you're going to handle it, and he's bounced back. You know, yeah. I mean, he is. He's gotten a lot better too throughout his stay over there in Mizzou. I'm incredibly proud of that guy. With a lot of people oh, talking yeah. talking a lot of shit about him. Yeah, and he has the best celebrations, I think, as a kicker. So, seeing his celebrations there. Hell yeah. Hey, uh -huh. do your dance. Do your dance. Keep going. AJ, go ahead, pal. Cody, what's your guys' practices like? We, we heard Kirby Smart told us last week they have Bloody Tuesday where they get out there and they really mix it up a lot. What's it like during the week in season for you guys? Yeah, Tuesdays are – we call them Toughness Tuesdays, and that's the day we'll oh. – in full pads we're going you know good on good you know against the defense which that's always fun with how dominant our defense is so um so yeah there's a lot of big hits on tuesdays and then on wednesdays you know you start tapering it off and you know just a shell practice on they hitting you all that are work. you getting hit red jersey on you uh yeah yeah i'm you know you always try to sway him to put me in a green jersey so tyron hopper is not out there smacking me around but <laughs> okay. smart what is it are you do you i assume you enjoy contact you know you play d2 oh, you love, love ball you love it yeah do they have to taper you off or no uh, yeah, yeah. Our running back coach Sloop has to, uh, you know, taper me off at practice because I'm always trying to practice the whole 21 yeah. periods, yeah, yeah. take every single rep. Don't, and, yeah, don't want anyone to hit him. You don't want me hitting your running back at practice. Yeah, we don't need to. Already getting enough hits. <laughs> already yep. getting enough hits. We don't need to lose him, especially on the year that you're having, especially with how great the team is performing. We appreciate the hell out of you, man. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. 
Yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. Hey, hair's clean, too. Oh, yeah. You got good hair, dude. <laughs> I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. You get that thing <laughs> faded once a week? What, what are we, what's... Oh, yeah. yeah, every Wednesday, uh, you know, I get faded up and, you know, try to look good, so... That's a, I think that's one of the biggest differences too. Before from D two to SEC is that your appearance means a lot more at uh, Division one and D two. You don't care what you look like. So you guys have a barber there? Uh, we don't have. A, sometimes they bring barbers in, but we have a local guy that a lot of the guys go to. He does, it seems like he does pretty good work. Yeah, well, you, yeah. See that, you see that beard too? Yeah, oh, clean. Yeah. Hey, you look well, man. You look beard. sweet right now, dude. You should feel <laughs> good about it. I appreciate you, Pat. Hey, keep it going, ladies and gentlemen, Cody Schrader. Yeah, Cody. He does a pretty, I mean, pretty sweet. Oh, yeah. Right? Perfect. The fade is nice low on there. You know, I can't do the low because my head's too large. Got to go high with that thing. But feels like that that barber's got to figure it out over there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I own money. I wonder what it is over there in Mizzou. What do you think? They He's got trying that, to build it. They got that number been, one wide receiver good who was past. from Missouri Luther Bird. a couple years ago. Yeah, Luther Bird. A bunch hurt. of pass rushers yeah. come out of there. Was it Brad Banks back in the day? And they, had some, they had some defenders, too, come out of there. There's a, uh, what oh, was yeah. the stand on business thing? I didn't want to put... Him in the situation. I, don't know. I didn't. I tried to look it up before the show because I saw the clip and I was like, "That's awesome." Was it something about getting blown out before or something? Oh, scoring late or something? I wonder because I think Reese said something about they that. They did get killed last year. There's a uh, rule in Missouri. I just looked it up because I, I had heard about it. Is if once you uh, commit to an in-state school, so like say you commit as a, a sophomore in high school to an in-state school. You can immediately start receiving NIL money. Okay, so that's like that's genius. a big thing in, in Missouri. I'm FaceTiming Reese Davis right now. Yeah, nice. That's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, it is a big deal. That's a good deal. He might be traveling. Check his Instagram. Reese, we're live. We're live. We are live. I know, I'm with you, but I'm, I'm watching. I'm watching your show now. <laughs> Don't do that, Reese. We need people to remain smart in the sports world. Please stop watching our program. Okay. Hey, quick question for you. What was the I stand on business thing from Coach Eli Drinkwitz uh, to Josh Heupel after the game at Tennessee, Missouri? You know, I'm not 100% sure, Pat. I well, do think it was about well, that, but I was just uh, actually just got a text and a group uh, text from Eli and from Stanford Steve. So I can, uh, I, I think it was because t Tennessee scored with like a minute to go, but I'm not sure where the, hmm. uh, I don't know if it came from Tombstone or what. Okay. Hey, we appreciate the hell out of you. All right, brother. Thank you, Reese. Is that from Tune? I've seen Drewski. Drewski. I, mean, I, love it's, I think it's a Drewski movie. meme where he uh, uh, walked up. Meme. Yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think. That, and then he ends up running uh, mm -hmm. the opposite direction, yeah. obviously. Right. Mm -hmm. Hey, he's a menace. He is. He, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's doing it. He is everywhere. Dude. Yeah. How about Kai the Jail Stream? Did you see that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It makes its way into my algorithm. I'm so happy every time I look. I'm like, these people are doing it. Yeah, it's nuts. This is big brain stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Krishan was keeping people up with her snoring. Mm -hmm. I mean, did you see the Drewski thing with. What uh, names with are you guys saying? Bingo. You need to learn a little bit more. Tony. There's a lot of yeah. brain. There's a lot of big brains out there right now. If you just try to find them, I, I watched. Uh, what was that like? 22 minutes of Theo Vaughn yesterday. Mm -hmm. That was fantastic. Mm -hmm. He's unreal. Yeah. He's, He's bad. Dana White on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that was where it started. Yeah. That was where it all started. Uh, uh huh. Uh huh. Middle uh -huh. school kid. Yep. He's talking about Dana White's new business deal, obviously that he made, and that's where it started. Was him. Uh huh. Uh huh. Theo yeah. saying to Dana. Yeah. yeah. So what? They want to give a couple cans. You know, and that's where, and then we went right into the old YouTube, mm -hmm. yep. here we go, Theo's greatest hits. Mm -hmm. And buddy, they kept going one after another. Had to leave. Oh, yeah. Didn't want to. Had to leave. Yeah, you need to start exploring the internet a little bit. I, me, I think I need to start exploring We're the internet. We're on the internet enough, dude. Yeah, but I'm in my... Smith okay? Should I look into Theo? Still, they suing. Yeah, what yeah, yeah, said. Exactly. Two words. I didn't know Janice good, said. So they're back. Why is she that's still good. speaking? That means they're back together. Like, they, that's they're standing, they're... They're supporting each other. That's great. That's what I saw. She said, we suing, is what she said. I was like, that's the first time you said we. Yeah. Interesting. Holy hell. Yeah. You know, talking about right. a team, it's been high, 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 you, you, Will's got to be so happy hearing that. Think about it. Well, Will, well, oh, yeah, Will's been hearing a lot, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only she's allowed to slander his name. Yeah. That makes more sense. Only she's allowed to. I don't know. Listen, that was Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. We, we need you to come. We need you, Will. We need that one back. Come on. Men in Black, too, to save the world. Sure. Yeah. Independence Day? Wild Wild West? Well, what's happening again? What Speaking was the word she was doing? Entanglement? Yeah, only she's allowed to do that. Well, no, I heard. No. Yeah. Let's it, move along. Will Anyways, there's a lot coming out out there. There is. Just need, hey, Will, we, we, uh, good luck out there, Will. Allegedly. Good luck out there, Will. Good luck out there, Will. Good luck out there, Will. We do love Will. Will was such a huge part he of awesome. like an entire generation. Yeah. yeah. Remember him Still running is. them boots, men. In, I mean, oh yeah, in Men in Black before. Men in he, Black. 
Was Men in Black 2 when he comes to the door faking drunk? He, it's, he has a great role in that. Is oh, are you talking about what's the drunk superhero? Uh. Uh, Hancock. 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 Great. Oh, Greatest superhero so, of all I time. That. I Am Legend was great. I was actually asked one time. NFL film sat me down. He said, what's your favorite superhero? And I said, Hancock, the drunk one. And I walked off and they ran it. Yep. They <laughs> ran it in the thing. And I got a bunch of people that tweeted me like six months later. They're like, your favorite one is Hancock. It was like, at that time, it definitely was. And yep. now that I think back about it, yeah, yeah. Hancock was a dog. Yeah, He was. Will Smith, we need you, dude. We need you, Will. Good luck, Will. <laughs> He's gone through it, What's coach. the one that he gave the eyes? AJ could use one. The eyes? Oh. All the organs and... I, Robot? Oh, Seven yeah. Pounds. I, Robot seven was one of his. Seven Pounds. Seven Pounds. That was see, a, that was hey, he'll make you cry. As too. Yeah. Uh -huh. We'll make Pur you cry. Yeah. Pursuit not of Happiness? Not as, yeah, not as much as... Yeah. Chuck might not know about Will's current dealings. Yeah, Chuck, have you heard? He, he, conversation. Yeah. We don't, it's oh, not true. Just we don't, that he and his wife are you know, standing in solidarity. He yeah. wasn't getting murdered. He was doing the murdering himself. We don't know if that's a lawsuit or not, but we do know that there's one coming. Mm -hmm. He's what, so we need, we, as somebody who's been a part of one of these in the past, they still we need to tread lightly. We all know. They said the, we, she said we yesterday. Not yeah. the only thing coming either. Well, more alleged, stuff. Allegedly. More stuff. Yeah. Yeah. More more apart, information. Right? More stuff, of mm -hmm. course. Allegedly. Talk about going in the mouth, coming out the ass, Chuck. You're talking about hitting people hard. Yeah. Exactly. That's old school football. That's, right. that's old school yeah. football. Uh, and that was that's what he was talking about. No, that's no. that's Will's that's old movies. Will's old movies. Will's old movies. Will's old old movies. Let's move along. Uh, there's like a lot going on about Will's life, and you don't love it. But like uh, As long as he's happy. As long as he's happy. We don't care. Yeah, we care. yeah you're right. As long as Will's thank you for your dedication and commitment to our entertainment. Yes. Thank you, Will. As long as you're happy, Will. I saw him falling asleep on a boat a couple days ago. He said, I've been taking time away. I've been out on sea. Mm -hmm. There you go. John McAfee was doing that before the end of his life, too. So let's make sure he's okay out oh, there. Oh, boy. You know what boy. I mean? We don't need everybody out at sea all the time. That's a good where, point. Where's it, where are his boys? Who's? Will Smith. Well, they got the bottle, got uh, water bottle. Did Chris Rock comment? His so, boys. He has one boy, one girl, right? For those that wonder, Chris Rock... Um, after the whole situation, went on a comedy tour. Mm -hmm. Immediately after the Will Smith thing. Oh yeah. And uh, the person he went on a tour with was uh, Dave Chappelle. Mm -hmm. So, I, Dave Chappelle's next special. There's a chance, you know, that maybe he had some thoughts sure. on the whole thing. And, I hope. And I'm assuming if Old Chappelle's talking about it, it's going to be hysterical. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think Chris Rock has that for the rest of his life. Oh, can yeah. utilize as a comedian forever. Oh, yeah. Anytime. Couldn't even fathom what's going through his Probably head. loves it now. All right, before we wrap up today, we have to do something that I am... Uh, you saw me stand up because I'm starting to get zeked up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Super zeke. You know, whenever you start thinking about this particular segment, you can't help but just uh, get the heart rate going a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Start sweating a little bit. Mm -hmm. right. Start having a little bit of passion, a little bit of emotion, because that's what's being displayed by the people that we're about to talk about right now. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another installment of Hockey is... Awesome! Listen, if you're not a hockey fan, you need to become one. Because it's not just a sport that is flying around at 20, 30, 40 miles an hour on ice. It's not just superstars all over the place. It's a sport that not only carries us in a time when we don't have any sports, it's a sport that once you learn about it, you'll respect every single part of it. Literally. Let's dive into this week's version with saying, you know the superstars in some leagues? They don't show up. Superstars are just highly paid people that don't make appearances. Well, in the NHL, the superstars show up. 87, Sidney Crosby. Deflection goal. How you doing? Keep it moving. Penn's in the middle of a five-game win streak. He would have a hat trick this evening. This guy is the last generation's Goat. Ah, so clean with the touch. Top Ched. How you doing? You can't stop me. But once again, Sidney Crosby's supposed to do that. Had a hat trick this night. He did because he shows up not only for the sport, for his team, for the city, but because that is what hockey players do. Let's go to the next one, huh? Connor Bedard, right? Has this guy shown up for his team? A lot of hype. He's supposed to be the next LeBron James. He's supposed to be the next Sidney Crosby. He says, Don't you worry a thing about oh, oh me. Wow. Tonight, he has a game. If he was to score two goals, he would be the youngest player in the history of hockey to go back to back to back with multiple goals. He was supposed to live up to the hype, and all he's done is that. That's filthy. Oh. That's oh, clean. Yeah. <laughs> that's the next generation of hockey. And that's a guy who says, are you not entertained? They got that the next 18, 20 years in the NHL. Damn. Ooh, not a bad time to yeah. become a fan. Love it. Superstars show up. How about some self-awareness? Yeah. Let's have a self -awareness. You know these superstars in our leagues, they got their self-awareness. That's right. Not my guy cousins. No way at all. It's a little bit blurry, but I think we got to it. A fight happens. Now, this is hockey. Okay, this is what hockey is. 
and you see Hathaway there just absolutely Boom. Boom. obliterating a man whose last name is Cousins. Cousins. I believe the automatic uh, focus there is having Dylan Cousins is... The focus was terrible. I just got sick looking at the screen there. Sorry yeah. about that. But Dylan Cousin gets into a fight here after getting checked down. You know, he gets in a little bit of trouble. I want to fight this guy. He started it. We're down 5-1. Maybe turn the tide a little bit. Then he goes and gets his ass absolutely hammered by a man <laughs> named Mr. Hathaway. After the game, Cousins would do an interview and listen to this humble response while looking like that. The situation probably didn't call for it there. Um, I let my frustration get the best to me and uh, you know I kind of went after him and it escalated a lot quicker than I prepared myself for and uh, I think I need to know kind of who I'm going up against and and uh, be a little smarter next time for sure. Yeah, Garnet Hathaway is a dog. And uh, I think Biz and the boys at Spit and Chicklets say, you got to check the game notes. This is something to Young Buck here <laughs> who's trying to become a bruiser. Yep. He threw Marshawn by the head a game before this one. He is a guy who's trying to get in. Just need to know who I'm starting to fight with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's Garnet Hathaway. I don't know if you saw him. Good form on this. Oh, right. oh yeah. Clean. It was, it was back, face. Boom. Back, face. Boom. Back, face. Face. Right. That's a big deal in hockey. Huge. And if you could do that well, you're going to have a job for a long time. He's trying to get there, but his nose says, let's do it against the right guys. Mm -hmm. Let's do it against the right guys. Speaking of fighting, is everybody doing it out there? I think so. No, oh, there's just a couple tough guys, aren't there? Are goalies fighting people? No. Well, that's not what Mr. Swayman out of Alaska in Boston is doing. Yeah. Now, granted, anytime there's a little bit of a scrum near a crease or near a goalie, there's going to be some antics because you don't come that close to our goalie ever. They're a prideful bunch. They're a loyal bunch, and they will fight you if you fuck with their goalie ever. Swayman, though, says, okay, the boys want to How about you? Goes down to the other goalie. Says, you want to come fucking dance? Let's do this. I'm feeling myself. Now, that particular goalie was from Quebec, uh -huh. playing for Montreal, mm -hmm. in Montreal. Ooh. Had the opportunity to go fight an American goalie. Wouldn't do it because the Alaskan Swayman is a motherfucking dog. dog. So you got goalies that'll fight. You got incredible superstars who show up. You got some self-awareness, and you got a sport that you need to check out if you haven't yet. Their season's still just getting started. And the greatest franchise in hockey, the Pittsburgh Penguins, don't look now, uh -huh. have won five straight. Ooh. So if you don't have a team, pick them. If not them, maybe the Golden Knights, who are uh, Stanley Cup champions. Maybe the Boston Bruins, yep. who are always good during the regular season. Maybe any team that you find yourself connecting with because you need to. Because hockey is awesome. Thank you, hockey. Thank you, hockey. Love you, Thank hockey. You, hockey. Love, you. Love you, hockey. Love you, hockey. You're the best hockey. I got sick with that focus thing that happened. Yeah, that's that's me sucks. too. That was yeah, crazy. Why, I wonder why it happened. Got a headache. That's because the, they, they focused in on boys back here. Mm -hmm. yeah. and it's hard not to focus on hockey yeah. whenever yeah. it's on the screen. Yeah. So I don't blame this camera, actually. This camera is actually a camera that we want. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. hockey's on, it's like, oh, fuck. What's going on? It's crazy. Thank you, camera. Thank, Thank you, camera. You, camera. camera. Good job, Joining camera. us now is a man who's going to be on camera tonight. That's yeah. right. Hell yeah. Blue eyes. Mm -hmm. Blown hair. Yeah. You know what I mean? Blown hair. Oh, yeah. Jacked. Super. He's going to have two little uh, bracelets. Sweet Whoa. bracelets. That are sweet. Yeah. He's going to have a great tie, maybe. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. And he's going to look good. And he's going to have this Telestrator thing that he's going to go forward and back and forward and back. Right. He's going to explain everything for you. Ladies and gentlemen, for 28 years, this man's been the voice of college football. For the last two years, he's been the voice of the kickoff for every single NFL week on Thursday Night Football on Prime. Ladies and gentlemen, Kirk Herbstreit. Yeah! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. AJ, how you feel, kid? Feel pretty good, Kirk. We're we're getting better. So yeah, I'm gonna be great <laughs> real soon. You you took a thumb, huh? Well, yeah, little six year old, six year old, places. yeah, jab. It, yeah. it was more of the uh, his nail too, I guess, that chunked it out. But yeah, it's not just that's not what Aaron's saying. Nope. That's not what Aaron yeah. Rodgers said. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron is trying to make some sex jokes that I did it somehow in there. That's fine. Either one. Aaron okay. was just saying we gotta ask the questions. You, 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 you go see Alice. Who who, who took care of you? <laughs> See, say see Alice, the the boner drug. What'd you say? Or Alice, or Alice. Alice uh, Jorge's sister. Oh, oh no, my bad. No, no, I I got in. So Jeez, someone real what's close going right on here? Did you ever see <laughs> Alice? I mean, yeah. yeah. I thought that was a funny joke. But yeah, I thought you were doing Britney Spears. If you seek Amy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> see you next Tuesday. I mean, there yeah. was. I didn't know what the hell was going on right there. That's what it Jeez, felt like. Yeah, a little bit, didn't it? Yeah. A little bit. Are you okay? Is everything all right? Good lord. 
Jeez, oh, we all riled up for the game tonight. You know Jorge. <laughs> you know Jorge. He said Jorge's sister. You know Jorge. I know Jorge. Yeah, but it's all you he know said. Jorge, Jorge brother. brother. I know you Jorge. know Jorge. I've broken bread with Jorge numerous times. I love Jorge. Why don't we break that down real quick? He's a lightning rod. Jorge's entertaining. I will say that Billy Bush stole the show that particular evening, but Jorge was certainly a close runner-up. If I had to give, he, yeah, close second, close, close second, going to the people behind him. Remember, he's talking to the people behind him. Yeah, he was saying, they're telling me I'm too loud. You don't, <laughs> you don't think I'm too loud, right? And they're like, no, nah, they got a four-year-old there. <laughs> yeah, crying. He's awesome. Jorge was a lightning rod, dude. I've never seen somebody more comfortable. Just comfortable. Uh -huh. It was awesome. Billy Bush, though, was the guy. I mean, that was a... Highlight of the night. Kirk Curb Street, how you doing? Billy Bush, nice to meet you. We got a mutual friend, that sack of shit out, Michaels and I. We <laughs> golf at the Beverly Hills Golf Club. Good to see you. And I'm just like, holy shit. What a start. Hand Little shit. he know you're going like this with your brain. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I looked over and it was a movie. He literally <laughs> came over your shoulder. Kirk Curb Street, how you doing? Billy Bush. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Wow. Where's this guy been? I didn't know he still existed. Yeah. I had no idea he was still alive. And then all of a sudden, boom. I, I hadn't I seen him since TV. the bus. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. the last. That was the last, we, last all, time we all. Yeah. Saw him. That was the last we all mm -hmm. saw him. He was in Vegas. We did see him, still alive. Uh, but he did bring up Al Michaels. Let's talk about it. Uh, Michael yeah. Lombardi was on earlier, and he said he didn't know, you know, whether tonight or not was uh, a tie game for you and Al Michaels, or was it going to be a sweater? Yeah, kind of dressed down, super cool on Thursday night. We didn't know. I don't know if you want to give anything away, but big one tonight, AFC North battle. That should be a great game. We rocking ties tonight. What are we thinking in the booth this evening on Thursday Night Football on Prime? Uh, I believe we're going ties. You know how I wow. – you, you were in Seattle. You know how I go with the flow, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, go with it. Go with it. Get a bag. What's in there? We're going casual. I got the perfect you're, you're, thing. You're carrying that 80 pound bag up, 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 uh, up all the way to the press box for you. No, we're going. No, we're going ties tonight. Yes. Oh, hey. huge. Okay, big time tie game here. Uh, we got Bengals yep. and Ravens. What have you learned behind the scenes? Both teams coming off the loss. Chuck Pagano has been saying today that in his eyes, Cincinnati, it's like a must win situation. They got a tough schedule coming down the line. They obviously they started do. poorly early, and then for the Ravens, they're coming off a loss as well. Are they still as dominant as they appeared early? What do you think of the big storylines this evening, Kirk? The Ravens, I think, are as good as anybody in the league right now. You know, they, those three losses that they had, they had the lead in the fourth quarter. They just couldn't close them out, including last week against the Browns. Um, I know that this is a – it's amazing, and Chuck can appreciate this more than any, any of us, but the, the Ravens' consistency on that defensive side, you know, coordinators come and go, great players come and go. And they're able to find guys that not just fit physically with what they do, but they fit the culture. The trade last year for Roquan Smith is not just a great linebacker, arguably the top middle linebacker in the league, but he's an alpha. Like he, He's a Ray Lewis of the current game in the way he leads and the way he communicates. Uh, I think they've given up like 15 points a game since that trade last uh, Halloween. And it's freed up Patrick Queen to, to, to be a different guy. Kyle Hamilton in his second year, they moved him down to that nickel with that length. You saw the play he made last week against the Browns. So you look at that, where this defense is at home, at night. I mean, everything you look at favors the Ravens prime time at night. And then here comes Joe Burrow without T. Higgins. But this is typically where Burrow, on a short week, off of a loss, you're ready, ready to write him off. And, and you're thinking without Higgins, you know, Trent and Irwin's going to have to step up. How are they going to do it? They don't run the football particularly that well. They're dead last in, in the NFL. But it's just there's something there about Burrow that when you doubt him, he steps up. So that to me is the, the one wild card. Everything favors the Ravens on paper. But number nine in that white jersey, um, just, you just never count him out. So I, I'm looking forward to how, seeing how they get ways to get the ball to Jamar Chase. You saw Houston last week double him, try to take him out without T. Higgins to make you pay for it. It gave Tyler Boyd a huge chance. He ended up having a, a monster game with the exception of the drop there at the end. So he'll have to play well. Irwin will have to play well. And Joe Burrow is going to have to play out of his mind and out-duel Lamar Jackson. Yeah, and those Ravens are going to be in the all-blacks. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and that stadium is awesome. Hey, that place is – they got good fans over there. Those fans are uh, – you know, Baltimore, right. very similar to Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, yep. Boston. 
you know, a shit-talking town. Oh, yeah. You know, that's a shit-talking town. So whenever they get going and that in place, get, I couldn't even imagine when Lamar gets going in oh, there. Yeah. We can, we're going to have a scene tonight. you got to be pumped we up. Could. Yeah, there could be a scene yeah, tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're very pumped up. And I, I think you're right. The, the, the picture that you're painting, I think, is dead on, you know, from, from being there. Uh, I think Baltimore loves this team. All, they always love the team. But I think they really think this team's capable of making a, a pretty good run. Uh, and Lamar being back, I mean, we forget. All, remember all the drama in the offseason? You know, there, there was so much going on about the real possibility that they, they might lose him. And he obviously signs that long-term deal. At the time, it was the, the, the richest deal in the NFL. And talking to him this week, I think he's incredibly uh, appreciative of, of this team that he has. I think, you know, Todd Monk can come over from Georgia where he won back-to-back -back national titles with the Dogs. He seems to be playing and in a flow right now. And not only that, if you think about – we were just talking last week, right, about quarterbacks and play pieces. And we were talking about Bryce Young. And we were saying, boy, look, look at the pieces that a guy like Trevor Lawrence has. Well, not only does they, they sign Lamar Jackson to a new deal, but you have Odell Beckham now who's getting healthy. You have the rookie Zay Flowers. You know about the big tight end, Mark Andrews. And then you also have Rashad Bateman, who's getting healthy. So they, they made a conscious effort to put pieces around him in this passing game. So even though they lead the NFL in, in running the football, I think with Munkin, each week that passes, you're going to see him and Lamar and these new pieces around him give this a balanced offense that can be explosive both on the ground and through the air. Normally, whenever you say uh, an offense is balanced, that means they run the ball a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you're saying it's balanced. It's like the other way. Like, look for them to kind of open this thing up because how Lamar's been playing. Right. Fascinating team over there. They're old school, but they're also explosive. I mean, absolutely. It's fantastic TV. Go ahead, AJ. Kirk, what's going on with uh, with Joe Burrow's wrist? Why are the Bengals deleting videos Ooh. of him wearing a wrist brace or something? Hey, is that copper fit? Huh? Yeah. Uh, you know what? I I saw the same thing. I haven't spoken to him. So, uh, our conversation was prior to that. Um, I saw that they huh? deleted that. I mean, that, unless that is that style? I, I don't know that style. Could I, be. I don't know what it he's could doing. Could be. Maybe. Delete style. Oh my god! Could first you imagine time? if he was? If that was? Uh -oh, like, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Michael yeah, Jackson's glove. Bang the bang the. Yeah. What if it was a? That doesn't look like style. That looks like a thing, doesn't it? No. You don't delete I mean, we don't style, know. Kirk. We don't. We're not doctors here. No. I mean, we're all. You know what I mean? Maybe he likes wrist guards. Yeah, we don't. Maybe he's bowling too. We talked about yeah. that earlier. Yeah. Yep. We don't know if that's not. I'll, I'll, AJ, I wish I knew an answer for that. Now I'll see him in pregame and, and find out. But obviously, don't be shaking I, his all I know is based yeah. on what you know. Looking at these photos. Hey, use those big lumber and paws that you use on those kids that miss kicks. Go in there for oh, a handshake yeah, on that yeah. hand yep. just to see, you know what I mean? You're going to yep. knock one of those kids out, Kirk. One of, I can see it in Kirk's eyes. Kirk is getting so juiced every time that kid, you you chest bumped the kid last week from behind. Like, you're going to just full clothesline somebody soon. He speared a guy. I, there's certain guys I really want to hit it. <laughs> and then there's certain folks that just, I know they don't have a chance, and Pat's all giddy and excited about it, and I just... I get mad about that. I want somebody to come in there and take that. What are we up to this week? 90,000 American dollars. There's a lot of people every week. Everybody's like, I want to do the kick. I want to do the kick. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it's a random pick of the people that want to do the kick. That guy felt like he could make it, didn't it? Well, he had the length. That's what worried me. I th He was about 6'2". He's a big kid. Yeah, he's tall. I would say he was the most, like, if you're doing an assessment before the kick, I was like, okay, this kid's got a shot. The guy at Seattle who ended up hitting it on the second time, he, he had a look to him too. Some of them you can just tell right away, thanks for coming. Okay, we'll have a little bit. It'll be fun. And then a couple of them, it looked like they – whenever they say they played soccer, I'm like, okay, we got a shot here. Yeah, but you're supposed to be the guy motivating us. That's how this was supposed to go. Yeah. Remember, I was supposed to be the one, don't take my money. Herbie's going to be the one, kind of build him up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then this. Herbie would say – I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Did you say you've ever kicked anything before? No. And he looks at the camera and goes, no chance. Actually says that. He's like, well, good luck. All right. I'm like, Herbie, you're the one. You're supposed to be good cop here. Yeah. Okay, I'm supposed to be here. here real, real quick, as a person who's never kicked uh, ever in my life, Yeah. I don't know if fans at home know how long that kick is. Hot Rod said he thought it was short. He said, this feels like this about 30. This is not 33. I'm like, Ooh. oh, they're cheating me? Is that what you're saying? Hot Rod, Hot Rod. they're cheating me in this entire thing? He said. That is a bomb. That's an extra point, dude. That's just an extra that's point. Like, a bomb. Yeah. If, I mean, I know kickers, 
I'm always amazed. You know how I, in pregame I go out early and watch a specialist. I'm in awe of watching kickers. I mean, they, they'll kick, especially in the NFL. They'll get on the other side of the 50, and, and they're making them. I'm just like, how in the hell are they doing this? I have no idea. I guess it's the way you, you guys do it with the hips and all that, the rotation. Yeah, It's incredible. But for me, I'm looking at just a small little extra point. For a common person, they, they have no chance of making that. Okay, so tonight you got two great kickers. I think warm up should be a oh. show. That should be a show out there. Don't be scared to let Ben, you know, go see some greatness. That's yeah. right. Don't be scared to let Ben go see some greatness. He's become a uh... he's a superstar. Oh my God! Oh, wow, we got Ben on the program. We got Ben on the program. What up, Ben? Wake up! Big show tonight. Well, Herbie, take him on. There he is. There he is. There he is. Hey, that dog is as cool in person as everybody thinks he is. What a good boy you got. What a good boy who's getting a lot of love right now, Herbie. Getting a lot of love. Yeah. I, you know, he's, he's uh, as you said, you meet him in person. He just kind of, well, I took him to the meeting earlier out. Actually, two weeks ago when I brought him, I didn't take him to our production meeting. And Al, who had very, at the beginning, was a little lukewarm on him. And now he's asking, where's Ben? You know, uh, you know, where, where, are you bringing Ben or not? So now I bring him to all the, the production meetings. And he just, we're sitting there meeting and he's just kind of walking around, uh, just saying hello to people, looking for some eggs in the morning. But yeah, he's, uh, yeah. he's chill. But he's, you're right. The internet loves him. I mean, they love him. Handsome boy. He's mm -hmm. a handsome. Get a pet monkey, Herbie. What's Get a that? pet monkey, too. Uh, pet monk? What? Get a pet monkey. Wouldn't no, that be no pet monkey. Pet monkey? not Ben. I would, I would love that. Keep them young. Though once they hit puberty, they'll bite your face and genitals. Yeah, I don't want. I don't. I'm, I'm, I'm not touching that. How are you going to? But keep yeah, there, young? there he goes right there. Keep Harrison. Keep Harrison Berg, right? Bergville. Berg. Yeah. Harrison. It's not Bergville. Cone. It's Harrison Berg. Oh. Okay. Listen, I've been doing research on this place. They're about to show up for this. I think. Hey, they're. About, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's about to be a big one on Saturday. They, they're allegedly sending messages about breaking an attendance record that I don't even know if we have an official record for at the college game day library or whatever. They're. they're well, I don't think that's possible. The Michael Vick era at Virginia Tech. They opened up Lane Stadium like 2000. I want to say. And um, they filled up the entire lower bowl of the home side of the stadium. I think they took, sold tickets to it. It was like 25,000 people there. Oh, for game day? Um, yeah, for a night game. They played Syracuse at night. Sam and this was at the beginning of Virginia Tech. They got – that's a fan base. I know you're from West Virginia, and I don't know if that's a rivalry for you, but – that's a fan base that's incredible. I, 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 it's sad that they're off the, the radar here these last seven, eight years. But if they ever come back, you'll love that stop. I was, oh yeah, I've been to a saloon up there. I had a great time. We went to uh, Blacksburg. It, uh, they have a tailgate area yes. where they just throw beers. It was absolutely insane, Kirk. Chaos, yeah. absolute chaos over there. I've never seen. It was awesome. It was a yeah. We had a and, and imagine Michael Vick when he got oh. there. And this is when they went from just being on the outskirts to just for the first time being, you know, in the in the the deep end of the pool. And uh, they all made it all the way to the national championship that year with Vic. Yeah, 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 it was it was crazy. And those highlights are still running to this day. Oh, it's yeah. a thirty year celebration of College Game Day this weekend. Honored to be a part of that. And James Madison, you got your work cut out. Sounds like yeah, sounds like Virginia Tech excited to get there. There's another game. It sounds like it sounds like a new tradition is the, the take it off, take it off. We just going to keep that. We're going to keep that rolling. No, I'm. You're going to put. No, I'm putting into it. I'm putting into. I'm always good at like just telling crowds of large people no. You know what I mean? That's something that people have said about me for a long time. This guy, really good at saying no. Mm -hmm. That's what they say. Put his fist down. Yeah, he certainly will. Mm -hmm. That's what they say about me, Kirk. It would be, yeah. I've never seen that part of you do that. Well, it's it's been in the in the garage for a couple sure. years. You sure. know what I mean? Yep. It is. How? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do there, Herbie? Honestly, what am I supposed to do there? Orso almost peeled his shirt too last week. That I thought he was sweet. going there. So that's how I actually told him we need that. Hey, we need you to start doing this, so then we can just kind of. <laughs> he's the shirtless one, you know, because hey, Coach Corso probably still pretty jocked if I had to guess. It. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, there's yeah. An, there's another game happening obviously this weekend that College Game Day will not be at, but you will be. Tone has a question for you. We're not going to Corvallis? No, no. 
James Madison. I could have swore we were going to go there. No. Oops. No. Derby. We are going to James Madison this weekend, and they're going to break the attendance record for college game day. <laughs> Herbie, Oregon State is favored against Washington. I don't know how many people know that. Um, a lot of people are surprised by that, that do know that, be, you know, being an undefeated team. Uh, do you think Oregon State does have the chance to pull off the upset? Uh, a lot of people, you know, they talk about DJU in the big game, how, you know, hasn't played his best in the big game. You think Oregon State has a chance here against Washington? Yeah, I'm going to stumble out to Corvallis. I'm going to make it out there. One no, way or I thought you were doing green screen. I thought you were doing green screen. Makes more sense. <laughs> What's that? What does that even mean? What does that even mean? So, <laughs> that's how like, like soccer COVID games era. are called. Yeah, yeah. So COVID era. Cool. Yeah. COVID era, I think that also happens. People were so mad about us not going to Corvallis. Oh, yeah. They, they were so they mad. They are. I don't know if they still are telling me to go kill myself for college game day not going there, but probably. They were well, I think it's eleven. Is it eleven verse four? Yeah, uh, five. Five. Eleven five. Eleven five, verse five. Eleven five. Yeah, pretty good game. Pretty good game out there in the Pac twelve. Yeah, not good enough. Yeah, normally, normally we'd be out there. I'm not sure, but um, I, I'll I'll be, I'll be out there. They'll play next there. year. Don't worry about uh, it. Saturday. You know who does know about that point spread? Who's that? Guy by the name of Michael. Penix. Ah. Mm. He at the end of our call, he he he's a very mild mannered, soft spoken front runner for the Heisman, or at least he's close to it with Bo Nix. By the way, that game is a game you guys got to take your show out to Vegas Friday night, Pac twelve championship in Las Vegas. Take the show out there. That'd be a blast. We're gonna Chris and I are gonna call that if those two teams keep winning. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, happy. So anyway, we'll be there. Happy you'll be there. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, oh, I'll be there. Yeah, we'll be there. We'll be there. We'll yeah. be there. You guys should be there. It'd be a, it'd be a good show. We'll be Super Bowl is in Vegas, but yep. Yeah, we'll go to Vegas. We'll get, it'd, be a walk, it'd be a walkthrough. Walkthrough for the Super Bowl. We're only allowed to go to Vegas year. once a year. Yeah. Patio, the patio at Prime with the fountains in the back room. Chuck has the greatest connect in Vegas. Pat, we're back. That, he's the one who hooked us up. He was, Coach hooked us up. We'll, get, uh, the we'll, get, the Jorge, patio, we'll his... get the patio at Prime. Yeah. For the sphere, the sphere deal. Yep. Yeah, the fountains in the back. Couple million. The uh, yeah, definitely what you're talking about <laughs> though. The uh, the Prime thing with the fountains in the back. That was where the Kirk Curb Street. How you doing, yeah. Billy Bush? That's that where the whole thing took place. It was mm -hmm. small world. I it completely was. forgot about that. About you are that. the plug. Anyways, you're right though. Michael Penix. What did he say? He couldn't believe so, that so they're he, underdogs. He, at the end, super quiet, and he's just like. Chris asked him something about being five, and if you're undefeated, does that motivate you? Is that upset? And he said, you know, he tried not to go there. He's like, yeah, we just got to take care of business and win games. But we, we feel we feel some disrespect. You know, he's like, we we see, I mean, we're even an underdog this week. They don't think we can win this week. And I was, I didn't even know that they were an underdog. And then in the, one of their next players we talked to, same deal. Nobody believes in us. It's amazing how 18 to 22-year-olds, boy, they can rally around that. You know, like nobody believes in us. You, you know, you guys doubted us. Georgia uses it, and they're like number one in the nation. Everyone doubts us. It's like okay, whatever it takes, you know, <laughs> to get motivated to win games. Coach but DeBoer, yeah. yeah, doing a great job out there, Coach DeBoer. He is. He is dog. Yeah, the Kirk. Are... You guys tend to forget about them on this show. I know you don't spend a lot of time huh? uh, talking Kirk, much about he's them. He's been on twice. Why do you always do that? Why do you always? Do that? I know you I don't guys. Know say, I know you guys. I thought say... AJ. I thought AJ and Tone would kind of keep you honest, you know, on on the totality of college football. I know you're focused. What's more this on guy's deal? He was on the show last week, Coach DeBoer. Yeah, and we yeah. just had Cody Schrader on. What you guys oh. ever have him on game day? Oh, you ever have that, that guy on game day? Oh, I'm Don't sorry. Think so. uh, did you have you? Did you have Did you have DeBoer on when you were in Seattle, or did you have him on different times? Couple well, times. Couple times. Yeah. Actually, on the phone. Yeah, we've had him on numerous times. When you were Correct. in Bama. Wow. Yeah, suck it. Whoa. I know you guys at college football game day don't want to cover that type of stuff. We will. Yeah. All the time. We'll do that huh? every week. Thank you. Thank you for us doing that. Thank, Thank you for us. Thank you for us doing that. Yeah. It's a little bit of a, you know what I mean? But you're right. The Washington football team's awesome. People think, you know, them in Florida State, interesting. You know? But I guess we'll just kind of figure it out as a... Uh, what if Alabama beats Georgia? Buddy. I it, hope. It depends on this Chattanooga game too, right? Doesn't it? This weekend. How Alabama does against Chattanooga? We talked about. Oh yeah, we had Coach Saban on today. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. That's right. we had him they on never today. talk about Bama. Yeah, ever. I'll tell you that much. Ever. Yeah. You ever have Saban on game day? Ever? Huh? That's what I thought. Anyways, uh, like a hundred times. But the. Uh, but anyways, we were talking to him like the eye test matters. 
in this whole world now because they have one loss. Because you think about what Ohio, Ohio State, Michigan, and if Bama beats Georgia, and then you got Oregon doing what Oregon's doing right now as well, and then Texas beat Bama. What if they? There's so much to unpack there, Kirk. There's so much to unpack there. I just want to know the whole Texas. If Texas is out there as Big Twelve champs and they beat Alabama, and they're kind of stumbling around, but they beat Alabama, and then Bama beats Georgia. And if Florida State runs a table, the winner of the Ohio State Michigan game and the Washington Oregon winner, and it's going to be that's going to be tough to unpack. What are you going to do? You're just going how, to- how does Alabama beat Georgia and potentially get left out? They don't. They don't. don't know. But Georgia doesn't get then left who out. Who does? Either. Who does? Texas. Bye bye, Florida State. Florida you State. think an undefeated? You don't know Florida, Florida State. State. Yeah, not loud. Yeah. That would get. That would get so loud. It would, but Boo Corgan would have to come out there and just be like, "Here we go." People would be yeah, so. Uh, I mean, not to mention when Iowa wins the Big Ten championship. Yeah, that'll really throw a wrench in the whole. That'll thing. that'll really. Yeah, because two losses. Everything. Mm-hmm. No team has ever had two losses and made it in the college. Oh, football not play. even necessarily saying they're going, but that'll just when they do win the Big Ten championship. That just, I mean, who, who, can we can we put Michigan or Ohio State in? Then I don't know. Nope. I Can't. Don't know. Now the Connor Stallions. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. <laughs> and now. Hey, Pete Thamel's still doing stuff, isn't he? He's still he doing is. stuff right now? Yeah, I I mean, he's obviously, you know, paying attention to what's going on with the NCAA and James Madison this weekend. But <laughs> um, if I were Pete, you know, I'm, I'm looking ahead to next week in Ann Arbor. I hope Pete has some riot gear for, uh, for <laughs> college game day because – I think there's a pretty good chance, you know, he might, um, I don't know, you know, you got a couple disgruntled Michigan alumna, uh, you know, young kids who are still students at Michigan. They might be bringing, I don't know, eggs to throw at him or, I don't know, bags of feces, bags of urine. Um, I just, I hope Pete has some riot gear. I hope his head's on a swivel because, oh boy, uh, guess what? <laughs> The Wolverines are going to come calling when that when college game day goes to end. Herbie, it's getting loud on the internet. I mean, uh, Ty Pete is reporting about real Pete, <laughs> and those things are really being said on the internet. I think we should put him out there as if he's like in a war zone. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like put the ha- put the whole thing. Yeah, war correspondent here. You know when Lester Holt is live from and they got yep. the whole yeah. helmet yeah. Cole, like Michael Cole was the, from over there. Yeah. Boom, yeah. yeah, the whole gimmick. We're talking about the whole. Put a put the damn yeah bulletproof yeah. helmet flapjack uh-huh. press on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right yeah. across hey, the hey, front riot shield. That'd be awesome. Hey Pete, what's Friday again? Like, isn't there something going down Friday? Is there? <laughs> So, yeah, uh, basically, um, I, I can't remember the, I think the judge, um, Henry Allen Laudermilk, um, he's going to, <sighs> Susan or something. It's, yeah, well, it was, you know, but it then changed. they found out, you know, hey, she's, she's a Michigan man or Michigan woman, if you will. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, there, Jim Harbaugh will be speaking, Herbie. He, he said, hey, listen, I'm, I'm going to show up. Uh, and my khakis are going to be pressed, and uh, and I'm going to talk. So so we'll see. I mean, again, you know, there's there's talks of you know the TRO, which is of course in legalese a temporary restraining order. Um, so we'll see if Michigan's going to you know s- slap an injunction. Uh, also, yeah, rumors that he may be auditioning for a future episode of Judge Judy uh, because we know about his proclivities for for Judge Judy. So um, it should be an interesting day in Ann Arbor. Um, hey, but that's really important on Friday, actually, on whether or not Coach Harbaugh can coach on Saturday against Maryland. Um, What's your prediction? I, I predict he's out Maryland and coaches Ohio State game. Yep, that's what I'm assuming as well. And I think for the Maryland game, think about this one, Herbie. Huh? John Harbaugh coaching because he's in, right? Playing That'd third. be good. Perfect. Yeah. Right? How would Might that as well. Why? Could you imagine John Harbaugh oh, on the sideline? So cool. That would be the greatest thing for this whole story to add into. Mm-hmm. Is, he, he, he came out pretty strong this week, huh? Yeah, he gave a good promo for his brother and was like, yeah. hey, basically the integrity of our entire family has been questioned. Is get that their, what you heard get from Get their him? dad down there, too. Get Jack. Oh, oh yeah. Jack's a classic. I mean, could he do that? Who says no? Why not? The NCAA. I think they, Herbie, didn't they talk about early in the year when he was suspended the first three that Jack was possibly going to be the head coach and be on the sideline yeah, they, of those games? They had talked about that, but I, you'd have to ask Pete the, uh, the, the the rules of whether or not you can bring somebody off the staff in there like that. I I, I don't know. All oh, that people. sounds like Herbie knows the rules. Oh, he does yeah. a lot of that, by the way. Shoot, they got a hundred. Herbie analysts. will do a lot Couldn't of that. Couldn't he be Pete? Couldn't he be an analyst? Couldn't they hire him as, as an analyst? Well, it depends because, you know, as, as you know... <laughs> 
Connor Stallions was an analyst, and I think that kind of set off an atom bomb, you know, sized, um, you know, issue across the entire Michigan football team. I don't know per se. If per se. If they're going to be, you know, bringing an analyst down. But yeah, Jack, you know, who knows? Maybe him and John you know, tag team it. You know, we know. Hawk and, Hawk and Animal, like the Road Warriors. Exa- yeah. Like, uh, Imagine if they get an intro, too. They come out like oh, the Bushwhackers. Oh. Make it happen. Who's got it better than us? Nobody. And then John Harbaugh runs up the score, by the way. Yep. Mm-hmm. We stay, this is for my brother. Mm-hmm. Every, Staying on business. Every single time. Yeah. All right. That story is only going to continue to grow, especially with every yeah. court case that comes every single Friday. Why wouldn't that happen earlier in the week? I asked the question. He said, well, it's not easy to get in the court system. It's like, well, feels like they conveniently put it before next Saturday. So yeah. seems like something probably had to move. Oh, it's backed up for five days? Yeah, that's what I've heard about the court system. Mm-hmm. Five days is what it's backed up. Not like six, seven months, eight months. They're able to move it. Let's move it quicker. Because those boys don't deserve to have this hanging over their no, head. No, they, they don't. don't. All right, Herbie. Can't wait to see you in Harrisonburg, pal. When are you getting there? I think uh, we're leaving in the morning. All right. Hey, it's going to be awesome. We know that. It's going to be huge. Who are you picking tonight? Who you guys got across the board here? Haven't made our official picks yet. Haven't done it yet. Haven't done it yet. Who do you okay. have? Who do I'll you be have, watching. Harvey? I'm torn. We'll see if anybody besides AJ is going to pick the Bengals. Well, we do know that you potentially have allegiances to Cincinnati, so watch your time tonight. Okay, because mm-hmm. Baltimore fans, <laughs> Homer, right. Baltimore fans will certainly hear it uh, through the broadcast, even though you're incredibly professional. But I, I'm very torn on this, to be honest with you, because of what you said about this Cincinnati Bengals team. This feels like a game in which they would show up. You know, they've always mm-hmm. been big time players. Yeah, in big time, like they always have. Oh, yeah. They rise to the occasion. They rise to the level of their opponent. I think this Bengals team. And uh, one thing you know for sure, Pat, is it's going to be a one possession game. Bing. I mean, it's. Whoever wins the turnover margin is going to win the game. How many times have the Bengals lost to the Ravens twice in the same year? Is it usually a 2-0 split? Mm, good well, stuff. It depends on are we going. We're talking Joe Burrow era. I yeah, think. yeah, Joe Burrow. I got a Hembo. I got a Hembo. Uh, What's stat? Lamar's record versus Sweet Dan seven and one? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Ravens D has allowed twelve third and long conversions on sixty six attempts. That's just 18% of the time. Only going to get one of those games against them. Can't live there. I don't know what that means, but that's an interesting Hembo stat. Ravens have lost seven games over the last two seasons in which they entered quarter four with a lead. That's the most in the NFL. 11 in the last three seasons. That's also the most in the NFL. This is nothing new about what's happening going into the fourth. So they always have a lead, it seems like. Uh, Herbie, always have it. Can they close tonight in front of their people? We shall see. We can't wait to watch it tonight in that suited and booted tie. Yeah. Let's go. What color are we going with? Blue? Going blue? I think gray. I think uh, gray on on white with gray tie. Whoa. 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 Gray suit. (laughs) Surprised it's not an orange suit. (laughs) All right. You're the man. Ladies and gentlemen, (laughs) absolute legend. Father of Benny. Mm Mm-hmm. Kirk Herb Street. That boy, yeah. Kirk. That's good street talk. That's the street talk. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Whoops. All right, let's do our official picks. I'm pretty excited for this. Oh, yeah. Because I have certainly waffled a little bit. Mm-hmm. This is a hard one. Yeah, this AFC North is going to be tough, especially when it's three and a half, which is what we have to go off of here on ESPN Bet. Brand new sports book just launched when? Tuesday. Yep. At about 6 p.m. Yep. Yep. Not about bad. It. Yeah, if it wasn't, you know, finding it was the worst part. Yeah, you search ESPN Bet in the mm-hmm. app thing, and it's uh, 15 scrollers. Yeah, get your thumbs ready to find it. Yeah, you got to go find the incredibly cool-looking color. That's right. That, it is a cool color. Best, best aesthetic by by a mind. I think so. Yes, I, I What do you got to do to be on the first page? I have no idea. You would think like ESPN would just get that. Yeah, <laughs> they be, do not. Yeah. You would think if you search ESPN Bet, it would be the first one to pop up, but... That's it's no, it. it's a new app. New yeah. app. Most downloads in a two-day span in the history of sportsbooks. So I guess it's doing okay. Yeah, and I would assume it is at the top now if that's the case. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's the true. Apple algo. Yeah, yeah we Although, might have been too user, early. User-friendly? I don't know anything about those things. Yeah, so the top thing where you're picking what sport you're betting on is much cleaner. It's like it's a pretty easy mm-hmm. thing. You know, it's Searching right is at, pretty solid. Right at the top there. Yeah, it's pretty – it's different than some of them. I haven't been on – as many, right? I've been on FanDuel. I've been on DraftKings. It's, you know, they all each have their, like, Ill, little intricacies. Yeah. But I think it's uh, pretty user-friendly. If I had to name it as one thing right now, it would be user-friendly. For sure. If I had to guess. They're only going to keep adding, though. Yeah. They're only going to keep adding. Yeah, it's a long game thing. 
yeah, he, two days in, whenever other tech is five years in, yeah. mm -hmm. maybe 10 years in, if you go from what it was with fantasy football, sure. yeah. it was even gambling for DraftKings and for FanDuel. So you're going to have to keep going. But I think they're in it for the long game, and I'm excited about the launch. No crashes. No. Right? No. That we've heard of. Not yeah. no. That's a big deal. Huge. That's a big deal. Especially when you get that much traffic. You got a Mike uh, Greenberg bet tonight, yeah, I think. Yeah, Scene Green. Also, SVP, I think, has a bet. Yep. L's got a future up there for Georgia to win the national championship, I boosted. think. Boosted. Okay, here we go. We got boosted odds, good lines. Tonight, three and a half. Chuck Pagano, who's 7-2-1 and one on Thursday night picks against the spread. How do you see it going? Who do you have winning? Who do you have covering? I like the Ravens. Here we go. Okay. At home, okay. Ravens. Three and I like, a half. I like the Ravens. Why, Chuck? At, at home. Um, Cincinnati, they're, they're strong. This ain't the same Lou Anarumo defense uh, that we're used to seeing. Whoa. Um, I think they're 30th uh, against the run. Um, give up plenty. The one thing they do well is they take the ball away. We saw the graphic earlier. They're plus 10, you know, on, on turnover margin. Mm -hmm. um, taking away the ball. They've got 18. They've got 18 takeaways, which is the most. Uh, so if, if Lamar in this offense, this Ravens offense, doesn't turn the ball over and they find a way to finish, I think we, we just got too many rough riders. Herbie's point in Baltimore, dark, oh. rough riders. Boom, 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 boom. They got goons on that side, on the defense. And, and they're going to be, they've been listening to, you know, a bunch of crap for the last three, four days. Um, you know, no T. Higgins. He's the guy who had two touchdowns against them. They've done a great job since Mike Mc McDonald's been there with the split safety coverage scheme and, and playing matchy underneath. They've done a great job of containing Chase. And everybody knows he's got to be the focal point. You mentioned Tyler Boyd. They'll do, they'll do a good job there. Joe Mixon's a rough rider. He runs hard, but Ravens are really good at shutting down the run, running the ball. They're, they're tops in the league in time of possession, so they'll, they'll run it on this on this Bengals defense. If this was nine and a half, would you take it? What's that? If this was nine and a half. Oh, absolutely. Oh, so you think Ravens much better football team, it sounds like. No, 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 no. I thought you were saying, would you take Cincy if it was nine and a half point? No, oh, you no, think, no, no, you no would I would take, not give. You no. still think very tight. No, it's going to be, it's an AFC North game, and and. Since he's desperate, they got to have this game. Got it. I just think there's going to be there's going to be too much too much Baltimore right now. All right, AJ. And they got the pass. Hubbard's out and Higgins, two two of their best players. Yeah. So okay. I don't know if they can get pressure on Lamar. Okay. All right. So Chuck likes the Ravens minus three and a half. Uh, Herbie said that you're going to be picking the Cincinnati Bengals because you're mm -hmm. obviously a man who played for the Bengals. Right. Mm -hmm. Probably grew up big time Bengals fan. Right. Yeah. Joey B is obviously an Ohio guy who's leading them to prominence, and it's better for Ohio when the Bengals are doing their thing. AJ, how do you see it going tonight? Who do you like against the spread? Well, I feel pretty good about this because the spread is plus three and a half for Cincinnati. So I think Cincinnati's going to win this game, and I think if they don't, they lose by a field goal, and I still win this bet. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. AJ likes Cincy plus three and a half. He likes a money line as well, plus 155. Might be plus 160 at this point. Yep. Buddy, for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what are we thinking? I love the Cincinnati yeah. Bengals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got Joey Burrow as my fantasy football quarterback. Bingo, That's pumped right. for him tonight. He's oh, going to have man. a big night. I hope he does. I'm yes. so positive for Cincinnati. Need uh, him to. What's that, bud? You sound so positive for Cincinnati. This is great. You coming with me? Dude, I love Zach Taylor taking a game ball down to the bar. That's yeah. Right. Especially after an AFC North matchup on Thursday Night Football primetime. This team is built for primetime games because they were built in primetime games. Mm -hmm. Lou Anarumo comes on the show. Yeah, I know his team's not playing as great as everybody just has seen his teams play in the past mm -hmm. for like the last 50 years, but they know the Ravens. Yes. It's going to be the Cincinnati Bengals' best effort. Yeah. Ain't going to be enough, though. Give Ooh. me the Ravens. Ooh. Okay. Give me the Ravens. Okay. Give me the Ravens. Now, Chuck's looking at me sideways, and I think in a, with a smile because his neck hurts and everything we need to get that fixed. Of course. But, Chuck, you're 7-2-1, and one, and this is the week that I said, you know what? I'm going to let Chuck go ahead and talk to me. Yeah. And today you did. A lot of injuries on Cincinnati that I think are pretty key and pivotal. I think being in Baltimore will be a big advantage. And I think with the way that team – has been kind of doubted because they haven't been able to put games away. I think we're going to see four quarters out of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Keith Van Noy off the edge. 
Keith Van Noy has been playing so good. Yeah. Lights out. What's that all about, calling him Keith? <laughs> I don't know. Where did Keith come from? That Florio, Florio, pro football Florio's team. Florio's been in his bag a little bit. Florio has been One in his bag. One of the best passers yeah. of all time. Florio's been doing it. Keith Van Noy sits out on Tuesday's practice. Boy, we don't first, know who that is, but we hope Kyle practice. Yep. yep. First uh, Lombo. Used a photo. No, now freaking Florio. Yeah, I mean, these Italians are really given, yeah. given this particular Latter-day Saint all the extra motivation he could possibly need. Do you want to say anything about Keith? Hey, so... Yeah, what's up with Rankin's, religion? Rankin's from the Texans, right? He, he wreaked havoc. Yep. yep. Right? Three sacks, mm -hmm. interior, yep. Metabuke, and sure. Big Baby, Michael Pierce. That Mike interior, Pierce, watch Pierce. that interior. Watch that interior offensive line for Cincinnati, AJ. Yeah, but they got a uh, they, they got a guy, I don't know if you know this, Ted Karras drank a gallon of milk every day for four years of high school to get to the size that he's at, so he knows. Like one year of high school. Uh, maybe, but he knows a thing or two about he it. Same year he had puberty. Yep. So he doesn't know if it was the milk that made him grow or just natural evolution of the body. But uh, I thought he said He is committed. Yeah. yeah. Tried. Great hats. Tough son of yep. a bitch. Great personality. Great storyteller. Great yeah, you get an up yours, Baltimore, in a game like this, like Tennessee. Oh, yeah. After oh, yeah. Game. Up yours, Baltimore. All of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're going to try to They're gonna try to get you because Marlon Humphrey's out to corner for, for the Ravens. Wait a second. Yeah. Wait a minute. I didn't know that. Well, he didn't play in the in the first matchup either. Okay. And they still held, you know, they only won by three though. Yeah, and Burrow. The, the interesting matchup is Rock Rock. Uh, you I'm calling Chef. Yeah, I need to know. He if Kirk I wants, hey, Kirk wants you to look at your phone. Something you Michigan info just dropped, I guess. A statement from the University of Michigan. This morning, the university, Coach Harbaugh, and the Big Ten resolved their pending litigation. The conference agreed to close its investigation, and the university and Coach Harbaugh agreed to accept the three-game suspension. Oh. Coach Harbaugh, with the university's support, decided to accept this sanction and return the focus to our student-athletes and their performance on a football field. The conference has confirmed that it is not aware of any information suggesting Coach Harbaugh's involvement in the allegations. The university continues to cooperate fully with the NCAA's investigation. So Friday morning, there will be no injunction or court case. This thing got settled before that. He will serve a suspension this week against Maryland and next week against Ohio State. Excited to hear that this has ended, seemingly. Yep. We will have to chat about the team without Coach Harbaugh, and now we all move forward. I do like and appreciate that it has been said numerous times now, both by Coach John Harbaugh of the Baltimore Ravens and in this particular statement, that Jim Harbaugh didn't know this shit was going on. That needs to be understood, I think is what everybody who cares mm -hmm. about Jim Harbaugh is saying. We agree with that stat and that fact because anytime your integrity gets questioned your entire family's integrity gets questioned especially as an old school football guy that can hurt and that's not good that's bad obviously so him not knowing we agree with him reaping the benefit of is what the big ten's like hey we gotta yep. something we have to i think this is a good meet in the middle michigan fans obviously aren't going to be thrilled about it ever because they're losing hard for some games but i think we're all pumped just to move on aj hawk yeah, and I, who knows what Harbaugh will say after this, but he this could easily be, yeah, I accepted it because even though I didn't know, uh, anything that happens here is I'm the head coach, so it falls on me. Yeah, and it's it's like Michigan probably just got to that point. Jim got to that point. Yeah. The Big Ten was like, hey, we have – something has to – Yeah, you know, we have to yeah. – this has to happen. Now, Maryland this weekend obviously could be tough. Could be tough. Ohio State, though, next week, here we go. Who's going to the college football playoff pretty much? Yep. Yeah, time to find out. Who's going to be the head coach of the team? Is it Sharon again? After what happened last week, they get a big-time win. Mm -hmm. They run the ball 35 straight times to close that thing out against Penn State. He obviously has the emotional uh, uh, interview afterwards where you can see how much it meant to him. Mm -hmm. A lot of oh, people yeah. judge him for that, but obviously yep. it meant a lot to mm -hmm. him. Not a lot of people get to a point where they're crying out of happy and emotion and passion, which I guess some people certainly judged him for oh, yeah. pretty yeah. heavily. But here we go. Now it's all over. Thank God. Yeah, yeah thank seriously. God. Thank God. Because on Friday, us having to be like, we're waiting on a ruling. Yeah, again. I'm happy we don't have to do that. Sports is better whenever we're not talking about all this type of stuff. Yes. Mar Maryland better Bo. neck rolls. Because you think 35 straight, this will be 55 runs straight. Hey, yeah. let's just Cause get out of here. Because everybody's going to be talking about Ohio State, and the team's going to want to win these games so they can get their head coach back and, and go play for a natty. You know, in the in the college football playoff. So, but Maryland, I mean, that'll be the they got to stay focused on this. But they're going to get a face full of <laughs> the inside. It's inside run. It's not a bad idea though, too. Like, hey, let's just do. Let's just get out of here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's just win this game. 
and let's get the hell out of here. We don't have our coach, yeah. who's obviously – and you are Desmond Howard talk about it. I was like, you know, at least he's there during the week. He can have game plan. Mm -hmm. He can have his fingerprints still on the program. He can still motivate the guys. He can talk the night before the game. Like, he's still around. And Desmond brought up a good point. He was like, if you look at his first three games when he wasn't on the sideline versus how they looked whenever he was on the sideline, like, he makes big money for how he does game days as well. So him not there for decision-making, take a lot of decisions out of there whenever you decide, hey, yeah. we're just going to run it right down their fucking – Right, right yep. down the fucking field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to do. Did it last week against Penn State. Do it this week. Defense, nothing changes. Okay, we do what we got to do. Offense, we're running it right down their throats. And then, JJ, we apologize for your Heisman candidacy. <laughs> yeah. But whenever we get to the college football playoff, you'll be able to do whatever the hell you want to do. Let's just win these games. I respect it if that's what they end up doing, AJ. Yeah, and that's the thing. I think I mentioned on here earlier, the fact that he's able to be there during the week, that's when all the game planning goes on, and he's not – He's not the direct offense or defensive play caller on game day, too. So there's not like you don't have to shuffle that many things. Yeah, but you, there's a chance he says like, "Hey, I like whenever what we're doing when mm -hmm. we're doing this." Oh, for sure, it's, yeah. it's definitely gonna have an impact, no question. But if he was like the offensive play caller, then you really got to panic because if you don't have somebody next in line, him sitting at home watching it unfold, how he didn't expect it to unfold. Like, can I text? How do I? How do I get my messaging? Yeah, is he allowed to text? I don't know. Can, no way. There's no he, way he's allowed to contact anybody on the sideline. Couldn't he Why just not? dress up? What if he up? flew a plane that had a message? That'd be smart. Yeah, yeah. Well, can he just Why dress not? up in like Maryland gear they and come, like a mustache? They come get a no, that's what they got in trouble. They get a cell phone down. before kickoff. They get a cell phone. They gotta, they gotta get, get it. Gotta. What if they? Had a, <laughs> what if it was a plane though? What if it was a plane? What if it was a plane that yeah. said? Banner. Start throwing it more. Yeah. Yep. Hardball action. action. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he was sitting at an FBO. Yep. Like right next to it, just different messages to the plane company to fly it up behind it. <laughs> Every quarter, there's a new plane flying over top of the message. Who's that coming from? Throw the ball more. Put more tight ends in the game. <laughs> we need a little bit. Oh, I don't want to waste the ball here for you, Chuck. Holy shit. Here we go. What was I about to do? I was about to just. <laughs> I was about to waste an opportunity. Yeah, no, what you're talking about throwing, throwing the pace. Is he throwing no, him with his neck? To. What are you doing? Yeah, one. your neck. Are you able to throw a football? Ooh. No, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. You see that? Yeah. Uh, putt. Uh, you want to putt? Want to putt? Which one's worse? You want to throw? Okay. I'll throw it on that side. Ooh. Over there. Yeah. Oh, All right. right. He's quite. Oh, oh no. That's quite uh, questionable right up. now. You okay? Blue right, game. Chuck? Don't let your shoulder fall apart. Couldn't hear you. I can't hear what you said, Chuck. I can't hear you, Chuck. Yeah, I know. This is going to strain his neck. Oh, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> We're going to screw him. Oh, make oh, him oh, poke oh, him in the eye. Brownie. <laughs> the brownie did. Poke him in the eye. All right, here we go. Good. Bad on, neck Chuck. and all. This guy's T1, T2, potentially dislocated. Yep. You know why? Because he ran his skull into people's faces in an attempt to get his face through the other person's asshole. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's how, how much he wanted to lay the wood, old school football. Hell yeah. 36 years coaching football, 18 in the college, 18 in the NFL. If you can throw this ball in with your bad neck, uh -huh. we'll give 30 people $500. Wow. All they'll have to do is retweet this post, say something nice to somebody, and put the easiest way to pay them. Now, this is not going to be an easy task, Chuck. It's a tough throw. Yeah, it is. Yeah. This thing's good 20, 25 yards. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to be pinpoint accurate. You got to have the strength. Oh, oh shit. Yeah, that that was throw. the one. Yeah, it was good. Good throw. You got it. Ladies and gentlemen, with a bad neck, Chuck Pagano will attempt to win 30 people $500. All he's got to do is bury that football. That was a rope. Yeah, oh, my God. Is that in? No. He went through close. the net. He's throwing the ball really yeah. well right now. Tore the net off the hoop. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Coach Chuck Pagano. He coached football for 36 years, didn't he? Yeah. 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 18 in college, 18 in the NFL. Oh, he's going oh. with the dart method. No touch today, huh? Yeah, what's going on? Let's, I mean, come on. Get it over it's the linebacker. No get over the linebacker. The rotation is harder to... Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Chuck Pagano here is a man who is... Uh, yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, giving, oh. giving a large portion of his life to football. Yeah. yeah. And with one football toss today, he can change 30 people's lives right here before the holiday. Unbelievable. If Chuck puts that ball into that hoop with that bad neck, we'll give 30 people $500. All you got to do is retweet this post, say something nice to somebody, and put the easiest way to pay you. Once Chuck makes this, we will celebrate. Oh, no. Right in the, the bonus corner. Ball. Bonus, bonus ball, 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 Chuck. It's gone. It's gone. There's a little Alabama football yeah, right there. Bama ball, Bama ball. Calibrate it. Sorry. No, nah, this wow. one doesn't Bama have ball doesn't dorsal. need to be calibrated. It's a little flat, too. It's a little small. With this Bama Sorry, ball and this Coach Saban Thursday, November 16th, oh. if Chuck's able to put this into the hoop, we'll get 40 people. $500. All you have to yell. Oh. Oh. Oh, 40 people, $500. All you got to do is retweet this post, say something nice oh. to somebody, and put the easiest way to pay you in the reply wow. as well. Chuck, 
Wow. That was magnificent. Great work, Chuck. Hell of a day today. We can't thank you enough for allowing us to do this for a living. Big shout out to Cody Schrader, Tristan Wirfs, Nick Saban, Michael Lombardi, Reese Davis, Benny the Dog of Herb Street, yeah. Oh, yeah. and Kirk Herb Street. You are the best people on earth. We'll be live from James Madison tomorrow. Cannot wait to get to Harrisonburg, Virginia. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. Let's enjoy the hell out of tonight. Goodbye.